this is going to be a theater of the mind again because there's really not that much in the way of um, big combats. There are combats, but this game is mostly going to be RP and puzzles and some combat here and there. So a lot of it will be just theater of the mind. So anybody watching, you could probably also just have this on like a podcast because it's basically going to be that. Um, but yeah, I guess I mean, we'll you don't get to see the, the fun 3D dice roll in that case. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and those, those are those are fun. Such as that. <laughs> I uh, really don't like what all the top arts are for lizard men. It makes me really uncomfortable. Why are they? Are they, wait, are they all like? Uh, is it like furry art or like what's? The There's art? a couple furry OCs. <laughs> There's also this, which uh, I'm very tempted to have as my my image. Oh boy, that's oh. Uh, that looks like yeah. that, looks, uh, that looks like a knockoff of a shape of water. Like I <laughs> married a lizard man. <laughs> This one's definitely a furry OC. Yeah. Or a scaly, whatever. Um, but yeah, so welcome to anybody who's in the chat so far. This is the second iteration of the Pile of Shame campaign. The campaign where I am going slowly through my backlog and just trying to get through scenarios that I have just uh, bought over uh, the last few years and just never got around to playing. This Intrigue of the Core Chaos one that we're about to do today... Um, is one I bought when I first got to DCC. It's one of like the first time. I, I when I first got to DCC, I, I bought like ten scenarios, and this is one of them I never got around to playing. So this has been my backlog for a very long time. So nice. Um, once you guys are ready and you have all your uh, like stuff bought and whatever else you need to do, we'll get into what you guys have been doing since uh, the last. I, I guess just do a quick recap, but. It won't be very long, but I'll do a recap, then we'll get to what you guys have done between the last session and this session, and then we'll get into the game. So, um... Awesome. Is, anybody still need some more time? No, I think I'm, I'm good. good. You're all good? Jack? I'm good. Cool. All right. So, uh, last time, this will be a very quick recap. Uh, you guys were all peasants from your own villages and regions. You all felt like you were destined for something more than just being somebody uh, toiling in a field or working for a lord or a noble. Um, And you went off following your dreams, literally, in search of adventure. You guys met a a woman who wasn't totally clear on who she was, um, and she told you to go to a prison in a different realm across this invisible bridge um, to go free some woman. Uh, You guys went through into that realm. Uh, You dealt with a horrific jack-o'-lantern that killed a few of you. Uh, There was a massive titan that was sleeping. Um, And you also dealt with a few other things, like a a dwarf (laughs) who looked like uh, he might have been the head of some sort of little cannibal cult in that that little realm. Um, And you guys made it through to the end. You got through all the trials. Um, You freed that lady who turned out to be some sort of demon creature. Uh, doing in doing so, um, you also made the entire chaotic little prison realm uh, start to shatter, and you guys jumped down below 120 feet down into a vortex, a vortex leading you guys back to your own realm and being safe and sound. After that, <laughs> you guys rolled on uh, this big wheel of destiny. Um, some of you changed lives with other ones. Uh, I think one of you. Um, totally missed out on the adventure and went back to being a peasant, unbeknownst to you, but feeling for the rest of your life that you had missed out on some great opportunity. Um, and I'm sure that fucking sucks. Uh, that's probably the worst <laughs> ending. Um, and after that, you guys have been doing whatever between that point and this point. So we'll get into that. Um, I don't know who wants to start. I know Martin and I think Dan, you guys might have had the most solidified ideas in your head. So I don't know if one of you two want to go first. I want to go first because Martin probably has better stuff, so I'm going to go first. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a good tactic. <laughs> yeah. So I'll give mine out of the way and then Martin can, can do his cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Pip and Chisel uh, both survived uh, the crazy encounter with the uh, demon lady and all that. Uh, Chisel, uh, Chisel didn't really set the world on fire let's admit it and he realized that and he initially went back to his village after having lost uh his good friend rudy the rutabaga farmer uh and he kind of got talking to his grandfather and his grandfather told him about an abandoned quarry uh some ways away and he went there and he has built uh basically 
an obstacle course in this quarry. <laughs> uh, ascending columns, uh, tight ropes, ladders, uh, jumps. Uh, and he's been out there trying to self-train uh, and get to a point where he feels kind of comfortable going back out on the road and, and finding some more intrigue. Uh, basically an America Ninja Warrior course uh, <laughs> that he's been training on for the last year or so. Now, his buddy Pip, uh, the wannabe squire, he was pretty disillusioned with his dreams of squiredom. Uh, he saw all the most powerful people he knew, his good friends and traveling companions, uh, destroyed by a horrific evil jack-o'-lantern. And he realized that maybe stealth could be a better option. He narrowly avoided uh, the log rock trap. Uh, and he thinks that being able to see these sorts of things might be a somewhat better path for him. So he went to the nearest city and sought out kind of the seedy underbelly and found himself uh, a new companion, Xander. And he's, he's gotten in tight with Xander, who is an assassin, essentially. Uh, he hasn't done any jobs with Xander yet, but he's learned a thing or two, learned how to disarm some traps for himself, learned how to sneak around, got himself a dagger. And he, from time to time, goes and visits Chisel at his obstacle course. And uh, they've been training together, uh, hoping to get back together with their good friend Jedediah, who they had thought <laughs> died. They saw him die in front of them, but miraculously, uh, he, he has appeared again in their lives. Uh, and you can go, go ahead, Martin. <laughs> Oh, let's start with Jedediah then. In that case, we'll uh, we'll pick up that baton. So Jedediah, if um, if you remember from his his history, he he almost died when he was young. He uh, he got uh, got the plague, but mysteriously managed to survive. Um, it's great having someone else's backstory to start from. Um, <laughs> he he uh, came with that one, <laughs> and a nice icon as well. I didn't even have to pick one. So um, if if only Chris could have come with the same thing, that would have been great. But um, yeah, um, so Jedediah um, managed to survive the plague uh, when he was young. So really lucky kind of guy. And uh, yeah, who'd have guessed that uh, he'd have returned from the dead, uh, or maybe he never even died? Um, such is the, uh, the strangeness of the wheel of uh, fate. Um, <laughs> Now, you would have thought that some people, if you've, you know, you've been given this almost divine path, this um, endorsement that your actions must somehow be right and you have some higher purpose in the world, that that you do something, you know, kind of cool and righteous. But <laughs> no, Jedediah has decided that no matter what he does, he's probably going to survive and be all right. So he's kind of taken the approach, well, fuck it, I'm just going to, you know, drink beer, see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, I'm, he's not going to die, is he? So uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's Jedediah's outlook. He's been hanging around in a tavern and, uh, yeah, running a bit short of money. But sure enough, as and when that happens, uh, things work appear. Um, but it's the sort of work that, uh, yeah, you need to be lucky for, the sort of work that you don't want to get caught for. Um, you don't want to make mistakes in this line of work. So, uh, yeah, uh, unbeknownst to Jed Jedediah, he's kind of fallen into the path of a thief. Um, yeah, he'll take any job, but uh, <laughs> that's him. Um, so the next one, if I can get these words out in one hit, we've got chrysanthemum on the isthmus. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that someone has to say that now. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Who will forever be known as Chris from now on? <laughs> well, maybe. <I'm laughs> I thought um, they hated the name Chris. <laughs> Chris hates Oh, Chrysanthemum hates Chris. Absolutely, yes. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Of course. <laughs> um, so, Chrysa oh, Chrysanthemum... <laughs> <laughs> um, started life, um, as far as we know, meditating. So, she, for, for almost 100 years, she was meditating and uh, was quite sort of frail and sickly and, uh, yeah, got the, the call from this uh, blue woman for the hole in the sky and, uh, and went off adventuring. Um, obviously died um, with one hit point. She was never going to last for very long. And uh, yeah, another lucky uh, another lucky person came back from the, de the dead. <laughs> so 
after coming back from the hole in the sky, uh, Chris Anthem uh, decided to continue where she left off with the meditation, but um, realising that you couldn't probably spend your entire life sat under a tree, clearing your mind of thoughts, she uh, she sort of uh, did the same thing uh, and just put it out there, asked the question, what am I supposed to do with my life? And then uh, she waited for the answers to come to her. And uh, yeah, she's uh, established a bond with nature, perhaps not that um, unusual for an elf and uh, yeah she's found that she can manipulate objects she dropped a, a wooden goblet uh, a nasty crack appeared and uh, with a bit more meditation and a bit of thought the goblet ma mysteriously managed to mend itself um, and likewise uh, she was trying to meditate and there was this this horse in the background kept neighing really irritating uh, and she just thought well, it'd be fantastic if this thing was just a sort of I don't know fall over fall asleep and sure enough she looked over the horse was asleep um, so she kind of thought she she took these as signs. She was starting to connect with uh, with nature, and uh, the moment she made that realization, an owl, who she's since known as Ariel, came from the sky, um, and started hooting next to her. And, uh, <laughs> they've grown quite close. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Um, and also, just so you guys uh, playing know, uh, Tim <coughs> uh, donated a hundred bits, so there's a back pocket reroll. If uh, anybody needs a reroll at some point, just so you guys know, it's in there. Nice. Um, cool. Who wants to go next? Nice, nice. John or Jack? I can go next. You want to go, go John? Jack. I'll yeah. continue I'll give you time my... to think something <laughs> I'll, I'll go... <laughs> Hey, I actually thought about it before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, as the sole survivor of his particular little cadre, Fennec Byrne found himself changed by the hand of fate and he had grown one inch taller and his in his waist had grown one inch as well so none of his clothes fit anymore <laughs> as such he <laughs> he just did random odd jobs for a little bit to get new clothes and once he sorted all that out he uh well he then went back to doing what he had always done which was drinking and crime <laughs> and um <laughs> Bear brawling, drinking, more bear brawling. It's worked out quite well for him. Until he happened to get in a fight with an undead hunter who was passing through town that kicked his ass and has now made him into a lackey. <laughs> He's paid a wage. He is he is paid as a mercenary for his work with <laughs> with Cedric Donner. <laughs> undead hunter extraordinaire <laughs> but uh yeah it's probably not what he wants in life i think fennec just wants to stay in a small town by the sea and fight the same people every night but sadly that's not an option for him he has to adventure <laughs> <laughs> perfect and cedric's fun he's He's an undead hunter. He got yeah. mugged by a skeleton when he was young, and uh, the experience has colored his opinion of all undead. <laughs> Vowed revenge. And, he uh, took my seventeen like copper. Need money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got mugged. Yeah, yeah by a skeleton. Bones of the skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine yeah. the I imagine the skeleton just talks like an Indian through his gangster. It's like, hey, see, I need your money. Mm. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> Look at the ground. He's got a crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hand it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I like. All right, you can go. <laughs> I also like how Fennec is like the guy who the the lackey who dies in the first chapter of a Warhammer novel. Yeah, yes, absolutely, he absolutely <laughs> will. This Fennec is not long uh, in this world. For those at home. Fennec Byrne has two hit points. <laughs> and he's a warrior. He rolled a D12. <laughs> and I got a He'll one. He'll be fine. <laughs> but he does have 16 AC. He's that. <laughs> His employer has now outfitted him with uh, a shield and a battle axe, so he's got that going for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, and uh, Jack. All right, uh, I'll start with, so I had two people survive. Uh, the first, uh, formerly named Meleth, uh, he was uh, a, an elf... Forester, but that's not important because uh, in the last adventure he was reborn as an entirely different person. <laughs> um, so the person who was Meleth no longer exists, and in his place is Ixagaz, who is a, 
they're all who has too many consonants in his name first of all um but is actually a lizard man um <laughs> so where meleth where meleth stood reformed uh this lizard person um i'm sure that alex has thought of a varied and interesting culture for the lizard people yeah, that exist in this world i have world. actually 300 pages of, of it's uh, it's lore. integrated really well <laughs> yeah, into the yeah, setting yeah, yeah. so ixagaz i guess probably just like this is who i have always been and i have a life to go back to because fate has reconspired for that to exist and he went back to do what you would expect lizard people to do which i'm sure everyone knows what that is <laughs> for the last year <laughs> until the events of today where he conveniently reappears being tired of doing whatever it is that lizard people do all the time <laughs> i mean we all know so i don't have to get into it yeah no i mean so, like, yeah. obviously there's no need to yeah. even yeah yeah no we all know what lizard people do in their downtime. let's yeah. yeah. not rehash all that <laughs> yeah. we don't need to get into it again we've yeah. already talked about it many <laughs> At, times like, yeah we have we have three <laughs> yeah. different servers dedicated to the yeah check out alex's server. channel there are uh, there's a three-part <laughs> series on the history of lizard people in this world <laughs> um my other character uh, was Doyle. Uh, he he uh, started life as a weaver. Um, he d couldn't do anything except for weave. This is one calling in life. Very a very dexterous man um, who simply people would give him jobs, and he would that was that was what he did. He weaved things. He knew every every pattern by heart. He could spot him at a glance, which weirdly came into use during that adventure. Yeah, he actually kind of um, saved the day there. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, if if everyone remembers last time, uh, Doyle did find a particular um, particular uh, joy in just murdering people um, by stabbing <laughs> them a lot. Ah, um, uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, he went back to to his little, little shit farm town. Uh, to to resume weaving and it just it didn't it didn't do it for him anymore i mean he still loved it but he's like there's there's something else to life and that something else is stabbing people a lot um and of course doyle um you know the obvious career for him <laughs> to have taken up uh if he just really likes stabbing people and really isn't that smart uh is a ninja um <laughs> so doyle uh had heard about these uh assassins from a far off eastern land and thought i can do that 100 percent um <laughs> Uh, and so studied on studied by uh, uh, purchasing all of the texts he could on ninjas. Um, he he did the Spider-Man thing and uh, <laughs> stitched himself up a real nice ninja outfit, which, <laughs> of course, that's who he thinks ninjas wear. That's not actually what they wear, but he's yeah. always nice He took a ninja correspondence outfit. ninja class. <laughs> <laughs> I sent away. Yeah. <laughs> and um, displaying a complete lack of understanding of how last names work. Uh, he changed his name from Doyle Weaver to Doyle Ninja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he stalks the streets of whatever city we're in, taking on contracts to uh, to kill people for money as a ninja. Because Amazing. he doesn't really know what a ninja does, but he assumes it has to be that. Awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, for anybody wondering, um, Jack is using two third-party classes just to uh, change things up. A yeah, bit. All, Ixigaz is uh, it's kind of like a warrior. The The lizard person is like a warrior uh, barbarian sort of thing. I can also do the, the lizard thing and squirt blood from his eyes. That'll be oh, fun. Oh, right, yeah. 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 yeah that's Once fun. per day. And then the, the ninja is like a, a slightly different uh, thief class. It's just yeah. a little better at stabbing and a little worse at thief abilities. Um... But yeah, perfect. I think that's uh, so. That's everybody. That's what you guys went up to. Um, you guys now find yourselves sort of reconvened together. You're um, the classic sort of at a tavern, chatting about what you guys have been up to in the last like six months or eight months or so. Um, and you guys are, you guys are while you're chatting, you guys are noticing like there's like a stage there where probably music is usually played. There's some sort of theater being set up. Um, and as time goes on, um, it looks like it turns out to be some sort of wooden puppet theater that's been erected here. Um, I'll read out this bit for you guys. Its sides decorated with garishly colorful streaks of paint. A scrim of thin, pale cloth hangs behind the theater's proscenium, backlit by an unseen lantern. Standing before the theater is a young, towhead lad dressed in ragged garb. Oh, one thing I, I just realized. Martin, did you mention that you also have a hireling called Chuck? 
Did you mention that? I definitely didn't. No, right. no. So, so um, it's not a big deal. You don't need to, it's not like it has like a huge backstory. I just want to remind everybody that there is a hireling with you guys as well. <laughs> there is a big backstory, but we'll do it later. Oh, there's a big backstory. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll come uh, up. It'll merge through play. <laughs> it'll merge through play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, standing before the theater is a young towhead lad dressed in ragged garb. Strips of faded colored cloth are tied about his limbs and torso, giving him the appearance of a maypole left standing long into winter. An eager smile brightens his narrow face like a rising horned moon. In a voice surprisingly resonant for his thin frame, the youth addresses the audience. Lords and ladies, misses and sirrahs, gaze upon a tale seldom heard even in the courts and manners of yours betters. I bring you the story of daring deeds in far-off places, of great treasure long forgotten, and of benevolent despots eager to reward hired heroes, a tale whose origin lies in a time before time. With a deep bow, the ragged youth steps to one side, granting you a clear view of the stage. Silhouetted figures appear against the scrim, brought to life by a mixture of light, shadow, and unseen puppeteers. The shadowy actors are grotesque in form, bearing misshapen torsos and overabundance of limbs, but nevertheless possessing a strange regality. The silhouettes appear to be holding an audience as a prelude to the story waiting to be told. Whew, goddamn, these fucking DCC openings are huge nowadays. As you gaze upon... (laughs) Take a breath. Yeah. (laughs) No one said stop. Yeah. As you gaze upon the shadow puppets, an odd disquiet afflicts you. Your eyes swim with disorientation. You find yourself growing light in body and then suddenly experience a falling sensation as if tumbling towards the theater's arch. A bright, mocking laughter rings in your ears before all goes black. The last words you hear are the youths as he uh, are the youths as he concludes his introduction. My friends, I give you the court of chaos. And all right, you guys, let's see here. You guys um, regain consciousness like probably a few moments later. Um, you're you are on the floor of uh, a black obsidian. Um, you find those lurid colors illuminating the area around you, and there is this atmosphere that's foreboding and just assaulting your senses. You honestly, you're very much um, reminded of the prison you guys went to uh, about eight months ago. Um, so I got <laughs> another big thing of to read out to you guys, um, and then you guys will get to actually play. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, your strange journey has cast you upon a great misshapen six-point star formed of darkest obsidian. Above you, the sky spins in a kaleidoscope of nauseous colors. Whirls of putrid green, sinister red, depressing blues, and dirty yellow twirls like scrapes of cloud upon the cyclone. The platform beneath you forms an island adrift on a hellish ocean. Churning waters of blood topped with pink breakers stretch on for as far as your eyes dare gaze. Off in the distance, the ruined spires of antediluvian seas rise above the surface of the gory sea. Um... At five of the star-shaped platform's points are thrones fashioned from bones, skin, and less identifiable substances. Sitting in each is a nightmare made of flesh. Titanic figures adorned with unholy finery and bearing horrible guises stare down at you with expressions that, amongst the more human of those faces, convey a witch's brew of malice, curiosity, and amusement. Um, Standing at the sixth point is a small humanoid figure, dressed in courtly garb of ashen hue and standing a mere 15 feet tall compared to the other giants. He observes you placidly. Um, doo, doo, doo. Scattered around the platform itself are a group of lesser creatures, some misshapen and monstrous, others almost painful in their beauty. The attire of both courtiers and slaves is seen amongst them. Um, and the the young youth, or the young youth, the youth that you guys uh, saw earlier who, uh, who was commandeering the puppet show is uh, nearby. Um, and he says, Siraz and miladies, uh, he says with an endearing smile, welcome. Allow me to present my masters, the host of chaos. And he sort of uh, looks at you and looks and sort of uh, has his hands out towards these giant figures. Um, I can describe the figures in a little bit, but um, basically, kind of, he's sort of looking at you um, expectantly, waiting for you guys to say something to these massive creatures of <laughs> unimaginable horror. Panic pipes up just. Now, this is outside our normal contract, Squire. <laughs> just, he's just like, we don't we don't normally go extra planar. There is a surcharge. <laughs> my rate increases when I'm not on my natural plane. 
Is this is this what Fennec's saying to uh to the Undead that's, Hunter? That's yeah. what Fennec is saying. Yeah. To... <laughs> that's great. The Undead Hunter just makes fucking Fennec do all of the, the bookkeeping. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I've got Undead to hunt. <laughs> Doyle goes. It's no Kabuki. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably never even seen a Kabuki show at all or anything close no, to it. Has no, he hasn't. No idea. Read about it exactly <laughs> once. And by red, he like recognized the word and was able to sound it out. I'm fairly certain he can't actually read with an <laughs> intelligence <laughs> of four. <laughs> Jed Jedediah mumbles and says, well, well, uh, are you telling me I can still get peanuts here? <laughs> uh, where's the beer? Hey. Are y'all seeing this? Pip kind of looks at the rest of y'all. What, who, what the hell? Is this real? Makes the guy licks his eyes in disbelief to clear them. <laughs> 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 oh, also, uh, one thing I'll say next, I totally forgot once again. Um, all of you guys are starting with two fleeing luck. Just to uh, keep that in mind. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you guys are all sort of just kind of like, uh, what the hell is happening? Um... And just a bunch of different voices, some low, some high, some booming, some are whispering right to the back of your, like, back of your head. You have been summoned before the court of chaos, and honor given to few mortals. Circumstances in the multiverse require the participation of its lesser creatures, and the court has decided you will serve our aims to this end. You are charged with the recovery of a potent artifact of Eld, known as the Yokeless Egg. Should you succeed in returning this object to the court, know that your service will be well rewarded. The host of chaos offers a small boon in return and a token of our esteem suitable for small mortal hearts and minds. Do you accept this charge? And now that you guys are looking around a bit more, I'll just explain how something looks. So basically the big five titans, there is one that looks like a massive armored uh, humanoid figure. Um, draped around him is his cape, which is made of sewn human faces going all the way down. Um, Next to him, you see a what looks like a woman who's been drowned or murdered recently in the last like maybe two weeks. She's sort of uh, she has maggots falling out of every orifice. Her like skin is all mottled and wrinkled. Um, next to her is a basically one giant big bloodshot eye on two bird legs. Um, and there's a few other ones. I'm just gonna find their description real quick. <laughs> um, I I must say. I imagine it has little sparrow legs. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, uh, you know what? You can't necessarily look at them for too long, so that's probably what you see. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody sees something somewhat <laughs> different, uh, because you guys do feel mm. yourself going a little bit insane the more you look at these creatures, so you kind of avert your eyes pretty quickly. Um, yeah, and there's another one who ha who's like a, ba basically a big hooded figure, um, the behind the hood looks like it's just a whirling chaos. Uh, it's just like basically a, a black hole. And uh, next to them is this three-armed... Uh, I think that's the right one. Uh, uh, Too many fucking chaos titans to keep yeah, track of. Yeah, there's a shitload, so I just yeah. gotta keep, yeah. keep track of which one <laughs> Uh, All right, guys, here, here's eight <laughs> indescribable uh, horrors. Yeah, and here, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and the last one actually is kind of indescribable. He seems to be he seems to be afflicted with every disease known to you guys, as well as ones you've never heard of. Uh, just a horrible mass of screaming faces and uh, pustules and all these different things that are just really just just a basic mass of disease um, and horror. Um, but yeah, well, so after they say that, you guys, you guys go ahead with whatever you want to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, w w what is this boon you speak of? I mean, this is clearly an extraordinary feat you're asking for. Um, so you you hear from them, uh, Firstly, we will consider ourselves owing you a small debt of gratitude. Should the time come that you require the assistance of the most powerful forces in the cosmos, we shall attend to that need and consider our debt repaid. Secondly, since the desires of morals are little things to the minds of the host, you shall each receive a small gesture of our thanks in the form of a stone that warps fortune in your favor, one of the few chaos stones remaining in existence. It's one each, is it? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Chisel looks to Pip. He says, uh, I don't know if this is real. It, it reminds me of the time... 
all the village's grain went moldy. And, uh, well, you remember that week. <clears throat> and Pip kind of nods. He says, yeah, but if it's real, this, you know, this could be our ticket. <laughs> Finally. To the big time. <laughs> and he, he kind of grabs Chisel. He says, we're in. <laughs> okay. Awesome, Dad. I love that. <clears throat> uh, Cedric is... <laughs> Well, Fennec is whispering in Cedric's ear, probably telling him, this is a terrible idea. If we refuse, they'll kill us. But if we don't say, if we say yes, we'll probably die. And Cedric is ignoring him and just like, so let's say the boon was that I wanted to find a really, really big undead thing. <laughs> And then they sort of look so, at you, like, yeah, just sort of waiting for you to finish your thought. <laughs> He's like, that's it. Yes. Would, that, would that be permissible? <laughs> you you want your boon to be a really, really big undead thing? Am I well, I don't want you to make a new one. I want to find one that already exists and kill it. <laughs> uh, yes, that wouldn't be hard. That wouldn't be hard at all. Excellent. <laughs> we are on board. <laughs> <laughs> so that's John's characters on board. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, just to be clear, the rest of us don't want to fight a giant undead thing. Oh my God. We successfully complete this adventure, and eight giant undead appear yeah, around yeah. us and just beat us into a fucking pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not even like a monkey's paw. That's just you asking, like, to get fucked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. I never said he was smart. <laughs> Uh, um. Yep. Yeah, uh, Jack and Martin. What your characters were there? Do they do they have any questions for the host of chaos? Do they have any reactions? I think I don't think Doyle possesses the higher cognitive thought to like reason or ask surrounding questions. <laughs> he just goes and um. Ixagaz, if lizard people could shrug, which they can't, would do that. I mean, they're already here. It's not like he's like, I don't know. Oh, Jack, we all know Whatever. lizard people can't shrug. I don't see why. Well, they can't. Can. Yeah, no. Yeah. They have they have they have um, uh, immobilized collarbones like mm -hmm. like ours. It's one big piece, so they can't shrug. Yeah, uh, we know that. <laughs> you just <jump laughs> you all know that. <laughs> that was already established. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, Chris says, well. I mean, we're here, aren't we? I, I suppose that, um... Uh, and she resigns herself to the fact that uh, saying no is probably a... Yeah, trip to an early grave. <laughs> um, and, and so finally, um, Jedediah says, well, yeah, I suppose we've got no choice, but um, have you got a bag of nuts I could have for the journey? <laughs> um, they, uh, they... You saw you uh, <clears throat> excuse me the uh, the guy what's his name um, the young the youth from from the puppet show he uh, he says yes there'll there, I know where there's plenty of nuts I can give you yeah that'll be grand <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, what are your other uh, so that's that's with your characters you got one who just says sort of like oh, there's not really a choice and the person just wants a bag of nuts uh, correct Marin. <laughs> The other one wants a bag of nuts in addition to the boon and the okay. uh, the good. lucky stone. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, and that's Jedi who wants the bag of nuts. Okay, yeah, he's good at driving a bargain, is Jedi. <laughs> All right, the man knows his own needs, guys. You got to respect that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, after that, um, they say, uh. They say, we understand discord and confusion like no other beings in the multiverse. We know your mortal minds are real from the tasks set before you. As we are not wholly unkind in our affections, we generally grant you the opportunity to discuss among yourselves to offer the offer we extend. You shall have time to debate the benefits of serving us and to contemplate the consequences of, a, of refusal. Pointing to one of the smaller... Sp um, oh, sorry. Uh, and then like they sort of point to that sort of roiling ocean beneath you, and you sort of see like, a bunch of different like faces and what looks like souls and just tormented creatures. Um, as they say this, um, and they say you have until the waves cover the tower of Ilirn the Mad once more, a full night by your reckoning, 
After that time, we shall summon you once more to demand an answer. Until then, you are guests, and no harm shall come unto you. You have our pledge on that. Our herald shall see to your quarters. Decide wisely. And soon after that, the, the youth um, opens up a portal to the left of you. Um, inside, you can see what looks like a gorgeously and luxuriously furnished tavern. Um, just wood floors made of mahogany. You see at the end, there's like a bar. Um, it looks like there's a bartender there with loads of drinks. Almost, like more drinks than your mind can possibly imagine. There's food everywhere. And it looks like there's also uh, lodging like rooms and such. And he bids you to to follow him into the portal. So it all just goes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Both my guys just go. <laughs> They're just yep. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. So you guys, uh, you guys go in, um, and uh, so once you guys are all in there, he says, uh, "Well, I'm I'm sure you know what you must do. Uh, enjoy the food. Uh, each of you has your own room." He points to all the doors. Uh, it looks like there's perfectly a door for each of you. Uh, no more, no less. Um, and he says, enjoy all the food and drink you want, and your decision will be tomorrow morning by what you would call time. And he says, uh, see you then, and like I said, choose wisely, and he opens the portal again and disappears through it, and you guys are basically left alone. You even see the bartender also seems to disappear as you guys look over towards there. All the drinks seem to be pouring themselves. Um, and yeah, what do you guys want to do? I should say the says... Fennec just walks to the bar, <laughs> picks up, yeah. like, <laughs> like, he looks at all of them, and just, like, grabs a tankard of something, and yeah. just starts drinking. He's just like, my life is hell. This, I'm dead, and this is some kind of horrible death spasm. That's all that's happening. I'm already dead. I got punched in the head. <laughs> Chisel sees uh, Fennec's reaction. He says, I could get used to this, and goes over, and he grabs a tankard, too, and kind of obliviously uh, starts enjoying things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, like, any food and drink you guys have is, like, it seems like it's exactly what you need right now. It's, like, it's like the perfect comfort food or the drink that you really, really were craving right now. Everything you have is just amazing and delicious. Um, it's probably a small, <laughs> small consolation the greater things, Pip, but... <laughs> Pip, Pip has, like, a smoked turkey leg, you know, and he kind of, like, <laughs> takes the chunk oh, out of it. He so says, messy. oh, man, this is better than a last meal. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's just recreating that scene from... Return of the King, yeah. where they're just oh, fucking the, 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 the grossest the eating just, eating yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Um, Doyle uh, picks up a drink uh, and tips it to his mouth without taking down the, <laughs> the ninja mask. <laughs> <laughs> and like 50% of it makes it through the cloth and the rest of it spills on the front of him. Yep, sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. And somewhat predictably, Jedediah just... Uh, yeah, looks behind the bar for a, a large bag of nuts and uh, just starts scoffing them down. Um, yeah, Chuck yeah. goes oh, yeah, for the beer. I should, I should say you do find your bag of nuts here. There's probably yeah, many, many, many bags. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, uh, go ahead, Martin. Um, so Chuck, you know, makes a beeline for the bar, starts to to grab a, a large tankard of some sort of ale, and uh, and chrysanthemum says. Um, uh, Chuck, don't, um, I don't want you getting too inebriated. Um, after all, you're, uh, you're here to assist me, and you're no use at all if you're, uh, legless under the, under the table. <laughs> and Chuck sort of retreats back to the table with a, a, a tankard, which he nurses for the rest of the evening, drinking slowly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Poor Chuck. Yeah. Indeed. But, uh, and, uh, but Chuck, Chuck does notice that, like, as he's drinking it, it seems to refill itself. It seems like his Ooh. desire for more and a little treachery of not showing. <laughs> he, it, Chris definitely does not see it being refilled, but it seems like he's able to keep drinking all night. Yeah. So, uh, and Chrysanthemum, uh, yeah, allows herself a small glass of wine and uh, takes it back to the table and uh, drinks it very, mm, quite, try, yeah, conservatively, for, you know, mm. little sips. Mixigas uh, eats the whole chicken. Like <laughs> at once. <laughs> I mean he's a lizard, so he doesn't have yeah. he can't like chew. So he yeah. just mm. ah, eats a whole chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a roast chicken. Amazing. Chris Chris offers uh Ixigas a, a small serviette, a little silken cloth. Um do you do you need to wipe that off? He like uh takes it and like looks at it. 
and then hands it back because he's not <laughs> sure what to do with it. <laughs> Pip says, oh, I thought he was going to eat it. <laughs> I hadn't we considered have culture, that. you know, <laughs> not a monster. Does he, he again, <laughs> like eat something else, like a whole apple without chewing it. <laughs> As he just <laughs> swallows an orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's up to you guys if you guys want to discuss anything amongst each other. Um, nobody at this point is disturbing you. Um, if you're going off what? to your chambers, you can, but uh, it's up to you. What did they say Pip? we were looking for? A yolk? An, a the... yolkless egg. Yeah. The... <laughs> says, yolkless. says Cedric. Who has a bucket eggs of, can't of be fried fertilized. chicken? <laughs> Yolkless uh, egg. Is that right? Pip is generally, <laughs> generally uh, doesn't know. Uh, is that what they said? He looks at Ismith since she kind of seems like she, she yeah. might be the most together of the group. <laughs> well, I, I, I once had some wonderful food in a in a in a tavern far north of where. Uh, where my forest was, and there was this um, this delightful dessert. It was was called a meringue, which was some sort of uh, yolkless egg dessert. I, I'm wondering if I, I don't know, maybe. And she just witters on about this meringue. And... I don't think that's what they meant. Hmm. I think Cedric they could simply like... make a meringue if that's what they wanted. Well, I don't know. It was it was rather special. <laughs> Like glances over, there is a meringue on the table, yeah. <laughs> which has appeared, of course, because uh, Chrysanthemum is thinking about it. Just like that one over there. <laughs> Cedric's just like, I think that it's like, you know how sometimes, and like Cedric is not an idiot, but sometimes says stupid things. So he's like, well, you know how sometimes you can get double yolks? I think this is like the opposite of that, where it's just like no yolk. Why would they want that? I don't know. Just the God. white? Yeah, yeah, just the white. No no yolk. The yolk's the best part. Right? That's what I think, but I'm not a chaos god. <laughs> that is chaotic. Now I understand. They're okay. allergic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I've got an idea. Maybe. <laughs> it's... Maybe it's like a metaphor? <laughs> Like and they want it's the yolk inside of us. Yeah, that's the friendship that's created by along our the friendship way or and teamwork. Yeah. Yes, and I don't like metaphorical the quests. <laughs> <laughs> it's a literal quest for a metaphor, so hopefully we can find one. Maybe it's less deadly than than a normal quest, a metaphorical <laughs> quest. <laughs> the only hope, right, Fennec? And Pip <laughs> kind of slaps him hard on the shoulder. <laughs> Fe oh no, you've hit Fennec. <laughs> he, Fennec's just over at the counter. He hasn't stopped. He's like, I'm dead. I, di I died. <laughs> yes. <And> this, is <laughs> this is my punishment. <laughs> <clears throat> well, well I, I don't think we can say no anyway. I mean, uh, d did you see all those dead looking people beneath that star? I mean, in, in, in the ocean. I think we just end up as one of them if we say no. Well, did you see that one thing's cloak? It was all faces. Ho I know. Ho human faces. Horrible and then to there was the chicken. I don't want to be one one of those faces. <laughs> oh, you mean the eye with the sparrow legs? Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, yeah, the chicken without the chicken body. <laughs> just the eye and the chicken legs. That's an interesting interpretation. It is certainly one way to try and parse the information, yeah. Uh. Your brain is just trying to make sense of it all. <laughs> what about that guy that seemed to have, like, every disease? What was his deal, do you think? How is he chaotic? I mean, I think he had just disease. every disease. That was his deal. <laughs> was oh! Deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, uh, like you say, Isthmus, uh... <laughs> Sounds like we don't have a choice. I mean, what are they going to do to us if we don't? Uh, I, oh, I don't make know. us suffer for all eternity? At the very least, I'd have thought. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 
<laughs> just catching up to the conversation, Doyle goes, I like eggs. <laughs> <laughs> just a plate of eggs appears in front of you with yolk, unfortunately. He, like, can't figure out how to get the egg open. <laughs> yeah. He just keeps crushing them. <laughs> I'm like, oh. No. Oh. You'll get it while... Uh, yeah, the then a little a hard-boiled egg in one of those holders appears, and he's like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shell and all, just... <laughs> cool hand Luke's it. Just one, no, no bites. Whole ass hard-boiled egg. Oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah. Um... So to you guys, if you guys have, like I said, you guys can keep discussing. Whenever you guys are basically done and going off to bed, you guys just call it. It's up to you. Yeah, my uh, uh, chisel says that. Well, if we're going to die, uh, might as well get moving on it. I'm ready for bed. And uh, he goes up to retire. Now, they've shown us our rooms or there are quarters nearby or something like that. Uh, yeah, there's just a, there seems to be a room for each of you. It has like your face oh, on okay. the door. Um, oh, okay. Like, like a, yeah, like, like a nice, <laughs> like a nice wood carving of your face. Oh, wow! I think we've literally and metaphorically chewed the scenery enough. It's time for bed. <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pip and Chisel, uh, your characters seem to be the first to, like, I guess, head to bed, and you okay. got, you head into your just from uh, that you seem to be like, oh, I'm done. You two head into your into your uh, quarters, and as you guys sort of after a little while. Everybody else is sort of finishing up eating, doing whatever, and head off to bed, too. Um, the portal opens up again, and a golden woman in bedraggled um, rags and stuff. Rags and stuff. Rags and furs, and it's all. she looks all greasy. She has silver hair. like Not not not, not just, like, a silver color hair, but like, it looks like actual like, metallic silver hair. Uh, it's all greasy and uh, messy. She comes out into the main hall to you guys, um, and she, she looks around to see if there's anybody else. And she points at you guys and like tells you to come come closer to her. She's like on the other side of the room, um, and she she points to basically Jack and John's characters and Chris uh, Chris Anthemum. Um and she sort of like uh, bids you towards her. Fennec drunkenly staggers over. He's like, "What do you want, foul spirit?" <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she says, "Listen, I I don't I don't have a lot of time." Um, but I need to talk to you before you guys talk to the host tomorrow. Listen, I'm, I'm not one of these demons here. I'm actually from the plane of law. Um, it seems like the, the a lot of my, uh, lawful overseers have gotten a bit, uh, complacent in recent times, too busy on their own, on their own agendas. And I know for a fact that the yokeless egg is not being protected properly. Um, what I need you to do... If you will, if you will help out me, I, I can, I, I can give you much better rewards than the, than the Chaos Lords can. Um, she says this to all five of you. I'm assuming you guys all came over. I'm not sure if, yeah. Um, she says, uh, if you help me, when you, when you come back to the Court of Chaos with the egg, if you give it to me, I will bring you back to your realm, and, I, and you will be rewarded um, properly. Will, will you do this? Could you enumerate? With uh, what rewards I can give you? Um, she says, um, hmm, well, she says, um, you guys will have the favor of law on your side. Very similar to what the Core Chaos said with, with their whole spiel. She says she can give you weapons as well, um, and gems and anything you guys desire for doing this. She says it's, she says if you guys do this, this will possibly have um will possibly kick the uh the uh forces of law into understanding um what's going on with the schemes of chaos and it will probably be very good for them to finally like wake up a little bit of, as to what's going on and she says i'm sure you'll be greatly greatly rewarded beyond things i can even i can even uh, promise right now um as as it is i can't actually get in contact with the uh forces of law while i'm while i'm stuck here um but uh how on earth will you um make it into the court of chaos? I mean, surely you're not welcome there. No, I'm not. But uh, I'm I'm quite a good actress, and uh, th this is obviously not my true form, and nobody suspects me of anything, at least not to my knowledge. Could have uh, picked something a little less conspicuous. 
<laughs> oh, you, you think this is conspicuous? And she sort of, like, you guys are reminded of, like, the horrible, like, chaos demons <laughs> around you and the, like, the all the creatures that were, like, at the feet of the other gods. It's um, got a different vibe yeah, than everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she says, well, it might seem like that to you mortals, but the chaos lords haven't seemed to know us yet. Are you sure you're not one of them in, in disguise? Is this some sort of trap? Uh, I, I, you have to tell us if it's a trap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm. Cedric, he, he pipes, he's like, points his leather glove. He's like, you got to tell us. That's entrapment if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling I'm telling you the truth. I, I There's no way for me to truly sh- like give you proper evidence. You you have to take my word for it. Um, and she says, also, my name is Lexalia. Probably should have led with that. Well, I'm going to call you Lex. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but please, uh, you... uh, please do this for me. Are you able to bless us on our on our way? I mean, it would be um, as well to support us if you could. Not, not, not journey. right now, unfortunately. Like I said, if I use any of my any of my powers, they'll immediately alert all the Chaos Lords to my presence here. Never mind. But trust me, if you do this, I will get you out of here. I'll bring you back to your homes or back to your back to your plane. Chrysanthemum looks around. Well, what do we think? Consider it. And uh, she says that that's all I ask, really. Um, are there any further questions for her? What's the deal with the egg? Um, she says it's, uh, it's basically, it holds a primordial chaos, um, a very, very old power that's used to both create and destroy. Um, if the chaos lords get it, they can use it for creating horrible, horrible things. That is if they can control it. Any other questions? I must get back to my duties quickly before they notice I'm gone. No, I suppose not, says Cedric. Uh, well, I hope you have a lovely day. And <laughs> uh, if you betray us, I will totally... Hmm, I don't know what it's going to take, but I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> do not do not worry, I will not. As long as you hold up your end, I will make sure you get out of here. And with that, she opens up the portal again and, and sort of scurries out. Um, and with that, guys, uh, Jack, John, and Martin, do you guys mind deafening yourselves on Discord while I talk to Dan? Yep. Uh, Dan. Um, Sweet! So, which one of your characters would you say is the more ambitious or, um, I guess, uh, the one who would probably take lead the most on things? Uh, Pip, probably is- Pip. Pip? Okay. Probably Pip, yeah. Sounds good. Um, so, in the night, Pip is given a vision. Um, and in that vision, he sort of sees materialize in front of him that giant bloodshot eye. Um, beneath it are two chicken-like legs. Um, and you hear a sort of whispering voices uh, going through the back of your head. And it says, mm-hmm. Listen, if you want great power, if you grab the egg and bring it back to the court and bring it to me and not to just the entire host, I can grant you things. I can not only will you have my favor, um, but I can make you see things through walls. I can make you slip by your enemies. I can give you powers that you and no mortal has ever had before. Uh, yeah, Pip's eyes kind of widen hearing this in his head. Uh... uh... And he, I don't know, speaks or communicates and he kind of says, uh, what is your plan? What's your plan for this egg? What is it? Oh, that is beyond even what your little mind could understand. But I will create great things with it. Uh, is it going to mess up my everyday life? No, Give me, no. Giving you... No, oh, no. good. No, no. This will... Amen. This will not be used to destroy anything you can attach yourself to. Besides, by the time I use it, you will probably be dead for millennia anyway. Excellent. Now, 
<clears throat> can I tell any of my companions about this? Hmm. Do what you will. Do what you think is best. But um, they might turn on you. And do not Understood. tell anybody at the Core of Chaos about this. This is between you and me. Tell your companions if you need to. But uh, make sure what you bring What is your name? Me... Uh, I is am your name? Clark Chaos Garak. Lord. K-L-A? <laughs> I'll just allow for you. It's, very, it's, a, it's a weird name. Yeah. K-L-A? Yeah, K-L-A. R? Yeah. V? <laughs> G-O-R-O-K. Clark Garak. Clav Gorak. Uh, yes, Lord Clav Gorak. I, uh, I like the sound of this deal. I'll do what I can. Perfect. And he says, so if you if you do complete this, this will be your reward. And he holds out, with one of his chicken legs, he holds out what looks like a glass eye. And the eye has like a swirling blue vortex inside of it. Um, and it says it will grant you things you will never, you haven't been able to see before. And with that, the dream sort of uh, ends, and you wake up the next morning, and uh, all everybody uh, undeafen themselves. <laughs> Here. Uh, that's uh, that's great. <clears throat> all right. So it's all about. <laughs> The chaos. <laughs> so this we're... is all Sonic slash fiction. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's about time Sonic got a good adaptation. Yeah, oh yeah, in a DCC <laughs> game, but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick, guys. But uh, you feel free to talk amongst each other. Uh, it is going to be the next morning or morning. Um, mm -hmm. you guys have a full night's rest, and you'll be talking to the Corey Chaos when I get back. So feel free. You have some time to eat breakfast and talk amongst each other if you want to. Excellent. <laughs> the this the camera open on on Nixigaz who is saying like um I do not understand the yolkless egg in my culture we would simply consume the egg if it had no yolk to regain the calories <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Cedric's like yes yes we all know that about lizard people <laughs> yeah. it's it's a very famous thing that your your people do it's <laughs> It really goes without saying, you know, yeah. at this point. <sighs> My question is, how would you know an egg is yolkless unless you open it? You can smell it. Wouldn't you just eat it anyway? I mean, yolk or no yolk, wouldn't you just eat the egg if you saw it as a lizard man? We... I, I think you possess certain misunderstandings about <laughs> lizard reproduction. <laughs> <laughs> Namely, that it involves eggs. <laughs> Ah, oh, um, uh, and uh, Jedediah just looks slightly embarrassed. <laughs> Did I miss anything? <laughs> but say the egg was unfertilized and had a yolk, would you eat it then? <laughs> no, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I kind of figured what John said is line. That, was, that was a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you missed. <laughs> is there any toast involved? Or is it just like without toast? <laughs> if you eat an egg. <laughs> uh, we, we do not leaven bread, so we cannot make toast. <laughs> It's closer to a, a naan. <laughs> naan. <laughs> so, naan is involved in eating eggs which haven't got a yolk. <laughs> yeah, it's the flourless naan with the yolkless egg. It's a horrible, horrible <laughs> fucking breakfast that you should not have at all. <laughs> Poverty meal. <laughs> Poverty, yeah. <laughs> it possesses tens of calories. <laughs> it will technically keep you going. For some yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, after you guys have sort of uh, woken up now, um, you've had whatever meal you needed, um, and then you guys are whisked back to the Court of Chaos. Um, and they waste no time in demanding an answer. It seems like you guys have all said sort of yes already anyway, though. It seems like that was your... Even in it, there was no real, uh, I think you guys all kind of know what, what happens if, uh, <laughs> if you say no anyway. We, we'd kind of guessed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alex, I'd like to keep an eye out for that, uh, 
the watch call that approached us yesterday. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you uh, you see her. She's so basically around you. The way to look at this is that you guys are based on this platform beneath you is that sea yeah. of roiling, horrible, fying souls. Around you are the chaos gods, and at their feet, at their thrones, there are different people all around, different creatures. Some gorgeous, some disgusting. Um, probably some of the things that kind of catch your eye is um. Uh, the lady who looks like she's drowned will let her, every once in a while grab maggots out of her eye socket, throw it down below, and you'll see like her little followers like ravenously grab the maggots and shove them down their throats. Um, stuff like that, horrifying things that are probably very sickening. Um, mm-hmm. And um, you easily spot her. She's lo- she's watching you guys closely. You can tell. Um, and uh, you guys have already given your answer. Um, they say you're going to be going to um, a plane of law, and your normal weapons will not work there on any creatures you come across. Um, so everybody who has a weapon, um, you can add to this, or you can just leave it because it's going to be the, it has the exact same stats. But you are all given these um, imbued weapons with what looks like chaotic energy. They're black. They're sort of fuzzy. You can't. It's almost like a, an out of focus picture when you look at them. You can't quite like get a proper look at them. So if you have an axe or a pitchfork or anything like that, that's what you're given. It's basically just a carbon copy version of yours, but it has all this sort of chaotic energy all around it. Um, what about my teeth and claws? <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're given these dentures and little like claws that are chaotic. <laughs> it's like look. the plastic vampire yeah. teeth. Yeah, exactly. You have to put those yeah. in. They, uh, <laughs> They taste a little spicy, um, it's, uh, but, but yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> um, I do have normal weapons too. I just yeah. also have no, no, I think I think I think it's fun to just add to that. Whatever you use, they're yeah, gonna basically yeah. give you. Uh, they're gonna imbue with chaos. Um, so, and they do say um, if you guys bring this back to the material plane, they will just sort of disappear into smoke. So these are basically just to be used in the uh, plane of law. Um, uh, and they say, uh, now that you're well equipped and you're able to go ahead, um, they wish you luck on your journey. And you sort of hear like a the all the faces after they say good luck on your journey, all the faces on the cape start laughing, um, and all the gods uh, clap their hands together and there's a resounding smack, and you guys are dragged away from the court of chaos and brought onto a gorgeous green field. Um, Oh, I will say, I just skipped a little part earlier. Um, they do say that, very, this, is, this is where I was saying to Martin earlier, this sounds very similar to the last uh, the last uh, scenario where um, there's a prison <laughs> on another plane um, and it looks like basically a big cataphract. It's like a big sort of diamond kind of thing. Um, and that's the prison that the, uh, the Yokel's Egg is in. Um, so I'll just read out another little uh, text block for you guys. The maddening vista of the Court of Chaos vanishes in a cloud of ebon smoke reeking of the pungent odor of decay. The vapor clears just as abruptly, leaving you standing on a hill of emerald grass beneath a shining sun. Each blade of green is exquisitely manicured, more fitting for a lord's garden than a wild meadow. Around you, the grass stretches as far as the horizon, which bisects the earth in a sky with razor-straight precision. Only a few distant copses of idyllic trees growing in perfect harmony with the landscape break the carpet of pristine green. A pure golden sun rides high in a perfect azure sky, untouched by clouds. With your unobstructed view of the land around you, you swiftly notice the perfection of nearly everything your eyes light upon. Each tree grows straight and tall, its branches and leaves all paragons of order and correctness. No blade of grass bears the slightest tint of yellow. No small stone is jagged and chipped. A single blemish is present in the flawlessness around you. At your feet grows a solitary rose. Its eight crooked petals discolored by rot, its vibrant red fade to a smoky pink. A squirming worm gnaws at the heart of the rose's blossom. This can only be the flower that will ensure your return to the Court of Chaos. Um, below your hilltop vista, high above a perfectly circular bowl surrounded by faultless knolls, is the tremendous form of the gleaming, flawless diamond. The, mountain, the mountainous lozenge hangs in the air like a raindrop halted in mid-fall. Uh, the bombist tip suspended a short distance above the immaculate grass. This can only be the cataphract you seek. The large recumbent form of some great beast rests directly beneath it. So, just to fucking break that down a bit, because it's a big fucking long thing. You guys are a gorgeous, perfect plane. Um, the only way to get back to the core chaos is to pluck that rose at your feet when you're done with this. There, That that big diamond prison is 100 feet up in the air, and below it, you can see from where you are, there's some sort of beast uh, at the bottom of the... Uh, at the bottom of this big uh, cataphract. So, with that in mind, and with your chaos-imbued weapons, 
What do you guys want to do? Wait, I just have a... This yeah. is not like... what. What's the spelling of the word you keep using to describe the crystal? Because I hear cataphract, and that's like a, a horseman. I know. that. That's imagine. what... That, it's literally spelled uh, C-A-T-A. P R P H R A C T. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. If that's just the name they gave for it, like for whatever reason. I, that's I'm now just imagining this uh, <laughs> this giant crystal in the shape of a man on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of metaphorical reason as to why it's called that, but presumably, yeah. Uh... But yeah, this is an exercise for the for the viewer at home. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's confusing on purpose <laughs> um well um this place is rather marvelous i'm not entirely sure i'd uh i think we should pick that rose i mean it's uh, perhaps we could make a small tavern over there and uh, and I'm, I'm sure there must be um wheat and barley and things we can use to make some fine drinks and uh this looks and chris is is clearly <laughs> enthralled by the place and there's this beaming smile from um from her face as, as if this is the place she was always meant to be cedric is just like well well team don't forget where we packed the rose <laughs> and he's just like points down and he's like <laughs> Let's not forget where we pa where this is. <laughs> Good call. Well, it seems uh, fairly obvious which direction we're going in. I'll point up yeah. at this uh, giant floating tower. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, is there like anything in the sky that we could be like, oh yes, that's how we're going to get up there? Uh, no, not not to your not to your knowledge. You can't see anything that leads to it. It looks like it's just floating there, a hundred feet up in the air. How, how far away is it, uh, roughly? Um, I would say it's probably like a 30-minute walk away. It's kind of hard to tell, really, because it's as you look at everything... No it's kind of hard frame to, of reference? Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell a frame of reference, but I would mm. say probably about a 30-minute walk from where you are. Next, I guess, it says, uh, Mark's uh, near the flower so we can find our way back. <laughs> Pip says, well, uh, Yolkless right. egg. Uh, we all know how that works for sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know, y'all good. Uh, he says, Well, this Yolkless egg isn't going to find itself. And uh, Pip kind of starts off at a trot, actually, kind of kind of a half jog kind of a thing. Sounds good. Maybe they've got a ladder next to it. I mean, someone's going to have to clean that thing at some point, right? So, I mean, maybe they've got a ladder next door. <laughs> It's just Cedric's lying down. Just, as we walk along, Cedric is just like, I don't know. As on a plane of law, do things get dirty? I mean, I mean, the laws of the universe say things get dirty, but is that? <laughs> does that happen I, here? They're just good cleaners, right? I mean, presumably. I, I, <laughs> I guess it comes down to your conceptual understanding of what law is and how they interpret that. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> What if my interpretation of law is different to the founder of the galaxy's interpretation of law? <laughs> Long philosophical yeah. discussion. Yeah. Yeah. The next three hours, guys, is what does law and chaos mean? And is alignment a good thing to have in like, uh, RPGs? <laughs> life, so that it just comes down to these guys again saying, we would simply eat the yokeless egg. <laughs> and everyone nods wisely this time. <laughs> But yeah, um, so Dan, you're heading off. I'm assuming everybody's sort of in tow. Um, mm -hmm. You guys have kind of marked a way to, you know, find your way back to the rose. It shouldn't be too hard. It's a very bright day. Honestly, the patch of uh, of that sort of little, like, budding chaos is pretty easy to, to point out, but amongst every, like, gorgeous piece of, uh, uh, like, perfect blade of grass. Um, and you guys uh, head off trying towards this big diamond in the sky. And when you guys get to about 100 feet away from the diamond, you see the creature below it sort of slowly and what looks like almost um, almost like an old man getting up. You see this sort of big ox kind of lifts itself up onto its onto its uh, legs and just sort of stares at you from where it is. Um, it can't, it obviously hasn't um, said anything or reacted to you at all yet. It just sort of is watching where you are. If you guys are like sort of trying like serpentine at all it sort of follows like with its with its head where you're going um but as you're getting closer and closer um it just keeps keeps watch on you um and when you guys get to about maybe 50 feet away uh you hear him say 
Seldom do I see wayfarers abroad in this place. <sighs> Have you come, my lords, bearing the words of my masters? Or is it that cataphract and that which lies within that brings you to my watch place? Be warned that if your hearts harbor malice and larcenous deeds are your aims, you'll finally unshirking in my duty to oppose you. Speak, my lords, and may your words be favorable to my ears. You kind of sound like you're phoning it in, I'll be honest. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a script, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Cedric just, like, puts his hands together and, like, both fingers, like, like, like this, literally this, he's like, Sounds to me like you are dealing with job dissatisfaction. Uh, you have no idea. I was placed here by my lords just to for something I did that I can't even remember anymore. It's been so long, but I'm stuck here forever. But I guess from your response there that you are not here to release me from my uh, my duty. What what are you doing here? I'm assuming you guys are getting like somewhat inching closer, or you guys staying at at, at fifty feet. If, unless it's uncomfortably loud to get any closer, I'd get closer. How big is this thing? <laughs> this yeah. thing, this thing is. Um, uh, let's see here. It's fucking huge. Uh, it's so it's ten feet tall and thirty feet long. Down like it's like it's a big ox basically. Oh. So it's okay. it's a gargantuan ox. Um, you can see though, like looking at its fur, it's all matted and mangy. Uh, this looks like a very old ox. The eyes are, like, milky. Um, and it just seems sort of just tired. The, the, the problem is, um, un uh, we understand the cleaners haven't been doing a very good job, and this, this cataphract here has been getting dirty. People have been wandering by, and there's, like, filth on the bottom, one of those bottom sides there. Um, we've been invited along to give a quote for cleaning. Um, I think the idea is to, um, they're going to outsource a contract. This is, you know, that this sort of in-house cleaning thing ain't working. Um, so we, you understand, we're not here to touch it or go up near it or anything, but we're just here to to, to scope out the job and, uh, and give your, uh, your uh, masters a quote for cleaning. <laughs> I appreciate the effort, Martin. That's good to give yourself a fleeing luck. But I, he, he responds with, nobody has ever gone past me, not in a very, very long time. Since I took this duty, nobody's been there, and nothing gets dirty here. Uh, you are lying. And as you guys are getting closer, you see like his big sort of nostrils kind of flare. He says, I smell the taint of chaos on you. Those weapons... I can see them now closer as he's sort of walking up just a little bit. You are here to enter. You are, I must, I must kill you. What? Wait. Wait, hold on. Uh, maybe we can help each other out. Maybe we can free you, Pip says. Okay, uh, Pip. I mean, frankly, Pip, give me. You seem pretty bummed. We could just kill you. <laughs> Wouldn't you like that? <laughs> Pip, Pip kind of like, it's like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he says, uh, as much as I would like to die, finally, I must, by my honor, fight you to the death. It will not be easy. You will not survive. And I will stay here forevermore. Um, but Pip, you, um, you, you say that uh, about, like, possibly we can release you. Do you want to give me mm -hmm. an intelligence check? Because you're probably maybe up. I'm assuming you're a bit further up in the group and you're looking at this creature sort sure. of slowly walking towards you. No problem. Yeah. It's a, oof, five. Uh, no, it's that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the DC is ten. In case you want to burn a luck to try and get uh, we have a reroll as well. Remember, we got one banked. From yeah, well, you have one banked. You, you, have also, you also have eight fleeing luck amongst you, and Dan Pip is a thief, correct? And fleeing. Luck oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, let me. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll burn up. Uh, I'll try burning up my fleeting luck to get that. Okay. So let me say, I believe that is a D4 or a D3. Uh, it's a D3, I believe, at level one. D3. Okay, cool. So I'm going to burn both of them. Just keep in mind, you can only you only get one luck roll. So remember that. If you want to burn more, it's up to you. But Okay, is, fair yeah, enough. Like if you heard fail that, this, you don't, get, you don't get to add more luck past this. I'm just like, you Understood. Know, but you feel free. Two, yeah. 2D3 two, two D, two D is a pretty good chance. Who didn't oh, make it, though. One off. Just yeah, that's close. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All good. All right. Um, yeah, and sort of as you as you guys are saying this, um, and you and you try and get a look at him better, uh, Pip, uh, he charges towards you guys. So we're gonna do initiative here, um, and unlike before with level zeros, initiative is per character, not per player. So give me two initiatives each. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, nice roll. Well, 21 for Cedric. And, uh... <laughs> and 3 for Fennec. <laughs> Nah, it says I have no tokens selected. Uh, yeah, just roll, roll the d20 reflex. plus the mod. Yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's see. So, all right, I got a nine for Ixigaz and an eighteen for Doyle. Okay, nine for Ixi. And what'd you say? Uh, what was the other one, Jack? Eighteen for Doyle. Eighteen for Doyle. Okay. Uh, John. Uh, let's see. Twenty-one for Cedric. Okay. And uh. Three for Fennec. Okay. <laughs> poor Fennec. <laughs> yeah, poor Fennec. Um, Martin? Uh, so, Chrysanthemum rolled a three plus one for a four. Okay. Uh, this gets better. Um, Jedediah rolled a flat 12. Okay. And Chuck rolled a one with a plus two. Oh, boy. All right, so he'll... We'll probably go before Fennec then. Uh, check. Yeah, the plus two would make yeah. him better. Yeah. Um, and Dan. Yeah, Chisel had a thirteen, and Pip had a six. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, so this creature, um, when it charged you, has sort of closed the gap somewhat. It's about twenty feet away. Uh, Cedric, you were first. Uh, Cedric knocks his crossbow and fires off. A bolt of the one of the chaos bolts that he's been given. Yeah, sounds good. He cries out, "I'm very sorry about this." <laughs> <laughs> so give me a second here, Cedric. Da, 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 equipment, crossbow, roll. Ten. Oh, didn't include my agility modifier for the to hit. Uh, oh, that's weird. So that's twelve. That's 12. Uh, 12 is not enough, but you need 13 to hit, so I don't know if you want to burn luck. I will spend my one of my fleeting luck to do okay. that. Okay, sounds good. And I hit It's also good to do in combat. There's such a high chance of rolling. A yeah, one. and you guys have a, you guys well, have yeah, a lot of so right more dice rolls. Nine characters. You guys have yeah. a lot right now, yeah. <laughs> nice, good. Yeah, you know, your bolt strikes true, um, and he, he lets out uh, closer to death. Thank you. <laughs> Um, as he's hit with a bolt. Um, like I said, you could just let us kill you. We wouldn't tell anyone that you did it. <laughs> I can't. I'm telling you. <laughs> I have They'd to fight you with out. the best of my abilities. Um, okay, and then it's Doyle's turn. Um, okay, yeah. Doyle has a speed of 40 because he's a ninja. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so, and the gap is 20 feet. <laughs> well, is, is the gap... How, yeah, how far away? I guess we were like 10 or 20 feet away, right? Yeah, he's twenty. Uh, he's yeah, he's twenty feet away. So you're you're yeah, he's twenty feet away from you. Okay, so you could maybe almost get around to the back of of the the big ox. Yeah, I would say you can get to like the like the back like haunch like the back like like not all the way in the back, but like probably just right as like back leg. Yeah, I'm asking enough for a backstab, is what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, he's old. He's not gonna be able to stop you from backstabbing him. Or yeah. Okay. So yeah, Doyle's gonna. He also gonna... doesn't have. Sim he can't turn. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's, like um, a, he's like a battleship trying to turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doyle is, of course, going to, as he sprints at an insane speed around the is flank he, of the Is thing, he fucking like Naruto out. running? I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. does he have the arms yeah. back? The yeah, arms back for extra. No, he does the other ninja run where he's like leaned at 45 degrees oh, forward uh, yeah. and like his <laughs> legs are probably moving too fast for the amount of distance he's covering. I really thought you were going to say he does the um, other one where he has his arms out in front of him instead. And I was like, That's <laughs> <laughs> in the inverse Naruto yeah. one where he leans backward with his arms yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, right. the reverse Naruto, a classic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, um, go for your. Uh, your and he pulls out, of course, the most traditional of ninja weapons, that battle axe that he found. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can't. You, uh, you can't. Oh, you told has to be one handed, right? Well, it has to. Well, has to be. It has to be a sneak weapon. So dagger, garrote. Um, I believe right. blackjack. Blackjack. Yeah. I I do love the idea of trying to garrote a thirty foot. Sorry, ten foot tall, no. thirty foot long. If he tried garroting, I'd be like, his his like entire neck span is too big for a yeah. garrote to get around. Like, <laughs> but um, but imagine if I did. Well, this tiny little blackjack. <laughs> now you can still attack with the battle axe. It just won't be a backstab. The skull. Just yeah, I'll do it with. 
Hmm. Jack, do you have, if you have enough money for a dagger, since you like you have, I, I have one. He had one already. Oh, he had one already. He was yeah. actually holding that because the dagger yeah. ends up doing a D10 damage if it's in a backstab. By the way, you automatically right. break his D10 instead of D4. And then hold on, let me. Oh fuck, I forgot to put his tip bonus his end. Um, so I can use his agility instead of strength, and adds luck. So it's sorry, I'm just add this in real quick. I was stupid last time. And yeah, I'll, I'll go with the dagger. <laughs> oh, well, Tim, <laughs> Tim, it's already natural critical because it's a, because it's a backstep if he hits. But um, we can hold on to that for the next hit if you want. Or we can do two crits. We can do, we can do two crit rolls. Oh, oh, God. Okay, so <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. I mean, that definitely won't hit, but. Uh, is it eight plus? It's an eight. Well, I mean, it can just be a natural. It, Tim's, Tim's roll can be a critical then. If you want, because next oh, roll, because he to two twenty. Yeah, because uh, he he spent three hundred bits to make the next attack roll a crit. So, um, right. natural twenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember how critical hits work in this game. So, so. Uh, you are. I, what's the ninja's uh, crit die and table? I'm assuming it's very similar. To uh, that. He is rolling a d10 on table two. D10 so it looks like. Five, yeah, a three is what the roll was. Okay. Uh. And do you have any luck, sorry? Uh, no, he's zero. All right. Zero, well, the 10 luck, yeah. All right. Let's see here. Uh, blow pierces foe's kidney, inflict an extra 3-3 three, three damage. Um, Does so... he run up the leg of this uh, yeah. thing? <laughs> yeah. <stab it>? yeah. <laughs> Such a stupid <laughs> character. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> So you did seven from the D10 of the dagger, and then you roll, roll, roll me the other uh, 3D3? 3D3, okay. Yeah, that's that, That's the, that's the crit table for you. I love it, Tim. That was a great time. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> um, nice. So uh, that is a total of, what is that? Uh, that's, that's 16 damage. 16 damage. Okay, well, um, he's dead. Um, you fucking... <laughs> ninja too, Alex. I want to be a ninja also. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you, uh, oh you... yeah, Tim, Tim, good spin there. That was yeah, great. that was a great spin, Tim. That good was job. Awesome, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, Doyle's such a stupid fuck. So Doyle like fucking ninja runs past this, runs up the leg, and then just plunges the dagger into the kidney, and I guess probably like. Then does a cool backflip off. Yeah, and, it goes yeah, like, rips yeah. out and then backflips off and lands and then like resumes his normal like dumpy pose. Yeah, and the uh, the the guardian <laughs> the guardian looks at looks at Doyle and says, "Thank you." As he just turns into like dust and sort of flies off into like with the wind. Um, and as he disappears, a shimmering staircase um, appears in the sunlight, coming down to towards you from the uh, the the uh, prison above you. Oh, there's a ladder there. <laughs> and uh you know what uh, i like the description a lot jack give yourself a fleeing luck because that's just fucking in, <laughs> fucking the insane bullshit that the ninja like from the first yeah. roll has already done crazy bullshit um but yeah so, so stupid <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um <laughs> there is a staircase now that sort of comes down it, it goes up a hundred feet up to the the bottom of the uh the big diamond a um, hundred feet. Would you say that's a staircase to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Please. Let's get DMCA as I play that. Um. <laughs> you said the words, buddy. That's all it takes. Yeah, yeah God damn it. <laughs> all now, right. We're playing staircase to Gehenna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> uh. Also, at this point, after a lengthy pause, as everyone kind of resumes everything, Doyle goes, You're welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, Pip kind of looks over and he's like, mm, "Yeah, you can just start with the stabbing next time." <laughs> <laughs> Benick oh. is just still readying up <laughs> as as we come to an end. He's like, huh? oh. <laughs> oh, "That was Chris that was a clutch, clutch thing there, Tim." And don't forget, you guys do have a reroll in case anything bad happens. But yep. go ahead. Nice, nice. Uh, so Chris will whisper into Chuck's ear, and you'll see Chuck just tootle off to the back of this thing, and he's going to start hacking the tail off. It's it's gone. It, 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 it turned to dust. It turned to oh, dust. It's gone. And, and okay, I missed that bit. Wind, yeah. 
Sorry. Uh, no oxtail, oxtail soup for you. Soup. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would have tasted amazing. Mm. He was pretty mangy, though. He yeah. was pretty mangy, yeah. I, I did oh. want to ask him how come he's kind of... If nothing gets dirty here. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's, yeah. yeah. I guess he's... It looks just... like one thing gets dirty here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should uh, You insult him as you kill him, or it's like, be gone, <laughs> filth. <laughs> <laughs> like, I actually hadn't... I said that he detected the chaos weapons. I was going to be like, but buddy, if you let us pass, we'll clean your coat. <laughs> 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 and by that I mean... Fennec will do it. <laughs> I love that one of my PCs has essentially become a hireling. Yeah, it's <laughs> or great. Or familiar to the other. <laughs> it's it's a like... hireling. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was just assuming you guys are going up the stairs. Yep. Um, yep. So you guys make, make up the stairs. Um... The shimmering stairs rise up to to end in a pentagonal chamber. Soft, silvery light from an unseen source bathes the room in artificial moonlight. The room is fashioned from pink marble veined with white uh, striations that glitter in the mystical glow. Above you, the chamber soars, terminating in a sea of celestial light a hundred feet overhead. Each wall of the room holds a single door wrought from gleaming gold, their faces inscribed with elegant runes. Excuse me. Um, uh, let's see here. Is there anybody uh, of uh, lawful um, alignment? Yes. Okay. So anybody of lawful alignment, um, you guys can read the, the doors. There's five of them that you can see, um, basically on each, basically the, of each side of the diamond. Um, the first door reads uh, creation. Um, the second door reads construction. The third door reads Enlightenment. The fourth door reads Sacrifice. And the fifth door reads Judgment. Um, so, these doors, um, yeah, are on each side of this sort of, uh, this diamond. What do you guys want to do? You're sort of like basically like in this, I guess, like lobby area almost. Uh, Chris will point out to everyone else what the uh, what the doors say. Okay. Um, Cedric takes off his wide brim witch hunter hat, and he's just <laughs> like, "Do you think we have to uh, make the yolkless egg?" I don't think anyone else possesses the correct biology for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we could try one of the doors, maybe. Um, creation sounds not unpleasant. Creation, construction, sacrifice, judgment, and what was the other one, it, uh, Chris? Yeah, enlightenment. It was that one there. Enlightenment. Oh, enlightenment. <laughs> That one sounds okay as well. I did. I didn't much like the sound of sacrifice or judgment. They sounded a bit brutal, if you ask me. <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't like judgy people. Pip says. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think creation or enlightenment sounds not terrible. Flip a coin. <laughs> for five different or, or between those two I was like for five those... different doors <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was got those five side coins here <laughs> I mean we could flip, we could flip a coin if we wanted to if, yeah. if everyone yeah, wants to do one of those alright so heads yeah, flip or, a coin. or one is creation two is alignment sounds good alright uh, I'm doing that Jack nice ha <laughs> so I guess it was, I guess that was zero and one instead of one and two or did... um, tails, oh. it says. It actually came up T. Yeah, T. Okay, okay, with T. Okay. Yeah, huh, that's yeah. Funny. Oh, I see. I yeah, 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 yeah it's pretty cool. Up but... Instead of the zero. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, was tails enlightenment or is that creation? I didn't even, we didn't even say it was tails. <laughs> 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 it's enlightenment. Yeah, it's enlightenment. <laughs> it's enlightenment. All right. 
it lightly it Pip, is. Like, the coin is flipping, and Pip's already stepping towards the enlightenment just, door. Just, yeah, like, yeah his fucking... tails was enlightenment, right? It's, it's just <laughs> fucking stupidest toy, toy toss. God damn it, coin toss. <laughs> We just wanted to absolve ourselves of responsibility of yeah. picking in case someone went wrong. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's like a firing wrong. squad. You don't tell the person who has. Yeah, no one knows yeah. who has the bullet. Real bullet. Uh, Pip's gonna use his newfound uh, trap detecting uh, abilities and try to kind of look around the the door for for traps. Yeah, give me a give me a check for traps. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, yeah. No, it doesn't seem to be any traps on this. All right, move. Open the door. Yeah, so you guys open the door and go in, and you stand upon the highly polished marble floor of a grand hall. Ten glittering stone pillars support a vaulted ceiling adorned with painted images of pastoral life. The hall is lit brightly by flambeau affixed to the pillars and bearing ivory tapers. The strains of music drift through the air, hauntingly beautiful, in the unoccupied chamber. Interwoven between the notes, you detect a strong feminine voice speaking in your native tongue. There is an absence in this oasis of perfection, the voice says. If thou art a true champion of law, take steps, however dire, to address this absence. Though its presence, you shall pass your trial. Through its presence, you shall pass your trial. Um, and uh, moments after this voice speaks, you start to see translucent dancers of great beauty appear in the hall, engaging in complex courtly rounds. They seem to be dancing around, and like everything's a, every dance is perfect. There's not a single flaw in their dancing. Um, but we are going to roll initiative here, guys. Or we can keep the ones you guys just rolled for the for the Oxford. It's up to you guys what you want to do. Um, basically, the reason there's no combat here. This is just basically per rounds, sort of a puzzle. Um, so I'll let you guys decide, depending because you guys had basically really average rolls. You had really high ones and low ones. So do you guys want to re-roll? Or no, that's want... fine. Let's let's keep it flowing. I, I say. Yeah. What we got. All right. So um, Cedric, <laughs> you are first. And so just sort of give you guys a good idea. It's basically just like a a rectangular room um and there's 10 there's 10 pillars each pillar has sort of a candelabra on each one um and there's these translucent dancers going around and they're they're on the other side of the of the room but it seems like they're getting closer and closer to you guys um <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm first. I have no idea what the fuck. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. What did the what did the voice say? Can we get I, a, I, I'm a gonna say, I'm gonna say right now, you guys chose the hardest puzzle first, in my opinion. <laughs> um, <laughs> no so surprise. Good. Enlightenment isn't an easy thing. Yeah, um, it's really so, easy to judge though. So uh, to, here, I'll draw. I'll draw on this just to make it a little bit easier for you guys. Um, are the are the candelabra lit? Yes. Well, it's already enlightened, so there's nothing we can do. The puzzle's solved. Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> What if we just leave and come back later? <laughs> um, Make sure I get this right. So this obviously is not to scale, um, but... Oh. God damn it. Why is it doing that? Get a text box, maybe? Yeah, it's just like a weird thing. Um, mm. This is obviously is not. I'm just I'm just pasting them down so I can just get them down. Yeah, there. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. gonna do one side here, but basically imagine that these circles, um, they're basically a parallel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and basically on each of these pillars is um, a uh, like a candelabra on each one, and these are supposed to be evenly spaced. They're not, but. You guys, can, whoever is doing stuff, you can fix it if you want to. But yeah, basically, imagine just on each side, there's five pillars. Each has um, just a basically like a a sconce on them. And they're all lit, and there's ghostly dancers coming towards us. Yeah, and I'll, I'll reread what she said, uh, the voice. Please. Um, uh, so, uh, there is an absence in this oasis of perfection, the voice says. If thou art a true champion of law, take steps, however dire, to address this absence. Through its presence you shall pass your trial. Um. And I'll say this right now, guys, a lot of these, a lot of these puzzles will require you guys basically ask questions. Um. Yeah. Because I can't just give yep. you details, otherwise that basically uh -huh. just gives it away. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Um. 
Is there any lone dancer in the group? Uh, does not look like it. It looks like they're all together. Um, they're all in per perfect harmony. Um, and like I said, they don't seem to pay any attention to you. Um, but they're moving around. Um, uh, like they're moving closer towards you, but they they're not like running at you or anything like that. They just seem to be dancing in this sort of almost like a ballroom mm -hmm. dance. Are they dancing around the pillars, or are they just dancing there in the middle of the hall towards us? Um. Uh, it doesn't seem to. I'd say they seem to be like everywhere. Honestly, at that at that, at the far end, away from you, like um. So it doesn't seem like they're just stuck, just like in the middle. It seems they just be dancing around. I would say most of them are between the two pillars, um. But it's not like a hard rule that they're all between those. Okay. Uh, are the pillars all identical and the sconces all identical on them? Yeah, and like the candles. Is one of the candles like noticeably more burned than the others or something? Yeah. No, they all seem to be um, totally, totally uh, um, the same, identical to each other on both sides. None are shorter or taller. So how are the candelabras fixed because most of the ones I, I thought a candelabra was something that uh, hung from yeah, the ceiling it, rather it, says, than, uh... it, it changes, it says flambeau and then it also says candelabra and the picture, it just looks like you guys can reach them um, it's like a sconce yeah, it's so like a sconce, Bas basically every pillar has a thing that gives off light mm. um, to just make it make it easy as possible um, that's, that's the important part of this really but the dancers don't like look any different when they're in the light of the pillars, are they? Like, um, no, it doesn't uh, doesn't seem like it. Um, is, sorry. No, no, I was just going to. <laughs> if if Cedric tries to climb up like one of the pillars a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could I try and like see if there's a pattern on the floor or something? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Um. So you climb up one. Um. And give me an intelligence check. Thirteen. Yep. Ooh. That passed. Um. Thank God. There's no pattern on the floor, but I guess just changing your perspective a little bit. Um. You notice that the lights aren't giving off any shadows. Like the, there's no pillar shadows or anything. Yeah, like there's no there's no shadows in this room. The dancers aren't giving off shadows. The lights aren't giving off shadows. You aren't giving off shadows. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so so Cedric that's Cruz. that's uh that's that's Cedric's turn. Yep. All right. That's now next is Doyle. You guys can obviously brainstorm and talk the whole time throughout. This is more just like. Yeah. As, as you guys are doing your actions, they're getting closer, basically. I'm just like, there's a timer. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doyle's not like a... In the absence of any command, I think all that he would do is climb onto one of the other pillars, because like, oh, someone else did that. Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> He's not going to be the one to solve the fucking puzzle. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Unless it requires a backstab. In which case, He's good maybe. at that, apparently. Um, none of the, yeah, so none of the dancers give off a shadow. There's not, like, one that does? Nope, none of them. No, you can't see a oh, single could, shadow in this entire room. It looks weird. Could you paste the text if it's copyable or, like, yeah, clip uh, it and uh, put it in the chat? Um, I'm gonna go to read it. Yeah, I should have actually grabbed the PDF of that. One second. Oh, good. Maybe we should try lighting our own light source. Uh Okay. I'll, I'll read, I'll read yeah. it again, Jack, while I get get the copy of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, if it's too difficult, it's cool. I no, can. no, I'll, I'll be getting it for you. It's just, just in the essence of me just being quiet here. Um, there is an absence in this oasis of perfection, the voice says. If thou art a true champion of law, take steps, however dire, to address this absence. Through its presence, you shall pass your trial. Oh. Is... Go ahead, John. I was going to say, what if we do that? the steps the dancers are doing backwards <laughs> I, yeah i was gonna have another question is there does there appear to be like a gap where somebody should be dancing in the formation of dancers um 
Not that you can see. It doesn't look like there's anything. It doesn't, yeah, no, it doesn't look like there's a gap or anything like that. Anything odd in the ceiling? Any light source? Any? No, it's just a vaulted ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, no shadows being cast up there either. <laughs> yeah, so this one's a. Um, <laughs> this, one, this, one, this one's this one's a rough one. <laughs> this is worth. I will. Play, I will it? say. I will say the solution is not complicated. I will say that much. Like I will. Mm -hmm. It which I always mm -hmm. isn't that helpful, but I will just say this. It's not. Part not... of me feels like it's <laughs> it's that we have to create a shadow somehow. But, yeah. Um, like. You know that we have to have balance, but oh shit! I just left the foundry by accident. Um, uh, <laughs> whoops. Uh, yeah. Take wow. steps, however dire. Or dire. Mm. Presumably steps, dance steps, or steps as in mm. an action. Could be dance steps. That's why I was thinking, like, do the same dance they're doing backwards. Yeah. Uh, just to try and throw something out of whack, but like, but it's that something's missing, so that we're putting it back in whack, rather. <laughs> um, <laughs> My favorite ACDC song, "Back in Whack." It's true. <laughs> Who said we're whack? Who said we're whack? <laughs> Big red black. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay. We're just uh, supposed to put all the lights out, clearly. Because darkness is perfect. <laughs> uh, mm. yes, that and that would man. make sense. If the lights were out, there would be no shadows. All right. I posted well, this. Yeah. I posted the block there in, um, in uh, oh, DCC text. Uh, I'll be right back, guys, while you... Uh, <laughs> and if you want I will allow this feel free to ask chat for any ideas if you guys are really truly stuck <laughs> but chat you're not Absolutely. allowed to look up the answer <laughs> well, there's no darkness is there no yeah it doesn't say Maybe there's an absence of perfection. Life. There's an absence of something. There's no shadow. Something. It's perfectly yeah. lit. Mm -hmm. Maybe it I is just right. putting all the lights out. Putting all the candelabras <laughs> out. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I just there's there's I'm just trying to think of all the ways we could even interact with the room. And yeah. That seems like one of yeah. the only ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, sort of some real bullshit. Like, sorry, you had to pry up a flagstone or something. Yeah. Which I don't think yeah, yeah, no, I don't. Either. I don't think it's going to be that. Uh, or like trying to actually light the candelabras. I think it's going to be maybe one of those. You know, like put a real yeah. flame to these flame. things or something, yeah. and, and cause shadows to to appear or something like that. Maybe well, we the need the shadows missing, to appear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the thing that's missing is shadows. So that an absence can... of perfection. No, it says an absence in the oasis of perfection, as yes. opposed yeah. to an absence of perfection. Ah, good call. So something's missing, as opposed to good, perfection good isn't call. there. Yeah. yeah, I didn't yeah. until I yeah. read it. Yeah. I thought yeah. the same thing when Alex was yeah. saying it. I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. so that's that why I was like, is the dancer missing or something? Yeah, or like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Nice. Okay. Address this Six absence. Steps. Yeah. I like I like either putting putting out the lights or, or or lighting them up. I think might be one of the one of those two things. I'm thinking maybe we could try and light one, couldn't we? I mean, if it doesn't light or it's already lit, then we can just smack it off and. From what Alex was saying, it yeah. sounded like they're already lit, but uh, we can try it. Yeah, right? I, I, yeah I think yeah, I think putting them out so it kind of matches that there's no shadow. Yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> All right, I so like what's, it. what do you guys what do you guys want to do? Whose turn is Whose it? actual turn is uh, it? Doyle, I guess. Your Who turn. After? Uh, he's he's done. He's not gonna fucking. Okay. Do like that. Uh, Chisel, it's your <laughs> turn. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Chisel uh, is going to kind of climb up to one of the candelabras. Or you said we can reach them? Yeah, I mean you can climb uh, up and sort of reach them. I'm saying like it's not it's not hard enough for you to just like 
just gra- like climb up a little bit and, and deal with them if you want to. Yeah, so he's going to do that, and he's going to climb up one of the pillars and start putting, trying to put out the flames of the candles. He's going to kind of try to just pinch them or blow them out and see if that affects anything at all. Yep, so you uh, you take like probably the, the, one of the closer ones, I guess, um, like one on the left or right, <laughs> yeah. and you put out the candles, and you see uh, a pair of the dancers disappears. Uh, mm, okay. Okay. There's it looks, looks like there's 18 dancers left. Wow. Okay, I assume that's his turn. Yeah. Kind of doing that. And yep. Jedediah's next. Uh, Jedediah will do the same. He will go to a pillow, probably the closest one to him. Yep. And, and uh, uh, does the same thing, and yep. two more disappear. Does the same thing. Okay. Um, next is Ixie, and and then uh, yeah, Ixie. Uh, Ix guys will that that seems to be doing something. Yeah. So he'll run to the next pillar and and snuff it. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. And then it's um, Pip, Chris, Chuck, and Fennec. I'm just assuming you guys are all doing the same thing, so I'm not gonna mm-hmm. go through each one of you. Pip, so that's uh, Chris, one, two, three, four. Chuck. Yeah. Fennec. I crossed them off. That's seven of them. That's seven of them? Okay, yeah. So yeah. two dancers go away for every... There was 20 at first. Uh, so there's, there's six dancers left. Six dancers left, yeah. Oh, okay. I think I get it. And I think the, the idea is that enlightenment is nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, yeah, uh, and the six get closer to you guys. Um, it looks like there's, they're dancing harder and harder now as they get closer towards you. I would say the last... Um, how many are left? Sorry, Jack. How many how many candles are left? Um, three, three. Yeah, the last three. Um, it seems like you'd have to go through the dancers to get to those three. Um. So, uh, Cedric, you're up next. <laughs> oh boy. And he's like, whatever steps. I mean, they're dancing how dire. I'm, I'm saying you can be creative with how you want. To try and get rid of these candles. I'm just oh, saying. Totally. I'm just saying right now we can't just walk up to them. Um, I mean you can, but uh, that <laughs> might do something. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Cedric is going to try and <laughs> jump from pillar to pillar. Okay. Because as you recall, he climbed the first one on the left, and he's now just going to try and go like. Huh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> All right, that will I will also that will require um, that will either be a strength or agility check. Uh, I one. would say agility because he's better at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's just UID for these. Whichever one you're better at, that's uh, that works. That's, uh, uh, well, um, so you you get up closer, but um, you fall. Cedric falls a bit short, um, and falls right uh, where the dancers are. And two of the dancers, not like I guess maliciously, that they're not like coming to attack you, but they swing into you, um, and um, they sort of, they go through you, um, but it will count as an attack as you as you feel them sort of slam straight into you. Uh, what's your AC? 14. 14. Okay, yeah. And oh, no. you take... Two damage oh. as they slam into you, and you sort of get smushed against the pillar, and they just sort of keep dancing around you. Um, it's a good thing that's not uh, your other character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucky Fennec. <laughs> uh, it's Doyle's uh, turn. Um... Uh, Doyle's just gonna monkey see monkey do and try to kind of do the same thing or maybe even just try to like jump over or around them to avoid getting hit yeah uh, I don't know yeah. it would make more sense yeah you can give me I would, I'd say that would definitely be an agility roll for that because you're just trying to like get past them alright No. <laughs> so I don't same, think we got the same rule. Yeah, so same right. sort of, same sort of thing. You probably end up pretty close to Cedric, um, and the same the same two that uh, hit him uh, come towards you, and we'll see if you're able to get out of the way in time. Uh, does thirteen hit your AC? Uh, no, it does not. Actually. Okay, yeah, you're able to sort of like jump out of the way just in time as they come swinging uh, after they've hit Cedric. <laughs> or it's just weirdly graceful when he actually decides to do something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Chisel. He moves to strange rhythms in his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rhythms of the loom forever etched <laughs> into the 90 neurons remaining in his brain. Oh, God. I just think he's like a character from that fucking movie Wanted, you know, where they have like that big oh, fate yeah. thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chisel. Can I, 
Go ahead. Legal reasons, he's not. Yeah, but. for legal reasons, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this actually has no attachment to the movie Wanted or oh. uh... <laughs> Universal Pictures. This has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Uh, it's probably Universal Movie. I don't it's know. Probably. They are probably watching. So we yeah. Be yeah. yeah, there's some exec uh... who's just furious right now at his desk in a big high rise. <laughs> Uh, all right <laughs> so chisel oh geez chisel <clears throat> what does chisel want to do chisel wants to somehow try to use a mighty deed <laughs> uh chisel's gonna try to uh dive over uh whatever dancers are in front of the column that he uh that he needs to get to okay yep sounds good uh yeah, so just uh, I would say that that'll be that'll just be your strength plus uh, your mighty if you're doing it that way. If you're sort of like really diving, maybe trying to grab onto the uh, like the the sconce itself or something. Um, That's an agility. That would be more of agility yeah, if I'm just trying. Okay, cool. Well, I'm saying I'm, I think so, strength so because you have to sort of pull yourself use my, up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So strength plus my deed die. That's awesome. Okay, pull yourself up here's, to that. So let's see. Here's strength. Oh my, oh my god, god. guys. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh uh, right. I will yeah. attempt to roll my deed die. Anyway. You guys you guys you guys do have a reroll by the way that Tim gave you. Yeah. Um, if mm -hmm. anybody wants to try it, um you you can just I'll you can just take it if you want. Like you don't have to We got a handful more attempts before. I, he, yeah, he yeah. has decent uh yeah, AC so potentially, you know, whatever, he might not get too crazy hurt doing this All anyway. Right, yeah. But uh I'll roll. I probably won't end up burning luck, so I'm not even gonna roll a D die. That I will say right now that two even, even plus a D die is not even. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally. So, we'll so yeah, see. he uh, he kind of tries to barrel through, and that'll hit. <laughs> yeah, he'll <laughs> <laughs> so take two uh -oh. damage as well as they sort of slam you against two the damage. Counter. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. <laughs> nice. uh, and now uh, Jedediah. Uh, so Jedediah. Oh. Uh... And he uh, oh, uh, he grabs his sling from his backpack and uh, loads uh, probably what looks like a sort of fuzzy grey golf ball into <laughs> yeah. a chaos stone. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> whips it round and lets it rip at one of these things. Awesome. Yeah, give me an attack as normal. I was about to ask if anyone had... Hey, that's pretty hey. There you go. Yeah, so <laughs> nice. you, you hit one of the sconces and you make the light go out. As it just sort of smashes the uh, into the into the candles there, and they sort of just go out like that. Perfect. All right, so that's another one down. Um, so there's two, two left, left, and two dancers go away. Um, Ixy. Um. Hmm. I, he doesn't have any weapon that like I. I'm just concerned that if we. We won't be able to get something back if it's a thrown weapon because it'll like mm -hmm. go pitch black or something and we'll reappear outside the room or some weird magic. And I think I think it, uh, Ixie shares the same uh, same skepticism. Um, oh yeah, he has a short bow, right? Okay, now he'll pull that out. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot I bought a short bow for him. Uh, yeah, Ixie will pull out his short bow, seeing that the. Uh, the sling was a good option, and uh, he'll uh, take a shot at one of the remaining ones. I mean, he'll like move up and do it, obviously, because I guess he needs to be in, in within fifty feet. But yeah, well, I mean, you're you're definitely within that, so yeah, you uh, yeah. take you take your shot. Or all this extra dice for? Oh, you fumble. No, <laughs> uh, oh. your weapon gives you armor. You spend your next round untangling them, and addition your armor bonus to by one until you spend ten minutes refitting the tangled buckles and straps. All right, yeah, so that failed horribly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Pip. That's uh, you, uh, Dan. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pip is going to... Uh, I think he's going to try... Oh, man. He's going to try th throwing his dagger at the sconce. Also, one thing, Jack, you could use your reroll on that fumble if you want. Because Oh, yeah, because everybody will lose their fleeting luck, by the way, because that is a fumble. Um, oh, yeah. Right. Well, group decision in that case. <laughs> oh, you might you want to do, Should we use the reroll? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want to, you can. I didn't have any fleeting relic, but yeah, go ahead. Good. Okay. All right. We'll do it then. Yep. Feel yeah, bad yeah. using all the all the <laughs> the bits. Yeah. It's all good. Rolls. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it'll even out in the end. Um. So the uh the the DC was twelve. 
Um, but okay. you don't fumble this time, and everybody keeps their fleeting luck. Yeah, I'll burn two of my fleeting luck. Okay. I have, yeah. I have three, yeah. so. Sounds good. Yeah, so you burn that, uh, and you hit another one out. There's only one left, and there's only a pair of dancers left. I think that was the last one, right? Was it the last one? There's one I think left. So. Oh, there's one, one left? There's one left. Yeah, now, there's yeah. one left. Oh, okay. Yeah, all okay. right. Now, Pip, now it's your turn. Sorry. Oh, and there's, okay. And there's also, uh, there's also only, like, uh, a pair of dancers. It's probably not too hard to get by them, I will say. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. They, like I said, they're not maliciously yeah. going after you. <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, yeah, kind of seeing that it's thinned out a little bit. I think Pip is uh, going to try to like juke around these dancers in order to get to the column and put the light out. Yep, sounds good. You know, there's no role for that. It's pretty simple for you to do. And you get you get okay. around the dancers. Um, like I said, there's only two of them. And then you put out that last light, and you guys are in pitch blackness now. Um, but nothing else changes. You're still in this room, and it's totally dark. You can't see anything. Uh, does anybody have a torch? Fennec takes out his little candle. <laughs> yep. And you take out your little candle and you light it. And there's shadows around you. And those shadows form and turn into a door. Uh, neato. <laughs> Says Fennec. Oh, guys, check out what I did. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, just hand on the door and just pushes it open. <laughs> yeah, and you go through, and you're back in the uh, that little uh, that little room you start off with. Um, and it seems like sort of like the light on the um, on the enlightenment door has gone out, and the only doors left are the other four. Um, that's pretty much all you had to do to get out. Um, good job, John. <laughs> it's, like I said, you guys chose one of the oh, hardest, one of the hardest fucking puzzles because it has the simple answer, but they go around in the worst way possible. But well, yeah, and me. like that's one of those ones where how do you describe this to a player without without giving it away? Yeah, them yeah I I basically had yeah. to, once you once you look down, I was like, okay, this is where I'm gonna tell them there's no shadows, and maybe that will yeah. push things along. That um, actually was a big help. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. why I was like, get to ask questions because I can't just tell you. Oh, also the light isn't showing shadows from the beginning because then you're like, oh, then we do this, and then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, good job though, guys. Uh, John, did I tell you to give yourself a fleet luck? I, I don't know if I said you did that, not, but, but I will. give yourself one. <laughs> um, okay, guys, you have um, Skyla. They literally just beat the puzzle. Um, yeah, so you have four other doors. <laughs> um, you have um, creation, construction, sacrifice, and judgment. Um, but if you guys want, it's at the two-hour mark. Would you guys like to take, take a quick five-minute break, uh, grab drinks yeah. and whatever else? That's probably a good place to to stop for a little bit so guys uh, in the chat we'll be back in five minutes um i'm probably gonna stick around and just answer any questions or probably wants to chat i'll be here but uh for the rest of you guys you guys feel free i'm gonna put on the be right back soon so you guys can leave your cameras on or whatever because i won't nobody's gonna see okay. it so we're just waiting on jack to get back and then we'll uh mm -hmm. we'll resume just oh i guess i guess um one thing for you guys uh players F dropped um, 300 bits in the chat. Um, yeah, I don't shit. know if you guys saw the table, but uh, he said you guys can decide what it is. It can either be, um, I'll say instead of it being next roll, a, a roll can be a crit, um, or you can break them down into, like, we'll say, just keep it simple. You have two choices. Either it's three re-rolls or uh, a single crit. And um, it's up to you guys. I'm going to go with the re-rolls because we have more control about when to use them. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sounds That's good. That's fair. Anti fumbles. Um, Ori has posted the mm -hmm. link. So is the one you're running, Alex, the Yes, that that is that is printing. that is the adventure. I believe it is the second printing because there's an extra adventure on the back. Uh Gimming Games is this oh. thing with all their adventures where they yeah. re release them with better some better editing and also they usually add an extra um an extra little uh mini adventure to it. Um, cool. okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I ran the one for uh, Sailor on the Starless Seas. It was pretty sweet. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I actually I have I think I have the original printing of that one, so I don't have the extra stuff on that. Oh, cool. So there's a few of them I have, and then a few others I don't. So it, it is yeah. interesting depending on when you bought them if you get the extra stuff. Um, I know the cover. The cover for this one, I know. I'm aware. I know it's a dope cover. Yeah, <laughs> this one. This one's great, and also the actual extra ones. Uh, the extra little things called War Pit of the Chaos Wizards, which sounds awesome, and it is. We won't be doing it because it's just basically an, another adventure. Um, yeah. But it's basically a gladiatorial pit, um, and it's just some sounds stuff. awesome, and it is. We won't be yeah, doing that. We won't be doing that. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Yeah. This is one of the six adventures you're ever gonna read. 
<laughs> well, the, the, the chat should know, because we were talking about this today, actually, is that if we do end up closer to Christmas or at any point somebody can't make it or whatever, we might do one, a one-shot uh, with other stuff with other players. So War Pit of the Chaos Wizards might be something we could do, because it's I think that one's like mm. a two-hour adventure. It's not it's not as long as the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. one. It's um, not a it's not a full. It's length. not a full one. No, they just add a little bit to it uh, if you want to throw as much mm-hmm. extra extra stuff in. Um, but yeah. Uh, and Jack cool. is back. You good to go, Jack? <coughs> Excuse me. Folks out in the street. Um, I'm just gonna turn Jack my is... camera off, but I'll be here because I'm eating and I don't want anyone to watch yeah. me eat. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. And uh, Jack, uh, the everybody decide, or everybody except for you, decide to do three rerolls because there's a bit more. You have a bit more control over that. Um, yeah. And okay, guys, we'll get back into it. So you guys are back um, in this uh, in this this room again. You have four doors. Um, what's the next door you guys want to go into? Uh, and Ch- Ch- Cedric says, uh, "Oh, sorry, Cedric's <laughs> just gonna go eeny meeny miny mo." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, we might have to do all of these. Uh. I I think we do. Yeah, it's. Although I don't see why, if someone, he's like, I don't see why if you kill the guardian, the staircase appears. Surely, if you kill the guardian, the staircase should absolutely not appear. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a flaw in the design. poor security <laughs> features. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I just think it's an oversight. Cedric's like, if I make a tomb, I'm gonna make it so that it actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you end up it? on with your uh, eeny meeny miny mo <laughs> creation? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Yep, so you guys want to go to do uh, creation? Um, so uh, you guys go in, and in an eye blink, you find yourselves in a room of darkness. A column of light that illuminates a single object within. A chest-sized cradle-shaped container of glass. In the bed of the cradle is a small portion of lumpy material. This substance is gray and lifeless, but tiny motes of light sparkle within it. A voice speaks in the darkness, old and severe. It speaks directly to each of you, speaking in the tongues of your birth. At the beginning of time, the gods brought life to the world. Behold the last piece of divine matter from which the Eternals wrought their creation. Embrace your inner divine spark and walk in the footsteps of the gods, or await the end of of their creation within these walls. And I'll just uh, post that. I'll post a little blurb for you guys. Mm -hmm. You were just saying earlier how, like, when you read out loud the description for the last puzzle we missed out like one or two things yeah that totally stood out to us when we read it <laughs> oh, and it's and... just like oh my god yeah, yeah yeah oh and uh thank you tim uh for the another 100 bits so you guys have hey. four re-rolls oh <laughs> cool thanks tim thanks tim thanks, yeah thanks, tim. Um, uh, okay and I just, what a nice life. guy <laughs> i uh, posted there for you guys in the dcc text chat mm-hmm do So Cedric's like, sounds like it wants us to make something. Or or wait until we die. <laughs> yeah, there seems to be no way back out. Yeah, I thought that might be it. Yeah, if you um look closer at the thing in front of you, it looks like it's some sort of like clay like substance. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I suppose we should see what this is then, really. Um, chrysanthemum yeah. moves closer to the cradle. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, it's like a it's a it's a lump of clay. Um, if you touch it, it feels um, it feels potent, even wholesome to the touch. What? <laughs> 
Cedric picks up and he's like, oh, what a weird clay. <laughs> <laughs> it feels wholesome somehow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so he's just going to sculpt a little man. Okay. Like, like just a little crude like gingerbread man shape and like stick it on the edge of the cradle and he's like ta-da <laughs> <laughs> yeah um give me um either an agility or intelligence check to see how well your creation is like how how well you made it Ooh. oh damn that's real good yeah you um <laughs> um I said yeah. it was crude. It's actually quite good. <laughs> yeah, you you crafted to quite a nice nice piece. Um, I didn't know you were so good at sculpting. Like if a chisel kind of comes over and he's like, oh, all right, kind of feeling like his stone masonry skills uh, might not be needed in this group anymore. <laughs> Cedric's like, well, I can only do work with clay. I've never worked with stone, but uh, you know, I've studied anatomy. You know, part of hunting the undead abominations that plague our world, and. Um, <laughs> So, it is. It's anatomically correct. Yes, I, I see that. Yes, yes, I, I'm quite proud of that. Um, He's missing the tail. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them have tails. <laughs> <laughs> so you make this this little like humanoid creature, um, and once you complete it and put it on back onto the cradle, um, you see it animate, um, and you feel this sort of weird feeling to like in the pit of your stomach uh john um or which character was it that did it it's a uh, cedric, cedric. The, the hunter cedric um you see it animate and sort of like a beam of light comes down onto it and sort of gets lifted up almost like a ufo sort of sucking up a person um and something about this life that you create you can tell is destined for great things um and then everything goes like a flash of white and you guys are back in the other room um and uh, that the the light of creation on that door is out now. Um, there's only three doors that still have light on them. That was the easiest one to to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, <laughs> I made did a little anyone, man. I was say, did anyone not think that was the answer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing. That was too. I'll, yeah, I'll say, I, I'll I say this right. I'll, to be the... I'll say this right now to you guys because I feel like this is how, like when you enter this room, creation's the first one. You guys start with like with the third one. Um, yeah. Constructions right next to it is the second one, and basically it goes around. Yeah. So just so you guys know, <laughs> in terms of what you see in front of you. But yeah. Right. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice job. I just, he's like, I just got a good feeling with that little guy, you know? I just got, <laughs> got, got a good feeling about him. <laughs> oh, you wonder if he's a shepherd, you know? He, 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 he might be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> I wonder if we'll ever see them again. <laughs> the little man I like made. <laughs> More than some of you. Chisel's <laughs> 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 like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Easy ninja. Chisel's <laughs> been calling him ni just ninja, by the way. Oh, this is Ixy. There's no way that Doyle oh, possesses oh, any. Oh, any yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we all Easy know Doyle lizard. just stares vacantly until the time to kill yeah. or weave. <laughs> exactly, yeah. He's a savant for two things stabbing and weaving. <laughs> Although Ixie's a lizard, so the ability to read his expression is probably like, what? Is that a <laughs> joke? Was... We all know lizard people body language because, as, yeah, yeah. as we've discussed, lizard we're people... We're all familiar with... We're all very yeah. familiar. He gives yeah. a nice double double flick of the tongue to the eye. And we're like, you know, uh, uh, uh Ixie. Classic <laughs> Ixie. <laughs> uh, that lizard man humor. Uh, Known far and wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Alrighty, so who wants to pick the next room? Three left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. you have creation, or construction, sorry, sacrifice, and judgment left. Let's do construction because I, I, it, it just seems, I mean, maybe we should have started with the first one first, but uh, perhaps we can make amends now. Well, let's go in order. Yeah, construction sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. So you guys go for construction. Um, I'm going to post the thingy, just the description while I read it out. Mm -hmm. um, 
A moment of disorientation uh, um, afflicts you, and then you find yourself in a massive space defined by walls of solid iron and burnished rivets. The iron floor beneath you bears no rust or wear. The chamber, lit by a glow from sources unseen, measures nearly 300 feet long and 150 feet wide. Midway across the room, a 100-foot-long gap bisects the chamber. Wisps of clouds uh, rise from the hole in the floor. On the far side of the chamber is another doorway, identical to the one that brought you here. Standing between you and the break in the floor are six delicate stands fashioned from crystal. Atop each is a fluted glass of liquid. Um, so you guys are going to need your notes here because I'm going to read out every every um, liquid um, is a different color. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, f the liquids are... Um, sorry, I'm going to make sure that I don't give out the answer here. Um <laughs> Okay, yeah. So, the liquids are, in order from left to right, uh, tangerine, azure, A-Z-U-R-E, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, gold, plum, crimson, and emerald. How much is there of each one? Is it like a relatively big vat or just a tiny little vial? A champagne um, flute glass. Champagne They're flute, I imagine like champagne flutes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, if we, we approach this gap in, in the columns... Um... I'm actually, what do I'm we actually, see? I'm going to here, I'm going to post this, uh, the picture of the room itself. Cause I think the description doesn't do a great job. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so sorry. And to go ahead, Dan, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but uh, yeah, I just want to. No, that's fine. That's fine. Post okay. Them right on. Guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, right on, let's see. But yeah, it was, sorry, what were you asking, uh, Dan? Uh, <clears throat> if we approach the pit, is, is there anything in it? Is it all it look kind of bottomless? There's smoke and stuff in it. We can't really see what it is or is there anything in there? Um, uh, the gap in the floor is an endless chasm clouded in white mists. Okay. So, yeah, can't really see what's inside there. Yeah, for the, um, <laughs> for the viewer on Twitch, the, the image makes this a lot clearer in terms of how this is. <laughs> yeah, I can actually post it to Twitch for anybody watching. I'd because... say it's probably a good yeah. idea, yeah. Um, Just so the folks at home know what we're doing. Yeah, because this, this is, like I said, sometimes descriptions in RPGs don't do a great job. Well, and, and this this description is describing something we could walk around as well. Yeah, right. The, the, yeah. the room is 150 feet wide, and the gap is only 100 feet long. But the picture yeah. makes it, yeah. you know, obviously that's... Yeah, I imagined a square but... rather than a rectangle. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, cool. I, uh... I guess we're going to have to mix these together then, perhaps, to create something to fill this void in the floor, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I want to just, like, sniff one of the glasses. I guess the tangerine. tangerine uh, yeah. Maybe Chisel. Chisel will walk up there. and. Yep. Um, it gives off no smell. Like, there's no odor to it. Are there any are any of these colors like kind of represented at all in this room? This is just like a metal giant metal box, basically. Is Pretty that much. correct? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, guys, if the emerald and crimson were switched, we'd have a, a hint because the first letter of each would spell tag peck. <laughs> uh, and that's the name of the chaos lord you found him <laughs> there it is. got it in one yeah um i wondered if they were colors of the rainbow but you got gold in there yeah yeah because it's still pretty much orange blue yellow purple red green yeah um, if gold is yellow, yeah, yeah. Could... Still yeah. almost do Roy G. Biv. Yeah, they do kind of correspond to those that sort yeah. of spectrum, right? There's a grin almost, there. Yeah. <laughs> what if we just try like 
dripping out one little drop onto the floor yeah. of like maybe the first one, like at arm's length, just a little doop and the see tangerine. if anything happens. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who's grabbing it and pouring it out? Uh, probably Ixie. Okay, Ixie does that. Um, and the liquid, though it goes down to like the the lip of the flute, it doesn't actually leave the glass. Okay, so it can't it can't be poured. Like it literally no. pools up. Instant. Yeah, as as if it's as okay. if it's a fully closed uh, container. But you know it's not. You can you can stick your finger down in the flute without touching the liquid and see like no, this is like open. Mm. And they all do they all behave the same way? Uh, yeah, I if think, you try uh, them all, they, none, pipple, of them, none of them pipple. seem to pour out. <clears throat> okay. So what if we put? I'm not suggesting that we do this for the avoidance of doubt. What if we put something in the flute? Can we? touch the liquid with something maybe and like an arrow or something yeah um i'll say this i'll say your finger can go down and like touch the liquid um but if you try to put like an arrow down there the arrow just almost the same way the liquid can't go out the arrow can't seem to actually like get into okay. the flute okay so i think it might be the order the liquids are in left to right mm. um yeah da, da, da. <laughs> we also do have a henchman who we could make poke the liquid. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck is just there. Well, I don't. Like, <laughs> Chuck is just there holding his little head axe. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> should we try rearranging them first? I think so. Mm. Let me see the text. Dude, <laughs> John, you're joking about tag pack as if that means anything. It's just fucking. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, Guys, it spells tag pack. <laughs> and. <laughs> well, okay. But if we switch them around in a certain way, we could get it so that the, the last letters of all of them say mended, which might fix a bridge. <laughs> Ooh. That's ingenious. That must be it. <laughs> The most lateral thinking solution. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, literally the most. Okay, what would an asshole who makes an RPG puzzle think <laughs> is fun? <laughs> no, we're not uh, playing. We're not playing. Fucking. Uh, what's the DCC thing? That's the traps guy. Oh, uh, um, oh, uh, Grim, uh, Grim, Grim Tooth. Tooth. Grim Tooth. Grim Tooth. Yeah, my favorite is the one with his sister, where she just like gives you a riddle that's fucking impossible to solve, and after you give her three guesses, she goes, "Nah, close enough," and just gives you the key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, uh, that's a good. <clears throat> one. Mm. What if we try pouring some of the liquid into the pits rather than on the floor? Uh, we can't uh, pour stuff out of them, though, right? Yeah, I'm just wondering maybe if we're in the right position. You know what I mean? It yeah, might no, work. No, I get you. Yeah, then if you try that same thing, it doesn't it doesn't come out of the cool. Come out of the flu, yeah. Cool. I think it's got to be the order. It's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> well, let's let's do it. So it'll be crimson, tangerine, gold. Emerald, azure, and plum. If we were to do it in order, yeah, yeah, from red to red to violet, pretty from, much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's you... give that. Yeah, let's give that a try. Yeah. So, Rainbow uh, Bridge. Is that you? So yeah, Rainbow you you bridge. you change them in order. Um. Yeah. Nothing happens. Uh, Blast. I have um, to fucking touch these. I'm looking at like so. I pick up one of the glasses. And I'm looking at the pedestal. Is there like a thing under is there like a sensor or anything uh like, like a, well, no it's like just, an indiana jones style no fucking not all no you pick it up and nothing nothing closes ah oh is there like a coherent beam of light coming from somewhere nope and are these no okay bugger <laughs> <laughs> nice try man <laughs> Oh, by the way, is there a major part of the pu of the puzzle that's missing? <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys know what you must do. <laughs> I gotta fucking drink this shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm gonna drink the plum. You drink the plum? Yep. Okay. <laughs> is it that? That was uh, all right. You said it. <laughs> Um, 
That had an air of finality about it, didn't it? <laughs> sure oh, did. It really did. So, okay. still drinks the plum. There's no, there's no going back. So, so it who, looks like plum wine. So who drinks? So the of plum, course, Fennec drinks John? it. Which Fennec drink? drinks the plum. Fennec, I, this actually works really well for Fennec, um, oh, because good. he's up probably <laughs> to an extent. That's two damage. Um, so Fennec is as he drinks it, um, the liquid does leave, does leave, and part of it like goes into his mouth. I'm assuming he doesn't like finish it or anything, or it probably refills after he drinks it. Just drinks um, a mouthful. And he is afflicted with severe melancholy and self-doubt. He suffers a minus two penalty on all rolls until he, re he regains his self-confidence. Self that is never going to happen. Uh, here's like self -confidence. Never going to happen. Self-confidence is restored by achieving a critical success on any attack, saving throw, spell check, ability check, or skill check. So basically, until you roll a nat 20 with Fennec, 20. Um, he is going to have a minus two ah. on everything he does. Because <laughs> he just oh doubts himself God. too much. So that's so appropriate. I, I think so I think I think this goes without saying, but just in case, that's a. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Plum. Okay. <laughs> Said it all. <laughs> that makes you glum. Um. Wait, 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 wait. No, you can't move the the first letters around. Right. That wouldn't make any sense. Uh. No. Chrysanthemum goes and moves over towards the one with the emerald on it and, and takes a, a small sip. It's green. It's like the leaves of the forest, right? Yeah, totally. Um... <laughs> yeah, sure. Whatever, nerd. Um... <laughs> so uh, you guys see Chrysanthemum uh, grow in size, uh, sparing like a weed to stand 12 feet tall. Unfortunately, uh, her bones and muscle experience no greater density to support the new size. The drinker loses <laughs> one point of both strength and agility permanently. Uh, their body is racked with aches and pains constantly, and, they, and accoutrements such as clothes and armor must be specifically tailored for you. So all your clothes sort of shred, and they're kind of like, you're like the Incredible Hulk right now. Um, with all your armor and everything is just on you. It provides no bonus. Um, and yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> well, um, it's a good thing she had good stats. <laughs> does, does she does she reduce to normal size at some point, or is she now 12 foot tall permanently? She's now 12 foot tall so far. There are, obviously, it's okay. so there may, be, there may be ways to get certain creatures to help you out with your problems, but... But effectively... <laughs> I bet those chaos Man, lords could help you with that, Pip says. Man, <laughs> it, it did just tell you that you will have to get custom-tailored clothes, so... Doyle, yeah, like, it does sound kind of permanent. <laughs> yeah, Doyle. He raises. Well, when yeah. when someone talks about custom yeah. tailored clothes, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tailor Doyle. You can only weave. <laughs> Jack, give yourself a fleet luck. I love that little. Oh, <laughs> All Doyle's clothes look like baskets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. Oh God. He dresses entirely in wicker. Yeah. Oh. It's like a Persian soldier. I was gonna say, yeah. What is he fucking? Uh, is he straight out of the movie Three Hundred? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh um, boy. Ch Ch Chisel's gonna walk up to the crimson glass and take a swig. Yeah. Uh, nothing yep. weird seems to happen to him. Really? Seems. What's next? That's, seems. That's, that seems unlikely. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Does Chisel drink another one? Uh, Wait. It's... Can you like, walk on the, on the pit now? Or something? Uh, if you put your foot over it, your foot still goes through. Uh, okay. like, it would still fall off. Yeah, yeah. He'll, yeah he'll kinda, okay. Yeah, he'll. Yeah, why the heck not? Yeah, let's do a little Russian <laughs> roulette here. Uh, yeah, he'll drink uh, the tangerine. Yeah, nothing else happens. Oh, boy. Okay. Crimson tangerine and uh, gold. Sure gold are the two gold. we haven't touched. Yeah. Yep. Let's go, to, let's go with gold. Yeah, nothing happens. For chisel. Nothing happens. So that I guess you'll want emerald. And uh, so crimson, we have a try. tangerine gold. Yeah, I'll try the azure. You're going for the azure? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Wait, what? Hmm. Isn't that the one you haven't tried yet? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to try that I, one. I, now. I'm just like, you've been drinking them in, in spectrum order. Yeah. Oh, oh have okay. I been? 
Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah, have. it was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I thought you were doing that okay. on purpose. <laughs> no, not at all. It's pure <laughs> chance. So, uh, yeah, I will, uh, he will continue to drink them in the Spectrum order. So let's see. Uh, what's next? Emerald uh, Azure Plum. Emerald, Emerald Azure and then Plum. Sounds good. Yeah, so you drink Emerald Azure and Plum, and across the chasm, a rainbow bridge appears that looks like solid. Oh. Um, and it seems like you can get to the next door on the other side. Oh, you rainbow just drink bridge. them in rainbow order. Yeah. And if you don't, weird shit happens, basically. Uh, <laughs> I get the feeling no none of them have good... <laughs> the tangerine yeah, yeah. one the makes you, you pregnant. <laughs> and, and, you give, and you give birth, you come to term in 3 to 12 hours. Ah. Yeah, I was... Wow. Yeah, that was going to be interesting if someone went for that one. Um, But yeah, but um, people who are affected, uh, Martin and John's characters, you guys are still affected by this. Uh, Until, by yeah. Guys, but you are able to walk across and get to the door on the other side. How cool is the door? Uh, you have to crawl the door, like the door is like, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're, you're gonna have to get down just a little bit. You're gonna have to. <laughs> I have. Uh, this is rather inconvenient. I. Uh, oh. I'm sure whatever <laughs> gods we wind up serving will happily help you. <laughs> I like how we like got 90% of the way to the solution and then all of us collectively I was were like, definitely... okay, that didn't work. Let's I, try something else. I, I, will, yeah. say, I will say, yeah, Dan, I don't know, Dan, I should give you a fleeing luck for going for that. I do love that you just by, by <laughs> Pure chance, chance yeah. were Pure going chance. for, yeah. And I almost fucked it up on accident, too. <laughs> yeah. If somebody hadn't have said something, I definitely would have drank the, uh, the gold. Uh, yeah, good I, was, I, 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 gave, I did not realize that. Yeah, no, I gave, I, when, when you said Azure, I gave you, I basically said like, are you sure? Like, I gave one chance and then John yeah. stepped in and I was like, okay, they're going to be okay. But I was just like, all right, just, you got to yeah, do this all was, over again. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, how the fuck are you meant to know to start at red? Because to me, the red drink, I was like, oh yeah, he's going to explode in like a fucking pile of blood or something. Right. Uh, do, you're right. That's like, that's literally what happens, <laughs> apparently. Um, what? The drink is blood is fortified dangerously, so the drink's veins expand, his flesh swells, and blood stained tears oh, see from his eyes. No, so if you drink no that way. in the wrong order, like if you, but I guess you couldn't really because you would because it's the first yeah, one. It's always yeah. number one. But I guess, I guess, I guess you, oh, if you were... So you, somebody drink it somebody, twice. I could see somebody thinking you have to drink them as trials. Like, you have to go through hell. Maybe they would go like, oh, this yeah. is like the first trial. And then it was like, like yeah. So I can see that. Yeah, I guess if you drink it once, then you take another sip of the yeah. same one. That would happen. Yeah, I could see that happening. You're like, oh, nothing happened. And then you sip again and you fucking explode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. Good job, guys. Mm. And, and then you blow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, you... now Fennec is horribly depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was slightly more than before. <laughs> before he was, he was like starting to come to terms with the existential dread. He's still pretty sure he's dead. But now he's like, I'm dead and cursed to wander this earth, and <laughs> nothing I do is makes any difference. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> and and yeah, and you know that was the other one that was talking about that was the hardest in my opinion. I don't think I would have gone that one um, personally. But um, yeah, you guys make it through, um, and you have two doors left. You have sacrifice and judgment. Uh, I will just say for your own knowledge, and you'll be able to read this. Sacrifice comes before judgment. But you guys can do whichever one you want in either order. So it's up to you. Well, these both sound bad, so... Mm -hmm. Cedric's like, I find judgment pretty easy, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pretty easy to, to judge the undead. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Chisel kind of, like, nudges him forward a little bit. Okay, <laughs> Going to the judgment, judgment door? All right. Mm -hmm. um, before you stands a balance scale of immense construction. Its central pillar, its beam, and the chains leading and the chains leading to its two pans are translucent. Form. Oh, sorry, let me try that again. Its central pillar, its beam, and the chains leading to its two pans are translucent, formed from glowing golden light. Only its two wing pans appear of solid construction, fashioned from uh, burnished gold and lying flat upon the floor. The great scales soar five times the height of a man, nearly brushing the ceiling. Uh, nearly brushing the ceiling of this room, thirty-five feet above the rightmost weighing pan is an azure key, the size of a wand. Between you and the scales is a quartet of silver-furred lions with golden manes. They growl softly but threateningly at your arrival. Um. We uh, who is of chaotic alignment in the party? 
Uh, both of my oh, wait, characters wait, wait. are. I am... Oh, Cedric is chaotic. <laughs> okay. Anybody else chaotic? All yeah, right. both of my characters are. Sounds good. So that that is enough. Um, the as as good. you three step through, um, these lions um get up and growl louder and start running towards the group. So uh, mm. we're gonna do initiative here, guys. Oh Jesus! <laughs> How many lions? Uh, four. Okay. Good. Guys, take four lines. lines. It's... Uh, uh, Chisel says ninja. Doyle <laughs> 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 just doesn't say anything. Just blankly stares back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Cedric is nineteen. Can I roll a four twice? Jesus Christ. We do have a bunch of rerolls. You guys do. You can use them if you have any bad ones you would like to reroll. It's up to you. Um, John, your your initiatives. So Cedric got nineteen and Fennec got fifteen. I don't know if the minus two applies to his initiative though. I think it's just the checks, right? Pardon me, sorry. Uh, yeah, that, for, that's just that's just it's checks. just checks and yeah. attacks and all that. Yeah, we won't we won't. Yeah, in that case, he, it's it's a uh, nineteen and fifteen. Nineteen fifteen. Okay. Um, Dan. Uh, Chisel got a thirteen and Pip got a seventeen. Oh shit! No, Alex, I'm really sorry. I I read the wrong thing. Uh, the re the the initiative check for Cedric was four. <laughs> okay. I looked at the agility <laughs> check above it. That's all good. That's my mistake. Cedric four. Um. Okay, Dan, can you say those again to me, sir? You have Chisel at 13. Yeah, yeah, and, no problem. And Pip at... Uh, Chisel at 13 and Pip had 17. Pip at 17, nice, okay. All right, uh, Martin? Uh, so Chrysanthemum has got 12, Jedediah has got 5, and Chuck has got 21. Uh, sorry, <laughs> what was uh, 5 for um, Jed? Jedediah. Okay. And what was, what was, uh, what was Chuck, sorry? Chuck is 21. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Jack. Oh, both my characters got a four. Oh, boy. All right. I'll have one go before Cedric, one go after. <laughs> I guess Ninja goes first. Uh... All right. So, um, Chuck is first. Um, so I just want to know Chuck was there. It's it's good old hireling Chuck. Um, oh, Chuck's a hireling. He's not particularly kind of brave or anything like that. Um, he's gonna just uh, kind of approach one of these lines and, and gingerly kind of swipe it with his hand axe. It's, it's not a very convincing <laughs> shot. Sounds good. All right, Chuck. Good luck. Ooh, nice. All right. He must have slipped when he went to, <laughs> to slice the dark lion because oh he did God. that with no conviction. He didn't deserve that at all. <laughs> yeah. So he <laughs> he runs up and immediately uh, like cleavers straight into one of the lions several times, um, and they go down dead. Um, their blood is like this gorgeous like golden liquid, um, and it falls out, falls over, um, making a really mournful noise to your ears. Um, okay, uh, Pip. Pip is going to. There's three more. Uh, yeah, I heard that. Um, I don't. I'm not exactly sure how you do backstabs, but if I'm able to, I'm going to try to at least maneuver my way behind these uh these creatures. Whether well, I can uh, kind of get behind them and attack this round or not. I'll know. say with these guys because you're a chaos creature, they're going for you. You can tell. Like, they oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I would cool. say they're too fast. Cool. The ox was too slow, so it was easy to get behind him. But these ones are very sure. fast and lithe creatures, so you won't really be able to backstab them. Um, in this cool, game. that's fine. I'm going to go straight at them then, and I'm going to use instead. I'm gonna use my uh, long sword. Okay. And uh, take a swipe at the first one closest to me. Okay, nice. Uh, Thirteen. I... Yep, that hits. Um, oh, nice, and nice, it's, nice. It's a nice, good slash. Uh, it doesn't kill the one, uh, the other one, but it is like it's 
it's pretty close to death. You get like a few good slashes across it, and the same like you get sprayed with a sort of uh, golden blood all over you. Um, mm. And it lets out these really sad noises. Um, oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then it's uh, Fennec. <laughs> yeah. Chip says, "You attacked me." <laughs> Fennec closes the gap with the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> with with one of the reigning two and he just goes at it with the battle axe oh boy um you have re-rolls you have re- yeah, you guys have re-rolls yeah those I'll, don't, I'll use a re-roll yeah those won't carry over to the next game so you might want to use them yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah that, that hits their AC actually excellent nice um and are you uh, going for the one that was hurt or one of the other or the one of the unhurt ones the one that was hurt yep okay that will with your battle axe you uh just go right on its head and just separate its head from its body um before it can let out another um sad uh meow <laughs> yeah Dead. like that that last point of damage was all it was just like mercy kill <laughs> yeah just <ping. laughs> all right uh chisel chisel uh he's going to uh Run straight at the uh, one of the remaining two lions, and with his long sword, uh, he's gonna try to uh, he's gonna kind of run up and uh, kind of try to drive the long sword kind of straight towards the lion and almost like push the lion into the into his companion and see if he can kind of affect that one at all. Okay, sounds good. Uh, da da da, and long sword. Oh nice. god! Yes. Ooh, nice. nice, nice, nice. Oh, and I got the D too. Yeah. Um. So mm-hmm. you're 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 trying to slam it into the other line, basically, and get them. Yeah, yeah. I want to try to like kind of skewer the one and and you know just yeah. interrupt or or kind of Sounds mess good. up the other one somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So these a these creatures are giant, and you're able to skewer one, and you do a good amount of damage on it. It's very hurt again. Let's have these horrific, sad noises. Um. It isn't totally immobilized, but it will have a major penalty on its attack. It's going to be going. It's going next, and it's awesome. going for chisel. Um, but it's awesome. it's going to have quite a penalty on it. So, excellent. It has a plus. So that's now minus. Yeah. So this one tries to swipe out it at, at, towards. No, I don't think that four is not going to hit uh, chisel. <laughs> four, uh, four does not hit. No, no it, it it sort of is. Um, yeah, it, it's you seared it, and it's not able to really get its paws around to like get at you. So it just sort of scratches your armor. But it's not able to find any purchase. All right, uh, Chris. So Chris is looking decidedly upset. I mean, A, she's 12 foot tall. and <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. Pay. And she's in pain. Yeah. <laughs> and, and all right, her she, she, yeah, she doesn't really approve. She, she's just done the Incredible Hulk thing. Clearly, that's what the green potion was all about. <laughs> and uh, so she's, uh, yeah, she's looking particularly sad. She does, she, does, she, she likes these woodland creatures, these lions, and uh, she, 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 she thinks that uh, she should just put them to sleep instead. So she's going to uh, gonna have a go at casting sleep. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. All right, you can uh, you can roll that from your uh, from your character sheet. Oh, nice. Um. Is that that's a that says one d twenty plus zero plus zero plus zero though? Um, that's not it's, right. Is it's it? actually plus four because you have your three yeah. and then you have a one from your familiar. So yeah. that's actually oh. twenty two, which might still be in the same area, but might bump up one. Uh, yeah, it goes up to the next one. Up to four targets must make a save or fall into a normal sleep for one d six hours, or one target can be placed in supernatural sleep for one d four hours. What? Oh, I see. It's um, yet, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So these these two will make their saves. Um, I believe it's Will versus your roll. Yep. Oh, actually, um, no, no not I'm, not, I'm not gonna roll. They can't. They can't even make it. So they both uh, fall oh, asleep immediately nice. um, for one hour. <laughs> I believe. Um, you guys can coup de gras them if you want. And Chris will walk over to one and give it a little bit of a bit of a pattern of stroke and yeah. It just <laughs> everyone who hasn't gone just like Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also I just realized um I forgot to include Fenix minus two to hit. That's uh, all good. <laughs> because of his crippling depression. Oh. So uh <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. Yeah. I, they would have they would have fallen asleep anyway because I can't pass that check. Um, and yet, mm-hmm. like I said, you guys can, if you guys want to. I don't know what you guys are doing. It's up to you. If you leave them here to sleep the next hour, or if you're going to coup de gras them, it's up to you. 
well, let's figure out what we have to do. I don't want to go around killing now, getting, yeah. cats. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, so basically, um, to give you guys the idea, um, I'll also post this, though I don't know how helpful it will be for this. Um, you guys uh, see basically just like giant, like giant scales, like, you know, the thing with like two, just two balances. Yeah. Um, and it looks like the one on the right, 35 feet above it, um, is a Azure key. Like all the way at the top, and these these scales are gigantic. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's on the left hand side? Nothing at all. Uh, I will just check here. I think it's nothing, but I'm just gonna make sure. There's the description for you guys that I just read out just before the before the fight. Okay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So yeah, the scale measures 60 feet in length and stands 30 feet tall. The scale's weighing pans are 10 feet in diameter. Um, there's no masses. Uh, the ways used to counterbalance an object being weighed are present. Well, so the actual like scales, the 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 platforms, I guess, they are like about 25 to 30 feet above us. Is that am I reading that correctly? Um, no, what? they're, um, basically, uh, just to give you an idea, they're basically the right side one, the one that's below the big key is down, sort of, is down, like, you could get on. And the other one is Yeah, the other one is the other raised. Ones, yeah. Um, and. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and, uh, and there's no mass, like, there's no weights that you guys can see. There's nothing in this room that you could see that you could put on one side to lift up the other. Um, this obviously is um, some sort of different kind of scale than, <laughs> than normal. Wait. Is one of them higher or are they both on the ground? I thought ground? they'd be both the same if they're yeah, they both might be, empty. They might be both the same. Um, the, the, the real, okay. the, the one, the, the big thing to take away from here is the one that's yeah, underneath yeah. the key can be reached. Is, you can step on yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. 35 feet high. Yeah. So they're both on the, on the same level because it says only its two weighing pans appear in solid construction, fashioned yeah. from burnished gold and lying flat upon the floor. Cool, yeah. That's lying so, flat upon the floor? How is that? that doesn't yeah, it's not going to... Unless it does some weird shit, there's technically no way you could raise one unless it falls into a hole on yeah. the other side, but I'm sure it's some right on. Yeah, I'm sure it'll you make sense. You guys are a giant diamond yeah. prison on a different plane of existence. Yeah. So yeah. There's yeah. probably yeah. some shit going on. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh, well, well, we I guess first off, and... <laughs> well, we could use the lions as a counterweight. <laughs> They're probably yeah. pretty heavy. I mean, yeah. definitely. Two of them are dead. The other two will wake up if we try to drag them because it's non non supernatural. Mm-hmm. But that's still two lions worth of counterweight. Right. Mm. It may be That's some bullshit with, uh, yeah, with like your alignment weight or something. I feel like yes. Um, yeah. We'll see though. What happens if we put a lot? If we drag one of the lion corpses onto one of the pans? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Nothing happens. Is it? It doesn't move no, at no, all. Nothing moves at all. No. Okay. So um, which wait, which pan? Which pan sorry. did you put on? Like the the one that's not the key side to see okay, if it'll yeah you know, yeah, yeah no, nothing happens. Yeah. Uh, Chris will get a pile of copper pieces out and chuck them on there. Yeah, no, nope, nothing happens. Nothing. Anything happens if we step onto the the platforms at all? Yeah, who's stepping onto the platform and which one? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> hmm. Is anybody volunteering? I'm... I am chaotic <laughs> and Cedric. Well, sorry, Cedric is chaotic and will stand on the left side platform. The one under the key? No, the, the one that's not under the key. Mm. Yep. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, so when you when you stand, stand onto it, you hear a noble-sounding male voice um, speak up. Uh, um, Only he who hath led a goodly and lawful life shall ascend in the end. If thou wishes to rise above all others, speak truthfully of your deeds in life. Recount your virtuous acts and be judged. You have 30 heartbeats to prove your merit. So you have 30 seconds to basically say good things that you did in your life. Oh my god. For Cedric? Okay. Um, And it's starting... He dead. Starting now. I have slain... Undead that plagued villages, I have in total killed three skeletons and one zombie. I didn't kill, but managed to wound a ghoul. 
I help the those in need where possible. And, for example, I recently helped a blind old washerwoman cross a busy street. I am noble. Burn. If so, <laughs> you guys, I, I don't want to stop you from talking, but as you're yeah. saying the good deeds you did, you guys see the platform raise up with every deed he talks about. Every evil creature that you talk about slaying um, makes it go higher and higher and higher. Now, unfortunately, due to due to your obviously chaotic alignment, you're not mm -hmm. able to quite reach the key. Like it sort of swings around, brings you closer to it. Um, yeah. But you could possibly jump to it and try and grab it, maybe. It's about 10 feet above you. Uh, now, sorry, it's 10 feet above you and sort of, like, away a bit because you're on the wrong scale. Yeah, um, I'm on the wrong scale. But I'm like, C Cedric is a chancer, if nothing else. So he is going to try and, like... He, he knows there's going to be a 35-foot fall. <laughs> hey, only twenty five feet. You're still ten feet below it. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, but, but he's jumping. He's jumping up to yeah. grab it. Which is 30 <laughs> that's what three d six. It's fine. Yeah. You'll survive. Three d six damage. Yeah, mm, that's <laughs> it's it's potentially three damage. Uh, it's also potentially eighteen. That's, um, that's fine. I, don't, I mean, don't, you guys do have recuperation <laughs> and other stuff if you want to go for it. But uh, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, the, you start to feel like uh, like the scale is starting to move down back to its original position slowly. Do you jump for yeah, it? Yeah, we should. I think you're on the wrong scale. Chisel says, <laughs> and he just kind of shrugs. He's like, "Ah, eh, what can you do?" Uh, yep. Yeah, so do let you... it like float back down. <laughs> okay, so you go back down with the uh, with the scale. Yep. Okay, sounds good. All right. Yeah. So you um you just like that sort of voices in your like voice in the back of your head uh, goes away. Um, it's just sort of quiet now. When you step off the scale, it seems like you had your chance of judgment, and that's that's what it was. Does anybody yep. else want to go for anything? I'm a 25 on a 35 point scale. Not too bad. Any, anyone lawful? Um, Chris okay, steps forward. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Get, get over there, you fucking, yeah. Yeah. fucking nature, <laughs> so, nature yeah. lover. So Chris, Chris steps forward. Uh, you hear the same thing in your head about um, talking about your good deeds, and the timer starts now. Well, I've always tried to lead a fantastic life and uh, in harmony with nature and uh, and the law of all the good things of the forest. And um, I spare the living wherever possible, including, for example, these lions here. We could have, have slain them, but instead uh, I put them to a relaxing sleep and they'll be fine, I'm sure, in, in about an hour. And... Um, uh, yes, the uh, this this owl and I here have, uh, have uh, given to the f the poor, and uh, we have so many good plans. We just need to. Uh... And yeah, your scale goes all the way to the top. The key hey. is in reach. Grab the key. Yeah, you grab it, and like as soon as you touch the key, um, you go back down with the scale, um, and you have the Azure key in your hand now. Um, and you guys are whisked back to that room that you were in before. Chris has a very smug look on her face. <laughs> if you can be bothered to look up to, oh to man, see what it she looks didn't like. even have to get all the way to the top because she's oh. so fucking yeah. tall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. she's tall. tall. She's she's tall. tall. I mean, she could jump up and... feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and John and Marn, give yourselves both fling luck for your attempts. Yeah. I enjoyed your little. It, it's a fun little thing because you can kind of flesh out your character a little bit there with uh, yeah. your past deeds. Those are now canon. How much so... of... <laughs> yeah. How much of what your character said was a fucking lie, John? <laughs> <laughs> He, he has killed three you know, skeletons, one zombie, and he did shoot a ghoul as it was running away. <laughs> he did technically help the little old blind old washer lady cross the street. <laughs> technically. Why technically? Oh, Robin, uh, <laughs> you steal her fucking purse. No. no. He was leading her to be executed. Uh, <laughs> and that's why he didn't make it to the top. <laughs> well, see, why by omission? <laughs> I helped her cross the street to her, <laughs> to her <necessary> death. Necessary demise. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, oh, one thing. door left. Yeah. The most ominous one. Right. Yeah, sacrifice. <laughs> so this is a fun one. Um. The door opens not onto a chamber, but a scene of carnage. 
one you're immediately dropped into the midst of. You stand in the center of a small village under an overcast sky. Panic citizens flee in terror and screams of pain fill the air. Before you is a churning horror. A formless monstrosity the size of a cathedral. This demonic thing lashes out with dripping tendrils, shoveling a screaming villager into one of its hundred mouths. Building collapses as the beast roils over them, heading in your direction. A voice, quiet and childlike, speaks softly, yet is somehow heard amidst the violence. From mighty hero to simple good wife, those who walk the path of righteousness must give of themselves at times for another's salvation, paying that price with body, talent, art, and sometimes even one's life. Um, and just so you guys know, in terms of mechanics, um, this monstrosity is four turns away. I am just going to keep um, your initiative from before. Um, just to make things simple. Um, so I'm just going to run the bathroom real quick, but uh, you guys can sort of decide. Chuck is going first. I'm actually going to I'm going to skip Chuck because Chuck is just sort of a hireling. So we'll go next yeah. down to Pip. Chuck can give himself if you guys want to do something with him. You can do that, but uh, Chuck might. Um, protest but yeah and i'll be i'll be right back guys you guys can decide what this might mean chuck use this crossbow i don't want to chuck <laughs> chuck <laughs> go oh. sacrifice yourself to the formless horror <laughs> chuck yours oh, is not man. to question why but to do and die now get out there <laughs> so this is another ability point loss then thing then clearly <laughs> Yeah, you think it's... Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm wondering... Uh, Pip... Uh, Pip does not want to run into this thing, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Just start throwing items into the... <laughs> I'm sacrificing! I throw yeah. my gold! Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we should try the money first. Right on. But I don't think that's going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, I don't think it's going to do it. I will. Uh, I'll oh, post no. the. Uh, I'll post the thing for you guys. It... Thank you. Nice, Alex. We were just asking uh, if we tell Chuck to sacrifice his life. Mm -hmm. Does that count as us making a sacrifice? I'm going to say this. Um, it will count if. If you can convince Chuck that he needs to do it... Oh, God, this is in a weird way, but whatever. Um, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's wrong. One second. Mmm, delicious formatting. <laughs> uh. um, I'll say this. If you guys want to try and convince Chuck with a personality check or something... Um, I guess this is somewhat cheating, but I don't think it really is. Um, you need to want to sacrifice something. You can't be forced to sacrifice it. Like, you can't be told yeah. you need to do this. If one of you guys throws somebody at the monster, that's not going to count. It needs to be actual yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. Um, so if you want to try and convince no, we Chuck to give, just... away, give up his life, you can. It'll be a pretty we tough were... personality check. Um, but I think it's sort of a fun, fun sort of try at this. What are your thoughts on that, Martin? Uh, yeah, no, I'm okay. I'm easy. Okay. I'm guessing yeah, Alex will be uh, role-playing Chuck yeah. in yes, that case. Yes, I will, I will be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Pip, uh, it's Pip's turn, you said first? Ben? Yeah, Pip can go first, yeah. All right, so Pip uh, sees this awful scene of carnage and horror and uh, looks to Chuck. Says, Ch Ch Chuck, do you, see this, do you see that monster? It's, it's, it's going to kill all the villagers. It's going to kill all the villagers if someone doesn't sacrifice themselves to this. Chuck, you need you need to do it. We all need you to do it. You'll save everyone. And it, Chuck is there, like his uh, legs are quaking. He has like his his hand axe in hand. And he's just shaking. He's like, I I don't I don't want to die though. I I don't. You're want a to. brave man. The lords of chaos will save you. He, he says, <laughs> lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, give yourself fleeing luck and give me nice. a personality check for Pip. Um, yep. I'm gonna let you know right now. The DC Ooh. is 18. Um, oh, what'd you roll? I rolled a 19. Oh, my God. Plus oh, one. And so Pip Pip looks at you, his eyes wide, and he says, Okay, I, I, I know what I what I must do. 
Um, and he's he walks past you guys. So you can tell his every part of his body is telling him to not go forward, but he's going forward towards the beast. And like every step is taking forever. It feels like he's never going to reach this beast. Um, he's going past villagers who are screaming. People have like a, a big giant beam goes flying by him. And eventually you see him for the, standing. For the village, Pip! <laughs> or for the, for the village, Chuck. You're, you're like cheering him on, like, yeah, go die, go kill yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, you got, and, you're, and, you're, and you're doing that, and he's he he finally makes it up to the beast, um, and the beast opens up its giant maw and slams down onto him. And you see the beast gets all these cracks go across him, wounds appear, blood sprays, Parts of the tentacles sort of fall off, and eventually he lets out this sort of death rattle screech that just rocks your bodies, and then you guys black out and reappear um, in the room before. Um, and you hear Is Chuck in here. You hear a oh. rumbling behind you, and you turn around and you see that the source of this rumbling is Chuck snoring. <laughs> <laughs> he made it. Fennec I goes told over. The chaos lords would save him. <laughs> Fennec goes over and like puts, takes a little uh, bedroll out and puts it over him. And he's like, "You're a better man than me, Chuck." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you do that, and soon, soon after, he kind of like wakes up and says, oh, "I had the most horrifying dream. Uh, Pip told me to kill myself, and uh, oh, Pip didn't do happen. That. Don't worry about it." <laughs> Uh, You're a true hero, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, we've we've done all the rooms now, Chuck. <laughs> you we are cat. terrible. You slept right you through guys, it. You guys truly are horrible people, and I love it. <laughs> I, I would like to remind <laughs> everyone that we are not heroes. <laughs> Explicitly, <laughs> we are not yes. heroes. Fact. Oh my god! Except for Chris. Chris is nice. Chris Though is still nice. was like, yeah. yeah, you guys can do that. That's fine. <laughs> she <laughs> was looking horrified. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was like, Fennec's going to try and stop this if he can. But oh, no. Well, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I had some real like hopeful music playing because I have some, some background music. And it was like <laughs> swelling as he runs forward. And we're all the, I'm just imagining all of us in the background like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna have to talk to my therapist with this one. This is yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. Uh, good job, guys. That was, that was very fun. I, I I like that trial a lot, honestly. Um, mm. it's fun too because you could give them up stuff like your mighty deed of arms or like your thieving abilities and stuff like that. To, oh wow, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Um, or just your attribute points if you want to. Um, but yeah. Mm. So, um. In front of you, uh, celestial doors swing open to the music of the spheres, dulcet tones of unearthly instruments announcing your entrance. The chamber before you is a massive dome fashioned from bright blue marble flecked with spotless white. A wide walkway circles the perimeter of this 90-foot wide room. Directly before you is a bridge extending from the encircling causeway to a triangular platform hanging unsupported above a gulf of sultry, star-studded night. A number of figures stand atop the platform, surrounding a crystal plinth. Floating above the plinth is a large egg of cerulean blue. Um, so, just to give you guys, because that's a pretty long description, we're just going to break it down mm -hmm. a little bit here for you. Um, because there's something quite weird here. Um, just so, yeah. Um, actually, I'll just post a picture of it, and I'll also post it for the chat for anybody who wants to see what it is. Um... Do, this is what you're standing on. This is like the, that oh. doorway is where you are. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to post this for the chat so they can see. <laughs> Hit that upvote. Please like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the celestial, Smash that like button. <laughs> the celestial upvote. Um, you just hear like, Hit the bell. smash that like. <laughs> 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 um. You see that these figures that are here, um, there's eight of them, just like you, and they look like replicas of you guys, and they're walking up towards you. The difference here is they look more healthy, stronger, better than you. They're more attractive. Um, you know, maybe for Chrysanthemum, maybe they're even a little bit shorter and more like maybe a size that doesn't hurt them as much. Um, they, they all basically look like the people you could have been. If fate was nicer to you, 
Um, and they walk up to you and they say, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. You should leave. This place is not for you. What, you think you're better than us? Yes, we are better than you. To his double. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we, we are better than you. We're, we're much better. And we will kill you all if you don't leave right now. Doesn't seem very good of you. Doesn't seem very good of you. Uh, your character says back to you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, we found uh, big brother versions of ourselves. <laughs> I don't know if I want to fight myself. I don't know if I want to fight myself. Now... <laughs> Yeah, you're weak. The you egg leave. is on top of a plinth. Uh, yeah, at kind of in the center of that arrow. Yeah, they're basically right now. They're like you know you see like the bottom part of the upvote. Like they're between you yeah. and the egg. Yeah, and yeah, like definitely. and all around you guys is that like sort of voidy like just like the starless ni- or starry night. Mm-hmm. What's the sort of diameter of the room? Uh, it's ninety feet, I believe. If, 90 uh, yeah, ninety foot, okay. nine foot wide room. Yeah. How far is the tip of the arrow from the other side? Yeah, um, that's where I'm going. <laughs> um, I would say it's jumping distance, but an extremely hard one. Like I think that's just at the tip. Uh, of, like you could make yeah. it if you're really good. Um, I would say just to give you guys the idea of the roll you have to do is probably another DC. You know what? Because it's the fucking starry void beneath you. That's a DC twenty. That's that, like that is. You you could make it with some luck burning and stuff, but like it is gonna be tough, and you still have to. What if deal I just with did a raw roll and I? <laughs> <laughs> you could do it raw roll. <laughs> oh, we do have three re rolls left, <laughs> and fleeting yeah. luck, mm. and fleeting luck. How much fleeting luck do we have between everybody? I, got I have two. So for. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven with three rerolls. Statistically, really high chance of getting it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so if we have one of the thieves do it, they get one d four per thing. Oh, oh. d three, but yeah, or whatever yeah. it is. Per oh, d three. Yeah. yeah, sorry, my mistake. Uh, uh, so much. Yeah, that's almost, uh, that's like a statistical guarantee. Almost decent odd, but like <laughs> they might have to jump back over though. I do have a grappling hook, so maybe we could throw whoever goes yeah. over. Is there a pedestal that this thing is sitting on, you said? Pardon me? Um, Yeah. It's on like a plinth, right? Yeah. You could wrap the... You could grab it, wrap the grappling hook around around the plinth, tie it off on your waist, and try to jump back. And so if you don't make it, you won't die. (laughs) uh, Also, you guys know now, um, the egg is like twice the size of like an ostrich egg, basically. Like, big, like pretty, torso size. It's a very big fucking egg. Big yeah. egg. Big egg. I will say jumping back with that is gonna be. <laughs> Can we just threaten to destroy it and then they won't uh, if we already have it? Fuck we'll drop it. We'll do it. We're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You can definitely We're try dumber it. than you, so you know we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know in your heart of hearts that you would do the same thing, you judgmental piece of shit. Fucking jerks. Dickheads. I mean, so what we're going to do now, because you guys aren't leaving, um, you guys are still basically where you started, we're going to do initiative here, guys, because uh, um, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> uh. Hey. All right. Does anyone mind if I grab a reroll on the one? No, go ahead. I I don't think we'll mind on this. You're, one. You don't want to do that also oh. because that's a that's a fumble. So that would yeah. be uh, all your fleeing luck gone. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're well, not doing that though. Remember? All oh, right, initiative doesn't count. You're right. You're right. Ooh. Like that. Like mm, that. Like, that, like count. But just exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll still give a fleeing luck for that. I'm fine with that, Dan. Oh, okay. I think I think just keep, think keeping it keeping it normal. If you roll a natural twenty, you get you get a fleeting luck. We'll just keep things simple. Okay. Well, there's another one. Um, nice. <laughs> as Jeez. I was saying. <laughs> I'm gonna re-roll. Oh. Well, if we don't lose the fleeting luck, I'll, I'll um, Chris can still be two. That's fine. 
we'll keep that for more important things. Um, uh, no, in fact, we, we could we could reroll Chris again, and then she might be able to cast something. Yeah, cast her yeah. availabilities. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys, this is this is uh, all you guys know now. Um, they're using your character sheets, but they're better. So I would say any advantage <laughs> that you can get, you're gonna want to use because they have everything you have. I'm just mm. I'm revealing and that full now. Hit points. <laughs> yeah. I remember that now because I don't think it really. I don't think that was much of a. I don't think anybody wasn't coming to that conclusion anyway. But um, I I really think fe uh, mirror mirror Fennec has like three hit points. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, <laughs> um, well, you're not wrong. Um, actually, more than that. But John, um, I'll start with you. Fennec and yeah, uh, whatever so they that's... and Cedric. Uh, so. Cedric got nine. Fennec got ten. Cedric, nine. Fennec, ten. All right. Um, excuse me. Uh, Dan. Uh, let's see. Chisel got ten, and Pip got twenty-one. Pip got twenty. That's very good. Um, okay, uh, Martin. Uh, so Chuck got 22, Ooh, nice um, Jed got 9, and Chris got 8. Chris got 8. Okay. And Jack? Uh, Ixie got 6, and Doyle got 21. All right. So I'll just gotta do something real quick here, guys. Um, oh, I guess there's actually nine people because Chuck's copies here as well. Yeah. Um, He's got a slightly bigger fire axe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hatchet. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to do a lightning round here. Here. Pencil's not working. There we go. All right, well, none of them are going to be going before you guys. Um, I will say um, Chuck, Pip, and Doyle will be going next, so you guys want to decide while well, I just write this down. You guys want to think about what you want to do here. All, all of them are currently, like I said, on that bridge, like the like the, the shaft of the arrow. Um, that's where they all are, so it's up to you what you want to do there. Push them off. Push them <laughs> off. Uh, but yeah, I'll just be one sec. Um... Uh... Hmm, that actually worked out really interestingly. This is gonna be a weird fight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> weird, good or weird, bad? Uh, we're about to, <laughs> to fucking find out, I guess. <laughs> All right, yeah, so Chuck Chuck is first. Uh, like I said, they're all sort of in front there. Um, there's nine of them. <laughs> all way to fight. They all seem to have your armor and your weapons. So Chuck is just going to, yeah, kind of look around at everyone else because he's going first again, and he's a hireling. Um, and, uh, yeah, just go for a, a swipe at one of these. He's going to actually swipe at uh, Chris's alternative Okay, sounds good. Chris's mirror. I might burn some. Oh, cool. Can I burn some fleeting luck on a damage? Does that work? Uh, no. 
No, okay, never mind. Five is pretty good. Five is good, yeah. Um, yeah, that is good. Just gotta look at Chris's character sheet. But this is gonna be a bit of a slower fight as I have to look at your character sheets and change some yeah. things. Um, ooh, yeah, you definitely hit. Um, uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Ooh, nice big hit. Nice big hit on fake Chris there. Um, she does not have a lot of life left in her, but she still is going. Kill her first so she can't like yes. sleep half the fucking party. Yeah, yeah. wizards yeah. are yeah. insane. Yeah, and she's better than Kill you. the caster. All right, Pippin Doyle. Who? Okay. <clears throat> Pip, sorry, Pip's first, and then, and then it's going to be Doyle. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Definitely, definitely go first. Uh, I think, uh, I think I still want to try to run around and grab this and jump over the gap and try to get over there. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to do that in the first round. Just to make no, sure. no, yeah. no, I didn't think so. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, you have a ranged weapon? Actually, I don't. I'm actually, yeah. I could throw my dagger, but uh, I'll actually, you know what? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to attack Chrysanthemum as well. Okay. And uh, so Pip kind of runs in um, with his long sword. All right. And takes a swipe. Mm. Do you want to reroll that? You guys have what two rerolls left? I believe. Used one for me and one on the initiative check. So yeah, yeah. I'd say use it, Dan. Take out the caster. Use it. Yeah, take it. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and I'll spend fleeting luck if I need to on that. I'm assuming, are or you, I don't know. Uh, Do are I you rolling to? your? Oh, Pip, Pip's not not the warrior. Yeah. Um. So no, 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 no. Uh, you're gonna need thirteen to hit. Okay. Um. Let's make it a definite hit. You can grab one of my fleeting lucks. Okay, okay. In that case, uh, I mean, I don't even necessarily need to roll then at that point, right? Yeah. If no. I burn a fleeting luck and, and Martin. So, yeah. yeah, I'll do that. All right, you hit yeah, and you kill her. Seven she, points of damage. Yeah, your longsword slices, slashes across her, um, and her giant figure uh, tumbles into the starry darkness below. Um, probably never to be seen again. Um, Pip right. kind of glances over at actual chrysanthemum. <laughs> like, uh, this feels really weird. Right. Yeah, because like, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, damn, I killed the hot Chris. Um, and now uh, <laughs> uh, Doyle, it's your turn. All right. Well, we're definitely not in the point of a fight where he can try to backstab no, somebody. No, they're so. all aware of you. And, I, and like I said, they yeah. they kind of know your moves. You can see that they like Chris is doing a pretty good job of stopping at least one of you guys. But uh, no didn't work out yeah so he's gonna pull out his uh fucking the battle axe that he got last time <laughs> traditional weapon of the ninja of course <laughs> also does one of you guys have that stone that you guys got in the last adventure that, oh yeah someone has the whetstone that makes your I think, blade I think, will burn? yeah i think pip does actually yeah okay <clears throat> i wrote it down i'm not sure who was carrying it i guess i, see, I, yeah, sure I believe i believe yeah. he found it yeah at, I think at the end of the thing you were ready to strike it and you didn't get to do it oh yeah, yeah 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 right so yeah he's got that uh, should I go for next? And you guys feel free at, at this point to talk much together about Chuck. your own character sheets because you guys m probably know the best yeah. answer as to who to go for. Chuck, yeah. Chuck's got one hit point <laughs> on a low AC, so he's it's one attack out quite quickly. Yeah, as far as action, if we want to just talk about straight action economy, that's probably the smart yeah. move. Uh, yeah, sure. Doyle's gonna run forward towards uh <laughs> towards Chuck Shadow the Chuck. Yeah, you see, yeah. you see, this Chuck has no like shaky legs or anything. He's like, he looks buffer. He's got like a big chest. He's like, oh yeah, I'm ready for this guy. Um, no, oh, no. Every, fucking damn it! Everybody, Radio. yeah. Use the radio. Yeah. Uh, give <laughs> me, <laughs> give me a reflex save, uh, wizard. Wait, can I? Can we spend the last reroll oh, so yeah. we don't lose all of our fucking sleeping yeah, luck? Yeah, you can do that. Yep. <laughs> Is that a good idea? <laughs> I feel bad yeah, yeah, burning yeah. so many of our rerolls. No, it's good. It's fine. I think <laughs> I think I think Tim's gonna be very yeah, happy that yeah. he stops when he fumbles. Yeah, no. So you guys keep oh, your yeah. keep your fleeing luck and um, not bad. Is what it is, ten enough? I can spend some fleeting luck. What is not. Chuck's AC? Or yeah, what's Chuck's AC? Uh, ten. Ten. So you need to hit eleven. All right, I'll spend a fleeting luck and, and do it. I okay. Do, so yeah. Um, and so that or will kill damage. him with that five points of damage. Uh, Chuck gets his head chopped off and he falls down to the bottom. Um, okay, so that's Chuck or yeah, fake hot Chuck gone. Um, Shadow Chuck. Shadow Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
Now it is Shadow Pip's turn. Oh no. Um, and what does he have? You have, you have Dagger Groat. As far as yeah. Yep. Um, so he's looking up. Who's up close? We got Pip up close. We got Doyle up close, and we got Chuck up close. Um, he just saw Doyle chop off a guy's head. Uh, he's gonna go uh, slashing at you, um, Doyle. So he okay. has. Do, 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 do. Oh my god. Okay. So this might suck. I'm just going to hit this. And he rolls um, a 17. Um, I mean, yeah, that hits. That's and... like, it's impossible to have an AC that high at level 1. <laughs> yeah. So we get a yeah. lot more money. Uh, and he, he does. Benic has 60. <laughs> he has 4 damage. Okay. So that's about a third of. Well, exactly a third of Doyle's hit points. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, and yeah, yeah and then points. it's and then it's Shadow Doyle who's gonna go. Uh, where are you, Shadow Doyle? Or where's Doyle? <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, he's got the nice battle axe, huh? Um, yeah, he's going to go. He's Doyle's gonna go. Shadow Doyle's gonna go for real Pip. So with his battle axe, he's gonna come in swinging at you, Pip. Um, and he's going to roll a Oof. four, which I don't think is going to hit. And if it does, it's only negative. Be... Yep. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. So you're all good. Um, and now it's real Chisel's turn. Real this is chisel. now turning into a bit more of a mosh pit of fucking uh, yeah. you know, real, like, real lifelike chisel. people. Yeah. Real Chisel, that's me. <laughs> that's uh, okay, real <laughs> Chisel uh, is going to... Now, none of the other shadow uh, versions of us have been hurt. Is that correct? Uh no yeah they're all all the shadow guys are good so far you've killed off two and yeah he's gonna go after uh Shadow Pip okay. uh he's gonna run up and he wants to try to uh <clears throat> if he can get an angle he wants to try to like barrel into Pip and uh kind of start pushing at least Pip off the edge of the thing you want to get Pip angle off the edge? him in. Yep. Yeah, I want to try to get Pip off the edge for sure. If he can kind of hit anybody else on the way there. No, the, I, I will well. say this. You're going against a thief, and this is exactly what my deeds are good for. There's no railings. There's no nothing. Because usually this wouldn't be any harder than pushing somebody off the stairs. So if you get this, okay. this deed, you might actually um, throw him off the side okay. here. But yeah, As we cool. all know, pushing people down the stairs is easy because we've all done it before exactly. in real life. So. Naturally. naturally. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace, Grandma. Um, okay, I, I did get <laughs> the deed uh so you, get the deed, you right? add the deed to your attack roll is that correct oh, cool. you do yeah um and pip is that already figured or uh it's already uh, figured right in, in this case it doesn't look like it because it's no it's a plus well, two it says, is all that's been added to your attack roll no actually if i hover over the nine it actually does say seven one d20 uh, plus, oh, yeah, minus three one. minus oh, okay. one yeah so it is added in so okay so it's nine uh, the ac is 13 is what you have to get ac is 13 i got two fleeting luck i have three uh, i'll ship those over to you yeah uh, let's see i'll burn my two and then i only need two more okay okay so i'll send you the two and... okay cool so that'll hit for yep. well I, I guess i i guess i push him off the edge yeah you you like you give him a stab and then you like shoulder bash him right off the side um and big time shadow pip goes falling um off the uh off the edge <laughs> and yeah and chisel uh chisel kind of looks over he says ah, pip <laughs> kind of looks back and is uh, kind of looking back and forth. Uh, real distraught. I feel yeah. also these more attractive versions must make Fennec feel even worse, John, because um, you're seeing you're seeing like so you're seeing like the like the good Fennec that you could have been. <laughs> yeah, and like so, Fennec's just looking. So you take another Fennec, negative. He's, like, too. <laughs> he's just like, look, buddy, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> um, and Fennec's up next. Real Fennec. real Fennec? Yeah, real Fennec. Yeah. Fennec. yeah, he is going to charge in at good Fennec, who is <laughs> better than him in every way. Real Fennec is going to charge at good Fennec, who's bad Fennec, but is better than <laughs> real Fennec. I, I will say this. This won't be a natural 20, but if you are able to kill uh, fake Fennec in one okay. roll, it will restore your self-confidence that you were able to beat the uh, guy who's better. This is a metaphorical outside like <laughs> exterior battle. Holy oh. shit! Uh, minus, <laughs> minus two. Um, I okay. will spend Fennec's my remaining AC is Fennec's, Fennec's AC, AC is, is sixteen. It's seventeen for this guy. So how many um, do you need? Another, have another one. Yeah, I well, I'm minus two. So 
Okay, so it's You're effectively 13, 13 need, with what he rolled. So you need four. Yeah, right. I've I've got four, so you can have whatever you want, really. It's all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get rid of them. It's good to use them in battle, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It is yeah. the best use for them. Okay, so we'll use my one fleeting lock. Brings us up to 14. 14. And All three of Martin's brings you up to 17, which 17. hits. Yeah, and yep. so I, I just think it's more, this is a poetic death. How do you want, John, how does this happen here? Because uh, this is this is the, this is literally like the hotter, better version of you in every way. You, yeah, uh, and this is piece of shit Fennec who's like, yeah. oh god. And you kill him, like, been... outright. 10 points Oh yeah, damage. totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah especially to a guy with three hit points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just brings the battle axe down into the guy's neck. <laughs> just like, well, into the collarbone, and he's just like, I'm the best Fennec. And he just <laughs> kicks him off the edge. I love I'm it. I'm the only Fennec. Awesome. <laughs> and you, I, I, you see Fennec have like like a Popeye after eating spinach moment where he's just yeah. like... <laughs> it's like yeah, somebody has suddenly colored him in a little more than he was colored in before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your self-confidence is restored, Fennec. Give yourself Guys, a luck. Let, let the takeaway from this awesome. be to restore your self-confidence kill your better self <laughs> there's something i'm sure some philosopher had something okay. to say about this in germany <laughs> in the 30s yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay and now this is where i'm gonna be a massive dick um and shadow chisel goes hey that was a pretty good move and he tries to do oh, the same thing to you chisel now that you're on the edge uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> oh no Oh, you oh. are so lucky! Like, uh, he, like, like he's about to do the, the same move ooh. on you and just misses. Very nice. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. Oh, yeah. No, eight, a, eight, eight is the roll. Okay. Four, yeah. 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 No, uh, he's not able to quite make it. You are able to just sort of. You remember? Like, you also have a thing where, like, you remembered how you did it, and you're like, "Oh, I just gotta go to the I right, step just aside, one kind inch." Of a thing. And, yeah, just yeah. like you watch the blade go by your face. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's him. Okay, real Cedric's turn. Real Cedric is gonna shoot fake Doyle. Okay, <laughs> this is so funny. This, this seems like a community episode. This feels like the way we're talking. This feels like a... <laughs> right. Also, wait. So who's left? Oh, nice. Whoa. Yeah, who is left? Um, Ooh. So. Um, that you're going, you're going for fake Doyle, you say, right? Yeah, Doyle has a lot of hit points. Yeah, <laughs> fake Doyle has at least fake, twelve. Fake Doyle, fake Damn. Doyle, fake Doyle has quite a bit more than that too, um, because of how this works. So Doyle, um, yeah, fake Doyle's still looking pretty good, but he that was a good, good big hit. Um, I'm just like, oh no, I have to take that fucking psycho assassin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at real Doyle. Yeah, look at, like this world's no, 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 that can't be allowed to live. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the ones who are, so the ones, I'll just say, it'll be easier if I tell you who, who you killed. You killed fake Chuck, you killed fake Pip, you killed fake Fennec, and you fit, and you kill, and you killed fake, uh, Chris. Yes, yeah. so we've killed almost half of them already. That's yeah. four. So who's out, left like, the, the is, we still, have Ix, we still have Ixie, Cedric, we still have Cedric, Doyle, Jed, who's hurt. Fake, fake Cedric, fake Jed, and fake Ixie are yet to go this turn. Um, and so after Cedric, it is real Jed. Cool. So Real Jed is going to um, do something. He's going to let's look down at his pitchfork and uh, brandish this thing and go, oh, we don't, oh, you don't trust this. this. This isn't right. And he's going to run forward and he's going to try and um, cure one of them off the edge if at all possible. I mean, he's not a warrior, so I guess he can't really do a mighty deed, but that's so the sort of theatrics. That's what he's going. Yeah, for. He, he can't. He can't necessarily do a mighty deed. Um, but what you can do, because the thing about the mighty is that you do damage while doing a move. You can try going for a move instead of damage, basically. So if you want, if you want to, if you want to try and shove them, and if you pass, like they might, they'll go off. But like otherwise, you can just try and go for record damage. It's up to you. Um, you could try and do it. It will be. It'll be tough, but yeah, let's try and shove them off okay. rather than damage. I think. Who are you trying to shove off? Um, I'm going to try and shove off, um, well, I mean, he just doesn't see that this is a, a, a good thing. So himself, fake, <laughs> fake Jed Adair. Okay, he's going for fake Jed, huh? Okay. <laughs> he figures he's the toughest guy, right? So, you know, yeah, which obvious is... target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
and Jed, he's gonna Jed's a decently big probably, guy. Yep. He's probably gonna spend a ton of luck on this as well. Yeah, we'll just do yeah, do your roll and it's Oh, oh no, you don't. critical. Ooh. All right, perfect. Yeah. Um <laughs> I like how it says strikes are his larynx. I'm gonna say nice. you just fucking like you just fucking like uh throat punch him and shove him off the side. Just <laughs> go, go for the old cool. throat Imagine punch. That yeah. Falling into the infinite void of space while you're like while also being like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Do you see the text on this critical hit? Strikes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Severs the larynx. <laughs> yeah. Those are just wet, wet, wet fish, fish noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's Amazing. one fleeting luck, isn't it, for the 20? <laughs> Uh, yes, that's a fleeing luck for the 20 yeah, as well. cool. Nice. Back up to two. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay, and that was Jed. Um, and now it's fake Cedric. Um, who is going to, um... He's going to fire a bolt straight at, uh... He has a crossbow, correct, I think? Right, yes, John? Correct. He's going to fire a bolt straight at Fennec. Not Fennec. Uh, crossbow, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> so, seven points of damage. Um, that that very much kills Fennec. Yeah, there, there's... It's, it's, it's over Ooh. the limited amount of health he has. Like, he's just... He's yeah. going down. Um, Fennec is just fucking domed. He's um, dying and, and goes down. He he looks to his employer and yeah. is like, <laughs> "Yeah." So you guys have one round to try and staunch his wounds, basically. Um, but like he is very much about to die if you do not uh, if somebody doesn't use their turn to to stabilize him. Quick question: Are we doing the roll roll the body thing or no? Um, I, I don't. Really, I'm not super familiar. We don't need to get into it or anything yeah. well, or for, whatever. For, but... for this aspect, no. If somebody falls off the side of the cliff, I might make a ruling then. Mm. But for this, this is just he's dying. Um, and if you survive the battle, because somebody else could fire their bolt in the Fennec, and then he's dead for real, even if you yeah. stabilize him, because that just casts a coup de grace. Um, and right. and then, but like after after the combat, uh, Fennec can, can choose to burn a luck and come back with one hit point after the combat. But um, that's mm -hmm. if he survives it. Okay, right on. Cool. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so that is that's uh, Shadow Cedric's turn, and now it's real Chrysanthemum's turn. Uh, so Chris really wants to help. Um... Poor old Fennec, but Chris thinks that she probably better cast sleep or something instead because that could be more useful. <laughs> um, if she puts everyone to sleep, then anyone else with the remaining turn can get Fennec. Yep. So that's yeah, cool. yeah. So she's gonna um, huff and puff and uh, oh, it's terrible all this death. It doesn't seem right that we're killing ourselves. And I know it's not really us, but I just this doesn't seem right. And she. Uh, <laughs> Cast sleep. Oh, oh no. Friggin' wrong. You are lucky that's a two and not a one, Martin. Um yeah. but yeah, so that you it's lost and a failure. Um Okay. And, and she's still weak from this whole kind of twelve foot she she can't quite get her arm in the air, the old somatic not move. Quite enough not, blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see here. Uh Okay, yeah, Ixie has a short bow. Um, who would he shoot at? Uh, it's always a question, do I want to be mean? Because they're <laughs> smart. Yeah, yeah, they're smart. Finish off Fennec. And yeah, to yeah he's going yeah. to finish off Fennec. Um, yeah, of course he is. Who wouldn't? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the arrow like it just like goes right between like his legs, like right, like right, like close to him, <laughs> right, right, right next to his thigh. Wow. Um, <laughs> and now it is real Ixie's turn. Who? So who's left? Who's left out of the Ixie to go uh, behind him? Uh, like on like the, who's on, who's on the left in the order? Nobody. You're the last. Yeah. Yeah. Ixie. Okay. So does Fennec die immediately at the end of this turn? No, 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 no. It's once it, once it comes back around to him. Like if it, if it, if it gets back okay. around to him on his next turn, then then that's how so the question that, is. That is who's... so mean. If you have like two people to get <laughs> your to last, it's yeah. like no, no. shit. No, they're you die. <laughs> Chuck, Pip, <laughs> Chuck, Pip, Doyle, Chisel, Fennec, all have, or and Chisel, I'll have a chance to get to Fennec, um, or I'll have a chance to do that. Okay. So. I'm inclined for Ixie to have him attack since yep. we only have four enemies left and one of them is hurt. Yeah. So wait, we have we have Shadow Ixie, Shadow Doyle's been hit, Shadow Cedric, and there's one other person, right? Yeah, so there's Shadow Ixie, Shadow Cedric, oh. Shadow Chisel, and Shadow Doyle. Chisel's the other one, okay. Chisel. 
the new Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> yeah, it really sounds like <laughs> it. Honestly, it sounds like it could be. Yeah. Guess what? It's just another guy wearing some ninja clothes <laughs> yeah. from Spirit Halloween. That's and, then sort of and he's got a chisel. <laughs> that's, that's literally just smoke in Mortal Kombat. That's literally all he is. It's just another guy in ninja garb. <laughs> look, they just, we, look, we only had so many colors we could reskin fucking Sub-Zero <laughs> yeah. as, okay? Yeah. Um... All right. Uh, in that case, Ixie is going to use his his rage, um, which will drop his AC and intelligence checks to two. He will ignore two points of physical damage, okay. but his damage goes up one die level, and he oh. gets plus two to saving throws against mind altering effects. Nice. So, what's he using cool. a spear? Um, let's see. Yeah, probably. Okay, that'll be a D10 and 7D8. Give me your roll. Yep. Oh, yeah, sorry, who are you going for, actually? Um, Is there anyone that... Do you think, who do y'all think? Because we have... Doyle's Shadow the Ixie only one who's has, hurt, but he's still pretty yeah, healthy. Yeah, he's got a lot of head points left, I think. Mm-hmm. He's got at least seven. Um, Probably more than that. Um, Does Cedric or Chisel not have very much health IRL? Chisel Cedric starts has, with five. Cedric okay. started with 13. Okay, so probably go for Chisel in that case. Mm-hmm. Just take out the action. Try to, yeah, honestly. Uh, okay. Come on. Give me something good, please. Okay. Um, so that's on Chisel, right? And he deeds as well, so... Yeah. Don't forget to be... I, I guess the... I didn't describe anything beforehand. I don't know but... if we've been forgetting to do this at all, or if we've just been doing it naturally, but um, the, you do add the deed die to the damage. Just to remember that. It does it does it automatically. Oh, to the damage as well. Yeah, yeah, it, does, it goes to the damage as well. No, oh, that's weird that it doesn't. Oh, I guess you probably have to hit put a pl- at plus at A B. Yeah, maybe, the maybe that's thing. yeah, that's probably what it is, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um okay, um, so that's total okay. five damage for that. On Chisel. Yeah, and the D does go off. I didn't describe anything. Um I could just say I try to shove him as well, because he's in a fucking blind rage. Yeah, I and he's a giant lizard man. I can't remember who I who I was talking to. It might have been you guys, maybe it was like whenever, but uh, or one of you guys in the group here. But one thing that's just probably for the best, you can do either way you want. But you can also just wait to see if your D die goes off and then describe what you want to do instead of you doing the description and then oh I failed it. You can do either way. It doesn't I don't care. But in case if you want, I don't. Right. I don't. I won't say no. You didn't say what you did beforehand. If you roll it, then you're like, oh, okay, yeah. no, I did this. Yeah. Um, I can try to huck them all. Which would make sense because he literally just shoves him through and then throws him. Yep. Or I could try to toss him into like Doyle or something to interrupt Doyle next round if we think we can finish him off before that. Or if that has, what do y'all think? I think the interrupt might be worth trying for. Okay. You think so? We, the other guys left are Cedric, Doyle, and, and Ixie. Yeah. So, so I guess mm-hmm. what we could do here in terms of like, because the interrupt actually, actually is kind of interesting. Um, this beautiful thing about my deeds. If you want, you can either I would say either throw Chisel off the side or bring Doyle down in the in the uh, initiative order. Yeah, let's do that. I think we have a pretty high. We've been, I mean, not we've not even been rolling particularly well, but we have enough people yeah. versus them at this point. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it'll do the five damage to Chisel and then like run, you know, try to run him through and then bat him to the side with a spear into Doyle. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, because so, it's just like it's, it's just like fucking. You got your like animal strength where it's just yeah, like, yep, yeah. that's like two hundred pounds of lizard just throwing you somewhere else. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, and then Ixie has rage for one more turn. Perfect. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so Doyle is is not fairly quite low on the initiative right now. Um, okay, and that's Ixie's turn, uh, and now it's back to Chuck. So Chuck is going to lay down his hand axe and uh, run over to Fennec and see if he can administer some sort of first aid. Sounds good. Yeah. There's no there's no role for this. It's just that you're using your turn to staunch his wounds. Like you're grabbing like a rag and just like pressing against it. And basically uh, you were stabilizing Fennec. He is still in danger of being killed if somebody goes for him. But uh, right now he's stabilized and he's no longer considered dying. Um, Pip. Pip. Okay, uh, Pip is uh, gonna head for Fake Doyle. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> he's gonna attack with his longsword. He's gonna come in oh. slash. Oh. Nice, good <clears throat> hit, good then, hit. There is All right. He is still alive, but uh-huh. he that that was the hit that really, really <laughs> he is not long for this world. 
put him put him on his uh I'm kind of backing him up towards the edge of the uh towards the edge of the, the chasm here. He just had fucking chisel thrown at him and then immediately is just like assaulted by a long sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally that awesome. shadow, shadow of the hedgehog meme where he just goes ow the edge where it's just the, the words cut off and it's literal. <laughs> um all right, yes, yeah, Pip, great job. Uh Doyle. Real Doyle. Oh, um, Who's up next in the the bad guys? Uh, from what you can tell, uh, Evil Chisel. Okay, I mean he's also really hurt, so I feel like I'll have Doyle. Go but for Evil him Chisel's as well. also not going until Real Chisel and then Wolf Fenix down, so he's not. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Maybe I'll have uh, I'll have him go for try to finish off Chisel here. Okay. With the uh, with the uh, battle axe. I don't uh, think that hits. No, Chisel, Evil Chisel has an AC of 15. It's not worth trying to spend up luck for that, so. Okay. That, that happens. That's all good. Okay, the so breaks. That's, that's good. Down. But this is great, though, because Doyle's still alive, but Evil Doyle's not going. He would have gone next, but he's not now. <laughs> um, so now it's a real Chisel. A real Chisel. <clears throat> uh, real Chisel's nice. going to uh, go for Evil Doyle. Uh, he sees uh, Pip kind of backing him up a little bit, and he's going to run in and try to shove him off okay. the ledge. Oh, nice. Oh! <laughs> Man. Hell nice. yeah. So this, this, is on, mm. this is on real chisel? Or sorry, this is on fake chisel? Uh, on, on, on Doyle. Oh, no, on Doyle, on, okay. He saw, yeah, he saw Pip okay. kind of engaged with him, and he and he runs up and just, like, barrels right into him uh, while he's distracted by Pip's longsword. And fake Doyle, what's your AC, fake Doyle? You are 16 AC, so. Here, take my last feeling luck. Okay. There you go. Take it on. Okay, cool. There you cool. go. Awesome. Yep, Perfect. so, um, and that will kill um, evil Doyle, finally. Nice. I love, by the way, that we've taken to calling them evil us rather yeah. than yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely better, better us. than that. Yeah, actually, I think they're the good ones. You're the evil ones for sure from the things you guys did. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, he he is now gone fully, um, and now it is other Chisel who's going to go. Um, and I'm going to say he's going to go for uh, real Chisel again. Um, and he's just like, mm -hmm. I really like your style, even though you are pretty fucking ugly. Um and uh, swings at you with his long sword. Uh -huh. Oh yeah! Oh my god! Ooh. But he can't seem to get it down. Nope. Wow. Now who's the better one now? <laughs> he knocks out of the way. <laughs> he doesn't sound good, does he? he sounds evil and nasty, <laughs> condescending, arrogant. Well, he's lawful, not evil or good. Mm. Just. It I couldn't give it up because it, because it's it's genuinely infuriating. But I was gonna keep making them mock you guys every time you spoke. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna it is keep... actually it's actually infuriating. It's bro. infuriating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like, it is... yo, fuck you, Alex. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like being shushed. It's just like I'm gonna fucking kill you. Um. Uh. So yeah, he's gone. Okay, real Cedric's turn now. Uh, real Cedric is going to shoot mirror mirror Cedric. Okay. Crossbow. Oh no! Oh. Oh. And you guys are out of range. from a nineteen on my screen. I know, same here. I'm like, oh. All I right. know like, it's I... already decided the value, yeah. but it still I, I know, feels but bad. It's still... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it captures the agony of yeah. feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's very true. And okay, real Jed. So real Jed will, um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, buoyed by his last success, he's gonna gonna go headlong at uh, Evil Chisel. Okay. Um, he's aiming just to stab him a bit with a pitchfork, as opposed to toss him off the edge. Perfect. Ooh, nice. Hey, nice. He's still uh, going, but you get another another little stab in him. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's getting whittled down quite a bit now. Uh, he's also looking pretty rough. Um, okay. What, what classes, Jed? Uh, uh thief yeah okay um i just love how much that it's not jebediah which is a real name <laughs> <laughs> um e evil cedric is gonna go for fennec once again um mm -hmm. oh. i think you just gonna try and keep him away uh he is evil <laughs> i i choose to believe that evil cedric 
and oh. Oh. <laughs> an evil Fennec were actually best friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unlike how uh, real Fennec and real Cedric are master and lackey. Oh, yeah. Because mm. because other Fennec was like really like somebody who was, you know, like had self-confidence. They were great. They were both like equals He was to each outstanding. Other. Yeah. He was just a good guy. They were great friends. And fucking actual fennec comes in and just yeah. goes for the neck <laughs> this facsimile of fennec just enrages uh fake cedric <laughs> yeah um okay and then it's uh chrysanthemum's turn real chrysanthemum obviously because the other one's dead so chris is gonna um yeah she's sort of well, well maybe if I, I i need to scale these movements down a little bit because i'm I, i'm at least twice my previous size and uh <laughs> she's gonna try uh try sleep again uh sleep's mm -hmm. gone you uh you lost it when oh you, yeah you lost course. it when you fail it in which case um she's gonna say well maybe i can find launch she's gonna try force manipulation okay uh and that's another loss and failure oh. unless you want to bump it up to a 12 Is that close? if you bring it up to 12 uh, no. then you can uh then you can uh... oh. oh wait is it oh your your entire role is 11 um, no, you're supposed to have another plus three. Yeah, right? you're, you're, you're another, it was, oh, uh, that one. Right. That, you're supposed to have another plus one actually. Or no, this one added it. This one. Yeah, but you're, it, you're supposed to have a plus four because you're cast through familiar. That's I'm true. Yeah, no, I keep forgetting that. So. Yeah, so it's actually twelve, um, which is actually not. This is actually a good one because this creates an apple sized sphere of force that can be hurled as a weapon. Uh, it can Perfect. be hurled immediately or remain in the wizard's hand for up to one round per cast level. It inflicts one d six damage per cast level with a range of twenty five feet per cast level. So an invisible sphere um is gonna go right for for chisel's temple okay i love it um yeah so i think um i think yeah it... just give me a jelly check i guess yeah i don't know yeah we can be yeah. really yeah so okay it'll just be agility nice um yeah uh so i think that's gonna hit no, I've got some fleeting. It luck. will, yeah, it will, yeah, it's enough. Um, yeah, and roll me a d6 as it, as it smashes into his temple. Come on. Oh, nice. wow. and that is just enough to fucking crack him, and he goes flying off the edge as well. I like to imagine that he's shit talking, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, actual real chisel, chisel as it yeah. happens, <laughs> yeah. and he's like, <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like just the bloody foam comes out yeah. of his mouth, and he just goes over the edge. <laughs> He's just that been fucking really... punched by like a boxer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was fantastic. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, and uh, fake Ixie is gonna go and seeing seeing that happen, um, he is going to fire off his short bow at Chrysanthemum. Oh. Uh, oh boy, that is oh. nine points of damage. That was almost a crit. Uh, Chris is largely not uh, not standing up anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, is that, is that more than she has hit points? Yeah, yeah, okay. it is. <laughs> so, so Chris Chris goes down. Um, a a uh, yeah, a, a arrow uh, strikes true, and she hits the ground. Um, but she is just dying. She's not dead just yet. Um, and then it's real Ixie's turn. Um, he's still in a rage, so he's probably going to go for fake Ixie, I guess. Okay. Um. How much health does he have? Oh boy. Yeah, a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, these guys just don't give up. It, was, it was, makes them mm. pretty tough. <laughs> Damn uh, it. No. All right. I'm not going to hit. All right. Back up to you, Chuck. Um, um, so seeing Chris go down, Chuck is going to... Uh, <laughs> Run over and stabilize. I like how Chuck is doing do, do triage. Yeah. 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 So same thing. Uh, uses up his turn. Um, just um, getting uh, Chris stabilized. But if Chris gets hit by anybody, um, she will die for real. Um, but for now, uh, she is stabilized. All right. Uh, Pip. Pip. Uh, Ix and Cedric are left. Is that correct? Yes. Evil Ixy, evil Cedric. That's it. Both unhurt. Both unhurt. Both with quite a few hit points. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's easier to hit than Cedric for sure, but and has he has a ranged hit. weapon. Also, both have ranged weapons. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go after Ix. I will and, say Cedric uh, yeah. is less capable in melee combat. 
is less capable. Mm. That's funny. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to stick with it. Go for uh, for XC. And I'll come in with my long sword. Uh, 13 on that. This is, this is that Ixie. Uh, uh, you need 14 to hit. You need 14 to hit. Okay, I'm going to burn one uh, permanent luck then. No, grab a, grab a fleeting. I've got a fleeting luck. Oh, do you, oh I didn't okay. know anybody had any fleeting luck. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll take a fleeting luck then. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. And uh, how much damage do you do? Four points. Four points? Okay. And that's on Ixie, right? All right. Yep. Yep. Good hit. Still alive, but good hit. Um. Okay, Doyle. All right. Um, uh, is anyone? No one's actually fighting with Cedric, right? Yeah, I no, shot he, at him, but he, he was sort of at the back, firing off. Um, so at this point, can Doyle, since it, since Fake Ixie is in holding a bow and engaged with two other melee combatants, can real Doyle try to get behind him? You know what? Um. Hmm. You're on a thing. I feel like your abilities just going down a thing wouldn't really work. So I'm going to say, give me a luck check. Luck, uh, luck is okay. what's going to determine if they don't see you or not more than your actual abilities, because you're just going right down a straight path here. Um, it's more about getting behind. Yeah. No. No. I, I, no. I. I understand that. I'm more just saying because there is there is a little thing to the backstabbing where I am. Uh Yeah. No. You're able. You're able to get Let's on him, on but he's, he knows where you are. You throw under luck for a luck check to succeed, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. That's why the more you burn, the harder it gets. Yeah, but you were right, able to get, get up onto an attack. Yeah, that's just oh, hang on. You're, you're a are you a thief subclass? Can you burn luck? No, you can't burn luck on you can't burn luck on a luck roll. Yeah, and you you couldn't fleeting luck on a luck. No, no, no. I'm gonna gonna yeah. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Let's make a normal attack. Nope. Oh boy. All right. Um, so that's Doyle's turn, and now, goddamn, this thing's all messy. Uh, Chisel, you're next. Real Chisel, okay. Yeah. Uh, Chisel. <clears throat> and they are near the edge, like this. Uh, my deeds. Of course. Them off here. Yeah. I mean, I'm all over that. Uh, so <laughs> Chisel's gonna uh, gonna take a charge at uh, Ixy. Uh, he's gonna kind of yep. post up with Pip uh, and try to push him off the edge. Yeah, oh you get it. yeah, you get it. Oh yeah, God. you you just fucking like like hockey check wow. um, Ixy right off the side, um, and he just goes flying into the darkness below, and only yeah, and the chisel kind of gives him like a salute as he goes <laughs> out. <laughs> and only evil Cedric is left. Um, so uh, Fenix down, real Cedric now. Cedric is going to. Uh... He's trying to move uh, like the opposite way around the circle to cut this guy off if he tries to get away, but he's also going to fire off a shot. Okay. Uh, and that's at... Team versus his AC. My AC is 14. Uh, this is at... Sorry, which one was, was this that? Was this, this is, oh, it was only Cedric left, so... Um, yeah. Cedric's AC is 15. Um, I rolled evil, 15. Evil Cedric. Okay, nice. Hit. First good hit. Six points. Good, good hit. Cedric got Cedric definitely felt that one. Um, and then next, next is Jed. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Cedric. <laughs> Cedric. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jed's the next oh. one. Come on, Jed's guys. gonna. Left. Jed's gonna look around, left and right, grab his pitchfork, and uh, one of them left, and one of them left, and uh, try and scare him. Perfect. You have a thief of the pitchfork is so hey, funny. Hey, oh, hey. Yes. Nice. Yes, yes, there yes. we go. Ooh. Give me that two d six. They'll have to kill him more than likely. There's a very low I, chance I it will. It, it to. does. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that that goes right through and like just like squirts right out the back. Um, and just <laughs> you can just sort of launch him off onto the side. Um, and he falls below. Everybody's gone. Good job, guys. Holy shit. Um, that was uh. That was good. We had some good rolls in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they rolled. Like, <laughs> they rolled yeah, exceptionally poorly. Times. They they rolled exceptionally poor though. They got it, like, yeah, like, that could have been Thank a lot God. worse. Yeah. At the start of that fight, I was like, "We're going to lose a lot." Of I was like, we're not, yeah. we're, we're I just could not roll <laughs> yeah. above like a three. Um, okay. 
Um, so yeah, so you guys go up to the yolkless, the yolkless egg. The egg is twice the size of an ostrich egg, bright blue in color, and um, I don't know who's grabbing it, but it feels both hot and cold when touched. Um, Pip's going to try to step up and grab it. Yep, well, yeah, mm-hmm. Pip, Pip runs up and grabs it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah, you have it in your hands, you can hear okay. like the sounds of like screaming yeah. and other things, but uh, yeah, you have it there. Um, Let's go. <laughs> Um, right. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. So you guys, yeah. you guys leave uh, through the door you came in from. You go down the stairs, and you guys go back across the field towards that rose. Um, and who plucks it? Uh, Chuck, wait, I think. Is wait, before you pluck the rose, Pip says. Oh. Hold on, wait. <laughs> Cedric's literally <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now listen. One of these chaos lords approached me in a vision and offered me greater rewards if we were to bring this directly to him instead of the court. What do you guys think? He's, he said we don't have to worry about him using it. It won't be used for millennia. I'm not sure I trust him, really, I, I think. Um... Will you trust the rest of the court? Well, we also got a counter well, I... offer from someone else as well. Yeah. What? Uh... <laughs> yeah, we, we got approached by someone claiming to be uh, actually a lawful being, and uh, she was saying that we would get, like, lawful boons. If so we, uh... what? They let us steal it, and now they're going to give us rewards? Well, no, she was kind of saying that, like, upper management has been neglecting the area, that her department is underfunded, and that, uh, well, that she's trying to draw attention to that, so... We're but kind if that of we doing a give... white helmet job, if you know what I mean. Yeah. A white helmet hack and slashing job. <laughs> Have you ever seen the stage play <laughs> The Departed? <laughs> the stage play. Uh, well, Chris at this we... point would be adding a lot of philosophical lawful stuff and saying that it would definitely give it to the but oh, she's like half dead at the minute, so hmm. She's she's like we should definitely give it to the lawful ones because <laughs> bye Chris you're suffering blood loss. <laughs> Please, my name yeah. is Chris Anthony I'm on the Usmos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, out, out of character, I don't care at all who we give it to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't but but to uh, the same, I'm like, no, I, need to do I know we Cedric could... doesn't really care as long as he gets to kill on dead stuff. <laughs> As long as someone's not trying to trick us, I don't mm-hmm. think it matters. No, I mean, I think we can trust, uh... Clara Rock. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed pretty... It was the one with... It was the chicken without the chicken part. It was just the legs and the eye. Oh, yeah, the sparrow eye. <laughs> yeah. It's thematically appropriate to give him the egg. <laughs> 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 But yeah, I don't know. He didn't specify exactly what we'd get, to be fair. <laughs> we could roll for it. We could do a one to one to three. Roll yeah. D3. Either way, yeah. I yeah, like I said, I, I don't care either way. But uh, right, one, one to two, one four one to two, yeah, let's three, decide. four, five to six, <laughs> yeah. So... so one to two, chaos okay. court. Two to three, um, Wait, wait, the, lawful, wait. the one that claims to be lawful. Wait, three, sorry, three, sorry, four. Three, yeah. four. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? uh, okay. <laughs> and five, six. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just, just to just be clear, because Dan, you would know this. Just maybe if I missed. Basically, if you give it to the one chaos lord over the cha- over the court of chaos, that's gonna stir shit up. So, is it one two? Is court chaos? Three oh, four yeah. is oh, the the order we were propositioned in. I was doing yeah. No, th- oh, order proposition. Yeah, three four is law, five six is single chaos. Lord. Okay, gotcha. All right. Okay, cool. Who wants to roll it? Right. I don't want to do it. Well, Dan, Dan, you, Dan, you, <laughs> Dan, you, Dan, you should oh, roll. Okay, okay. Oh, there you go. Oh. Uh, somebody, somebody did it. Cool. Three. Okay. <laughs> right, so law, 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 I guess. Law. Okay. I don't really want to give uh, it to her, but. <laughs> <laughs> Pip Pip kind of has like, uh, I guess. kind of like kicks the freaking kicks the perfectly manicured grass in front of him. <laughs> just uh, puts him in the room. Might be angry. 
<laughs> leave, leave the grass alone. It's done nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. This whimpering, whim- whimpering voice. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. So which one you guys picked? I think Cedric was going to pick it. Um. And you guys are teleported back to the assaulting senses of the court of chaos. And as soon as you get there, in that same unison of all the voices, they say, "Do you have it?" Um, yelling it into your into your skulls. Um, looking up because they can't really see, like, because you probably, uh, Pip, you probably just have it on you there. Nobody will really see it yet. You guys see Luxalia across, looking at you, sort of almost bidding you towards her. You guys see um, the creature with the big eye and the chicken legs, looking down, almost leaning in its chair. And there's the rest of the court of chaos there. Um, what do you want to do? Uh, well, Pip ha- isn't familiar with this uh, this other being, so Pip kind of looks to the other the the, the five like gestures at, uh, at Luxalia, like she can fucking get us out of here. <laughs> okay, so she, Pip she starts kind of walking in that direction, you know. Okay, uh, and uh, if yeah, if he gets close enough, he'll hand it over to her. So yeah, so you guys, so you guys start to turn towards Lexalia, and she start, and she sees that you guys are doing this, um, and she takes action and just sort of explodes in this bright light of her true form. She grows much taller. She's like her skin now is perfectly gold. Her hair is beautifully silver. There's no more rags or any sort of grease or anything like that. And the entire court erupts into actual chaos as they see this interloper in their midst. And she sort of holds up these giant blue shields around here, sort of flying like in a circle as like fireballs hit, and all these chaos demons pop into existence um, between you and her. And she's bidding you come quickly to me. And she's sort of like slashing through chaos, uh, like different chaos creatures, and they're all sort of surrounding you and them. Um, so what we're gonna do here, and we're gonna keep things simple because we're sort of going over long here. If you guys want to give me initiative, but just give me one. Give me your best initiative for your characters. And we're just going to go, like, each character is going to sort of just act, like, together. Um, as there's chaos demons, you guys basically have to get through to get to, uh, to get through her. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, would this is a group initiative role, is it? Uh, yeah, just yeah. For, your, for your characters. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are pretty lucky for this choice because you only have two chaos demons basically to get through to get to her, but they are chaos demons, so this could be bad. Oh, also, I guess before we continue, um, did Fennec and Chris burn their one luck to get burn, back up, up. burn luck each to get back up with one hit point? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the so, option would be that or dying. I'm yeah. Assuming. Pretty much. Yeah. So. yeah. That would be yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So they come back. All right. Um, so Jack, what's your AC or what's your initiative? Sorry. Uh, 10, 10. Okay. Uh, Dan 15, 15. Nice. Um, John, uh, <laughs> uh, five, five. Okay. <laughs> Classic John. Um, <Yep. sighs> and Martin four, four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good all right um so one well, of chaos demons is going first um but he's basically just going to be closing the gap between you like he's making sure he, this is a big creature just made of like all these different horrible fleshy red purple you see different limbs he's basically just getting between you and um uh, Lexalia. um and so he's just sort of sizing you up um so he's just gonna have a bigger attack next time um okay and then it is dan Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, I mean, geez, uh, Pip and Trizzle are going to try to juke around these chaos demons, I think. Okay, you're trying to get around them? Yeah, I would like to try to get to uh, to Lexaldia. Okay, sounds good. Um, uh, roll? Um, yeah, I guess give me, uh, give me agility checks for them, um, individual ones, as you're trying to get around mm-hmm. this chaos demon instead of trying to fight it. Okay. For yep. Pip. So Pip Pip uh, runs by. Uh, Chisel is stopped though. There's a big sort of meaty arm sort of gets in his way and stops him. So he sort of 
stuck in front of the creature. That, but that, is, that was his turn trying to get around it. Um, cool. Next is Jack, your characters. Yeah, I mean, I think XC and Doyle do the same thing, though Doyle's faster um, okay. pretty substantially. It's not reflected in his agility check, but he is a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the 40. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, he's also um, sort of stopped. And he's also That's, stopped. Yeah, yeah you guys, are. you guys aren't right. able to get around this creature. Um, okay, and then it's another creature. Um, he's closer like Salia. He is going to... Uh, he's moving in from the crowd. Like The crowd is just going crazy. People are just attacking each other and shit's just popping off. Um, he's going to go for, um, Dan, he's going to go for Pip, actually. Okay, cool. Um, he's just further back a bit, closer to Luxalia. Um, plus... AC 12. AC 12, okay. Whoa, no. Um, he, he tries to go for you, and you see him slip and almost fall into the roiling chaos below, but is able to catch himself just in time. But that chaos team is just sort of, like, holding on to, like, the edge of, and, like, he is just nearly touching the sea of, like, souls down below him. Um, nice. And then it is John's turn. Uh, which means my guys are off. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, mm, no, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you want to reflex saves to try and get past the demon? Uh, agility checks, yeah. Agility checks, cool. I can do that. Cedric? Okay, no. Oh, no. You know uh, you know what, Cedric? Um, instead of just doing the fumble table, I'm going to say that you also now give me a reflex save to see if you fall into the chaos below. Okay, you're good. You um Ooh. you you aren't quite as down as that as that creature is, but like you almost like like your face comes face to face with like a bunch of its eyes that are popping out of its shoulder, mm -hmm. but you're able to just save yourself from going off below into the sea of roiling chaos. Um okay, so that's Cedric. He's just he's now sort of prone. Um Okay, and Fennec's able to get by and he sort of catches up to uh Pip, who's dealing with this other chaos creature. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, uh, Martin. Or I guess, no, that, sorry, that creature went down. Um, you catch up to pick, though. Uh, Martin, your character's turns. Um, so seeing everyone do the same, um, Chris isn't feeling like fighting in the minute. She's going to just run for it. Okay. So yeah, so well, give me an agility check to get, around the, to get around that creature. Uh, yeah, no, also just yeah, no. gets caught. Like, it's just, it's too big. It's in the way. Yeah. Um, Jedediah would do the same thing. Okay, yeah, nice. Jedediah gets by, he follows up, he's next to Pip, and I think Fennec, I believe, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Chuck, no doubt, will do the same thing as well. Yeah, and Chuck follows up with that, so nice. four of them are close. Yep. Those four are, are one round away from making it, like, uh, inside, like, the shields of uh, Lexalia. Um, okay, that's everybody, that's all of them. And now it's back to the demon. Um, and he... Okay, he only has one attack. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Um, he is going to. Um, uh, who who's the weakest right now? Who's looking fucked up? I think. Chisels in the front. And and, uh, yeah. Okay, he's gonna go for chisel. Chisels looks like a pretty big, big issue. Um, Nineteen's gonna hit. Mm -hmm. um, and he's going to take. Four Ooh, damage. Yeah. Okay, Jesus. so Chisel, you guys just see the big meaty arm just sort of slam straight into Chisel's face, putting him down onto the ground. Um, and like Salia just screams, "Hurry! I can't keep the shields up for much longer." Um, and then next it's Dan's turn. Um, mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. So Pip's gonna run back. Now stabilizing someone that doesn't get them up, right? No, you just stabilize them. You can you can stay you can you can either use your turn to try and pick them up and drag them with you, or you can use it to stabilize them. Um, but I will say right now, shit's popping off. You guys do not have much time left to get to Lexalia before her shields falter. Yeah, heard that, heard that, heard that. There's quite <laughs> there's quite a few of you who are um, stuck here, like. If you if you guys want to discuss, you guys can talk to each other about if two of you want to try and drag him back, like drag him across to her. Because I'll say you guys can you can pick up two of you can pick up Pip or pick up uh, Chisel and try and get by this demon. I'll say one person yeah. can't pick up uh, Chisel and also try and get by. I think that's too heavy. Thanks, totally help pick up 
a fallen person because he was a fallen person. <laughs> okay. All right, Pip will run back and try to start. He's going to start dragging uh, Chisel. Okay, sounds good. Um, sounds good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you start grabbing. You grab it up, like grab up Pip's legs and yell somebody to grab his arms. Um, okay, so that's Dan's turn. Uh, Jack. Mm. Well, someone still has to stabilize him, but also only like two people have even passed the check that does not get us there. So. It was a real short campaign, my... you guys. Uh <laughs> 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 Um, I think Ixie's going to try to run, but then yep. if he makes it up to the other, um, the other demon that's like teetering, yep. like if, if I pass the, the agility, uh, he's going to take a swipe to try to knock him off. You don't even make an agility check. You can just get to her because there's nobody in your way now. But you want just if you want to make oh, an attack okay. to knock him off. You can. I want to make an attack of, as yeah. a, just a swipe as I go yeah. by to try to see if I can get the D double Sounds knock good. Him yeah, off. give me. I would say give me a claws attack with a. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Ooh, nice. you you go by and you like claw what arm is holding onto or what you could call an arm, and it just sort of bellows out as it falls down into the the, the red sea of souls, um, and disappears, <laughs> just becoming nothing. Um, and you run and you get in, you get into the shields, uh, you get in between the shields, and you feel like a night, you feel like a nice warm and warmth and glow, um, coming off of Lexalia. She like you see more and more fireballs are slamming into her shields and they're starting to crack. Um, but they will still hold on for a little bit longer. Um, okay, so Ixie's made in. I still, yeah, Doyle like looks at the shields, looks at the two of them grabbing Pip. So it's, Pip just needs stabilized while he's being carried, right? Yeah, if you want Chiseled, to rub it, yeah. his wounds. Um, also, Doyle, I'll say Doyle has a, a higher movement speed. I will say, mm -hmm. this will be an agility check. I'll say you can stabilize him and then try and run for the shields, but it will be an agility check to see if you can actually make it to the shields with Doyle. Yeah, Doyle attempts to release some, what he, he's read something about gates, and he's trying to open some gate inside of his <laughs> metaphorical body. <laughs> Look, he, the, the, he can barely read. Someone had to read it to him. <laughs> in order to, in order to run fast. Oh boy! Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, he's able to um, he's able to stabilize, but now he's yeah. kind of like he's sort of made it halfway. He's in the same place. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Um, okay, so that's Jack's turn. Um, that demon is gone into the mists. Um, but Dan, uh, but Chisel is say stabilized, so he doesn't need to worry about dying because of him. Uh, John, your character's turns. Right. So Fennec is carrying Chisel. Okay. So, since Pip grabbed him and Chisel and, and you're running, do you want to give me a, an agility check to see if you guys can just get past this uh, Chaos Demon and get closer to Lexalia? Nice. Oh, Good. Yeah, nice. so you, you, you're able to sort of immediately grab the arms, uh, Doyle stabilizes, and then you guys just book it past this creature um, who is sort of like focusing now on who's left. Um, and you guys aren't quite the shields yet, but you're almost there. Um... Okay, and, and John, your Cedric. other character? Cedric, who fell last turn. He fell? Uh, okay. I remember will... if we were like... Ooh. Yeah, no, um, yeah, he's able to make it to the shields. I don't know if you're holding him back at all, but he's able to get in. Um, he gets up um, and sort of hobbles his way there. Um, he barely makes it, but uh, that's if you want. If that's what you want to do. Yeah, he, he's just like, come on! He's just waving the guys in It is as he's like, He's like turned his ankle or something <laughs> yeah. as he fucking fumbled. Fucking He's last like, helicopter out of Vietnam. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Jack, it is so it is so good that you fucking killed that thing because he because Cedric was right next to the demon and the demon's going first. Yep. He was gonna grab Cedric and, and <laughs> fall down with him. Um, <laughs> I thought that was gonna happen. I was like, yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. Ixie just vindictively scrapes him yeah. with the claws on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Amazing. Falls off chaos. All right. And all that's left is Martin. So there's one big demon in the way. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Chris is the only one the other side of the demon at the minute. Okay, yeah. And Chris can make it to the shields if she needs to, or if she wants to. Yeah. Yeah, so she's going to try. Okay, yeah. yeah she, she, you don't need to make a check for her because there's nothing in your way. It's just the checks are just people who are sort of fucked up or like far enough far enough away. So yeah, mm. Chris makes it as well. So Chris is in there. Cool. Um, and, and Chuck and uh, Jed. <laughs> Jed and I will try and make it as well. All right. So Chuck, give me, give me, yeah, give me uh, your jelly checks for those guys to get around this first demon. Um, oh, I was going to say last time those two passed. Oh, those two passed. Chris and failed. Oh, sorry, my, my, sorry. Well, you said I, yeah. I thought you went the way. Sorry, yeah. So Chris makes the check, and those two can make it to the, make it to the, to yeah. the the last helicopter of Vietnam because <laughs> the shields <laughs> are really cracking. One probably shares at this point and goes down. Last helicopter out of the chaos courts. Oh, yeah. Yes. Nice. nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay, you know what? Yeah, Chris can't make it just yet, or can't make it straight to there, but she's almost there. She runs right by the chaos demon. Um, so who hasn't made it to the shields yet? It's, I believe, Pip, Chisel, and, um... Doyle. 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 And, um, uh, Chris. Or, or, or... And Chisel, Fennec. Fennec okay. carrying. Oh, yeah. And then Doyle yes. had just okay. done the... Sounds ah. good. Um, I will say, uh, everybody now has made it past the Chaos Demon. There's no way behind, correct? I, I'm not wrong in that. I don't think so. Yeah. Nope. And there's nothing staying in your way because because the other guy just went off. Um, you guys are all able to make it to the shields. They're not going to make any rolls now. You guys are able to serve. You got past the first obstacle and you guys just fucking book it. You like ram into her legs. Um, and as like the last one, <laughs> as the last person gets in, um, the uh, there's a bright light hits you. You are slammed against the ground of, of where you appear. The beautiful smell of the forest and like the 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 mossy uh, ground is just welcomes you um and uh you guys are back on the material plane like salia there is there in front of you um and she's reaching out um for the the yokeless egg um from i guess pips maybe has a strap to his back at this point or something and she has her hands out sure yeah well i mean geez at this point he pulls it out and hands it over amazing um, yeah, so she takes it from you and she says, you've done a great thing. Hopefully this will make law, the, the forces of law realize that, you know, they need to focus on the things they have and not just keep trying to dominate the world they don't. Um, and, um, everybody, so everybody who's law gets two points of permanent luck. Um, anybody who's neutral and chaotic gets plus one point of permanent luck. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says... Um, you may call on me in a time of need, um, and I will be there to help you out. Um, we'll explain all the mechanics of that later. Um, and she also presents to you guys a set of armor and a big sword. Um, and she sort of explains those again. We'll explain all the mechanics and all that sort of stuff, uh, between sessions and later on. Um, and she says, thank you for actually doing the right thing. I didn't think you were, um, but I misjudged you. And with that, she sort of sprouts these angelic wings and flies off. If there's an opportunity just before that, yep. Chris will say, I, I, I've got a bit of a size problem. I, it was something I picked up in, um, in, in your world. Um, can you help shrink me back down to normal? She, yeah, she looks at you before she, like, she wants to, to fly off and she goes, do you want to use your debt now, Chris? Um, I think it would only be right and proper. I mean, I can, um... I will say this. You guys you guys each get a debt from her, by the way. Like, you all get to call her in. <laughs> Martin getting back down to size doesn't be- make the rest of us go like, Way yeah, go, Chris. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is individual, isn't it? Yes. It is yeah. individual. And, th- and this, will, this will use up Chris's able, ability. This, this yeah. basically... She's basically giving you all a patron bond spell, is basically how this works, once. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so do you want to use up yours to get this... To get yourself back to normal size and get your strength and agility back? Oh, I don't know. You better choose now. She's about to leave. Her wings are um, out. Yeah. They're starting to fly. Yeah, she, yeah she'll, <laughs> she'll do it. It seems, seems right. Yeah. Seems right. Yeah. yeah, so she just lays her hand on your head, um, and you shrink back down to your normal size. You get your strength and, I think, strength and agility back. I think that's what it was, yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. And you get those back. You feel good again. Um, you will still need new armor, um, mm. but uh, at this point, you are back to normal. Um and you feel you feel good again. <laughs> wow, that's that's better. <laughs> yeah, nice. and uh, and then she flies off. Uh, so unless anybody else has anything they want to ask of her right now, 
Sounds good. All right. Good job, guys. You awesome. survived Intrigue of the Core Chaos. I did wow. not know how many were going to survive. I was really like, oh, we might get like a half squad here, get like half a new cast oh, next next session. You guys are all now <laughs> level two. Um, like I said, I'll explain um, the, the weapons and armor and all that stuff, like just probably off stream. Um, so everybody can decide who wants what and we'll get all that together. Um, you know what I'll say as well, actually, because just this is very helpful and it makes sense. Um, I'll say on top of your, on top of giving you your height back, she's also going to give you 500 gold pieces. Just give you guys a little bit of cash. You can actually do something. <laughs> um, nice. and, uh, 125. Yeah. Cool. 125 each. So what, like 62.5 per character? <laughs> gold five silver right yeah. I guess, is it or is this a gift? is this one of the ones where it's uneven denominations between <laughs> no it, it's all even thank god i'll fight you for those copper pieces <laughs> oh um dan if you want to know what you missed out on though um uh, that glass eye the witch wait. gives you oh i don't <laughs> yeah yeah no, it gives okay. you infravision <laughs> x-ray vision and the ability to see magical auras and invisible creatures Oh, yeah, that's right. She said I'd be able to see through walls and stuff. I forgot about that. Yeah, that would have been um, very good for you if you're doing any recon, but... Uh, that's cool. I'll get you it. just had to choose law. No. Luck is, I, 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 good, too. You yeah. didn't choose law. We were given law. Yeah, for your point. <laughs> <laughs> the die uh, chose law. True. No, wait, that was great, guys. Thank you so much. That was that was really fun. Yeah. You guys did yeah. 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 Thanks for really fun. Yeah. Like, um, thanks, everybody else, for watching. I hope you guys had a good time. Um, we will be playing our next session... I believe that'll be what December fifth. Fifth. Yep. Yeah, and that will be the level two scenario. Uh, it's fucking a pulpy ass name. Uh, Moon slaves of the Cannibal Kingdom. So that. Oh, be, that covers great too. Yeah. So that's gonna be the <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I remember seeing that one a bunch of times. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's one. Of, this one. This is one I've wanted to run for a very long time. So I'm really excited to run that one. Um, I'm glad we were able to do this Intrigue of the Core Chaos, because that one's been in my backlog for like four years now, so I'm glad cool we scenario. finally got it done. Yeah. yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah you different. Guys I love the stuff that we were like, yeah, no, hardest puzzle first, though. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Tim, I think you were gone, but your uh, your rerolls came in clutch. Uh, you stopped two fumbles that Jack had. Yeah, um, both I think of mine. Really... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but we yeah, had a, a, astonishingly good rolling today. I think the, my two fumbles were the only ones that we had the whole game off of probably, what, 80 rolls yeah. total or something like that? Yeah, yeah. F, 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 F and Tim end. definitely came in clutch for you guys. That was Martin great. fumbled yeah. at one point, I think. And <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. We'll, uh, this is everybody in the chat. Have yourselves a good one. We'll see you. Well, I mean, I'll, you'll probably see me soon, but we'll see this group in two weeks. Have yep. a good one.